of you. I invite you to share with us these memorable moments of our national sport. Directly from the city of Quebec. Have a good evening. We will have a good evening indeed. We are live from La Palisse here in Quebec City and this place is electric. The Soviet Nationals, led by what many consider the best line in the world, the KLM line, Krutov, Larionov, and Makarov. However, the National Hockey League players, in spite of the injuries to Howe, Kaki, and Bossy, and only two days of practice, say they are more than ready. It was 1972, Moscow the site for the second half of the Series of the Century. Paul Henderson capped Team Canada's emotional comeback with his third consecutive game-winning goal. Then, seven years later, the move to New York City. The NHL All-Stars and their Soviet rivals, after splitting the first two games, the USSR blasted the National Hockey League 6-0 to claim the Challenge Cup Series. Tonight, the rivalry that excites our country like none other continues from here in historic Quebec City. Rendezvous 87. Brought to you by Carling O'Keefe, Brewers of Miller Lite. Chrysler Canada, who bring you the all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. By Esso, stop in and fill up with the No Trouble gasoline. By your local bottler of Coca-Cola, catch the wave, Coke. Yes, it is Winter Carnival week here in Quebec City. And let me tell you, you add in rendezvous and it's a party atmosphere the likes of which I have never seen. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Welcome to Le Colisee here in Quebec City and Rendezvous 87. The atmosphere in this building is electric. These fans are loud. They're boisterous. They're good fans normally. They could be downright rabid by the end of the game this evening if things go their way. They, of course, anticipating the showdown between the National Hockey League and the Soviet Union. The National Hockey League is predominantly, of course, a Canadian team, but there are some stars from Finland, Sweden, and the United States. When you talk about the Soviet side, you must talk about Red Army, the Soviet champions for the past 10 years running. The nucleus of this team is from Red Army, including the starting goaltender, Bela Shekin, the starting defenseman, the great KLM line, and, of course, the coach, Viktor Tikhonov. Right now, we are still, I would say, about 15 minutes away from the official face-off. The impressive opening ceremonies are yet to come, but right now, let's take you upstairs to the rafters here at La Colisee and introduce you to our play-by-play -play crew for the game tonight. And, of course, again on Friday, here are Don Whitman and John Davidson. Thank you, Brian, and you're absolutely right. The atmosphere is electric, and John Davidson, that always seems to be the case whenever the Soviet Union and Canada, particularly the National Hockey League, play hockey. This is not just an all-star game, Don. There's a little extra special feeling in the air. The National Hockey League players are ready. It's a team that was selected and put together as a team. They were looking for defense and offense, some toughness. The Soviets, of course... Uh, were scouted by Craig Patrick. He did a 27-page report on this hockey club, and he said, listen, they don't take any guff. Their speed is there, definitely there, even quicker than the National Hockey League. They're going to be an exciting club to watch. Craig Patrick's scouting report refutes the theory that this team from the Soviet Union might not be as strong as, say, the 84 Canada Cup squad. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, they're very strong. And watching them practice with their overall speed, their overall quickness, what they do, very interesting, Don, is they play units of five. They're going to dress 22 players with those units of five. The defensemen and the forwards play as a unit, shift after shift after shift, and they join the play, do the defensemen. They do a lot of things that the NHL don't normally do, and the National Hockey League is prepared for that. What do you think are the keys for the National Hockey League tonight? I think mainly if they can counter, in other words, when the defensemen close with the Soviet forwards, 
when the National Hockey League break up the play, get the puck, and they can counter, move it offensively, they can catch five of them going in the wrong direction. In other words, the five Soviets will be going towards the National Hockey League players. They can counter quickly. They've got a real good chance. The other thing is, if they can have a strong first period, they'll be fine because the Soviets do not play very well when they're behind simply because they're not used to it. Both sides in practice sessions have stressed the importance of puck control. We'll be back with a very impressive opening ceremonies right after we pause for this message. Tuesday night. Welcome back live to Quebec City. You know, it's interesting. Wayne Gretzky was telling me this afternoon the key part to this series will be the first 10 minutes. We've got a lot of young players. They're going to be nervous. Jean Perrault says if we can get through the first period with a scoreless tie, we're in great shape. Once again, let's go back upstairs. Once again, here are Don Whitman and John Davidson. And the National Hockey League All-Stars. Accueillons d'abord les membres de l'équipe nationale du RSS. Let's first greet the Soviet national all-stars. First, the goaltenders. Number one, Sergei Milnikov. <laughs> Le numéro 20, Evgeny Belushikin. On defense, number two, and the captain of the Soviet National All-Stars, Vyacheslav Petisov. <laughs> le numéro quatre, le défenseur Igor Stenna. <laughs> Wearing number five, on defense, Vasily Pervukin. Le numéro 6, le défenseur Mikhail Tatarina. On defense, wearing number 7, Alexei Kazatunov. Le numéro 8, le défenseur Alexei Goussara. Wearing number nine, right winger Vladimir Krutov. Le numéro onze, le centre Igor Lavionov. Wearing number twelve, on defense, Sergei Starikov. Le numéro 13, le centre, Valery Kamensky. <laughs> Wearing number 14, defenseman, Zenatula Milianestinov. Le numéro 15, 
Then here goes Andrei Hobuta. Wearing number 16, right winger, Sergei Svetlov. Le numéro 18, le centre, Alexander Semak. Wearing number 19, right winger, Mikhail Varnakov. Le numéro 22, l'ailier gauche, Sergei Priakin. Wearing number 24, left winger, Sergei Makarov. Le numéro 27, le centre, Vyacheslav Bikov. Wearing number 29, left winger, Yuri Kmilev. Le numéro 30, le centre, Anatoly Semenya. The coach and assistant coach of the Soviet national team, Viktor Tikhonov and Vladimir Yerzinov. Et maintenant, les représentants de la Ligue nationale de hockey. Dans les buts, le numéro 30 des Nordiques de Québec, Clint Malachak. Wearing number 31 from the Edmonton Oilers. Brad Fuhrer. Le numéro 3, des sabres de Buffalo, le défenseur Mike Ramsey. Wearing number 4, playing on defense from the Washington Capitals, Ron Langway. Le numéro 5, the Canadian of Montreal, Le Defenseur, Rick Green. Wearing number 6, from the Boston Bruins. Defenseman Raymond Bork. <laughs> Le numéro 8, the Whalers of Hartford. Le Defenseur Holt Samuelson. <laughs> Wearing number 9, center from the Edmonton Oilers, Glenn Anderson. Le numéro 10, des Jets de Winnipeg, le centre, Dave Howardshot. Wearing number 11, from the Edmonton Oilers, center, Mark Messier. Le numéro 14, the winner is the Hartford, Lélie Edouard, Kevin Denis. <laughs> Wearing number 15, left winger from the Edmonton Oilers, Asa Tikkanen.
le numéro 16 de l'Arctique de Québec, Michel Goulet. Ce soir, from the Philadelphia Flyers, Tim Kerr and Ron Hextall, and from the Quebec Nordic, Normal Rochefort. Et maintenant, les entraîneurs de l'équipe des trois de la Ligue nationale de hockey, the coaches of the National Hockey League All-Star Team, Michel Bergeron, Bob Johnson, and the head coach, John Perron. des joueurs, se veut le rassemblement des représentants de trois grandes nations, l'Union soviétique, les États-Unis et le Canada. As we just noticed through the players' presentation, Rendezvous 87 is the gathering of players and artists representing three great nations, the Soviet Union, the United States, and Canada. To sing the national anthems of each country, we're honored by the participation of three great choruses. To sing the Soviet Union national anthem, the Boris Alexandrov Ensemble of the Soviet Army. Pour l'interprétation de l'hymne soviétique, l'ensemble Boris Alexandrov de l'Armée Rouge.
pour interpréter l'hymne des États-Unis d'Amérique, voici de Boston le Harvard Glee Club, dirigé par M. Jameson Marvin. From Boston, the Harvard Glee Club will now perform the national anthem of the United States of America, directed by Jameson Marvin. Le Chœur de Rendez-vous 87, dirigé par M. Guy Bélanger, interprétera maintenant le Haut-Canada. Pour faire la mise au jeu officielle de cette série tout à fait unique, nous invitons maintenant trois des plus grands joueurs de l'histoire de notre sport national. Tous trois ont marqué leur époque et écrit dans leur pays respectif les plus belles pages de l'histoire de notre sport national au Canada, aux États-Unis et en Union soviétique. They are part of the hockey legend in the Soviet Union, the United States and Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Mesdames et Messieurs, let's greet Vladislav Trechak, Gordy Howe, and John Bellymore. Jack retired just a year ago. Howe and Bellavo have been retired for a while, but all three look as though they could still play. They play a lot better than a lot of people I know. They're in great shape, well-respected individuals. Tretiak, when he was in New York promoting the rendezvous series, just raved about the special attention that he's had. He just loves it over here in North America. Nous demandons maintenant au capitaine des deux équipes, Vyacheslav Petisov et Wayne Gretzky, de s'approcher au centre de la patinoire pour la mise au jeu protocolaire. As goes the tradition in international competition, the captains exchange their respective emblems. Comme le veut la tradition, les capitaines des deux équipes s'échangent maintenant les emblèmes officiels des deux formations. Stay tuned for the opening face-off. This is Rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. There's a powerful new reason to drive a Chrysler Magic Wagon. Front-wheel drive V6 power. Fuel-injected power. And this is what V6 power is all about. The power to climb, to pass, to tow, to pull you through the toughest winter with front-wheel drive V6 power. And you're protected for five years or 80,000 kilometers. Powerfully new Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager. Best built right here in Canada and best backed. has no rules. We'll do this one by the book, Sergeant. And warfare has no limit. But now Marine Sergeant Jack Burns will teach the enemy the proper use of diplomacy, the importance of restraint, and the power of negotiation. Fred Dreyer. Death Before Dishonor. Opening soon at a Cineplex Odeon Theater near you. Canada Hockey Professional Amateur Junior and Exhibition. This is the 562nd time that these two nations have faced each other. And each time the National Hockey League goes against the Soviet national team, there's a special air of excitement in the building. It had been agreed upon that the National Hockey League would supply the referee for one game, the Soviet Union the referee for the other game, and the referee tonight from the Soviet Union, Nikolai Morosov, and the two linesmen from the National Hockey League, a couple of veterans, John D'Amico and Ron Finn. Dave Buell will referee game two taking place on Friday night. In goal for the Soviet Union, Dalo Shakin, who has been a star for this Soviet team at the world junior level 
and is getting his first test against the National Hockey League stars. He performed in Hamilton a year ago. Grant Muir, as a professional, is facing the Soviets for the first time. When he played junior hockey in Victoria, he faced the Soviet team. He played half the game, gave up two goals. The final score in that game was 14 to two for the Soviet Union against the Victoria Cougars. Don, he was 16 years old at the time. That's the only time he's faced them. He's excited. He's coming off a win against St. Louis in the National Hockey League this past Sunday. Grant Fuhr coming back from an injury, of course. Now remember, it looks like we're seeing a Lemieux line matched against the powerful Soviet fivesome centered by Larry Onov. We'll watch and see if Ron Perron, the head coach, will use the Lemieux matchup or not. Remember, this game, the opening game, the Soviet Union is the home team, so they have the last line change. John Perron has put together the line of Mario Lemieux at center, Michelle Goulet on the left side, and Claude Lemieux of the Montreal Canadiens on right wing. He wanted Claude Lemieux with the other two because of Lemieux's checking skill. Absolutely, plus all three are French Canadian and they can speak their language in unity. Perron is on the bench as we look at the Soviet bench. They have a two-man system, but only one man is the boss, and that is Tikhanov. The other man, is the man that looks after the specialty team units. Vladimir Yurzinov handles special teams for the Soviets. On the Canadian side, Michelle Bergeron is looking after the penalty killing unit, and Bob Johnson will be upstairs, and he'll be directing the power book. You look at Tikhanov, he is 57 years of age. He took over the national team in 1977, replacing a man they called Chuckles, Boris Kugelin. So we're about set for the opening face-off, the first of this two-game series at Rendezvous 87. Larry Onoff is the Soviet center facing Mario Lemieux. I think Lemieux was a little misunderstood earlier in the week when he said that he would relinquish the starting assignment for the face-off to Wayne Gretzky. It wasn't that he was trying to get out of the series, he just felt that Gretzky is the best player in the world. Dumped down the ice by Lemieux. Batisov races back after it. Claude Lemieux chases him in there, gets it out front, and Mario Lemieux couldn't get a shot away. They tried to feed it back to the point. It's intercepted by Makarov. He works in against Langway. Makarov trying to center it, and it's picked up there and played up along the board, but not out. Samuelson finally managed to get it out as Brutov fires it in for the Soviets. This is the top line for the Soviet Union. It's been dubbed the KLM line. Claude Lemieux playing it along the board to Mario Lemieux, and he dumps it down the ice. We already saw Kutov dump the puck in. He did not regroup with his teammates. Almost too many men on the ice for the Soviets. You'll see them dump the puck in because of the smaller ice surface. Makarov stopped as he came in across the line, and it's cleared by the National Hockey League team. For Vukanov, for the Soviets, as they make a change, Barnikov deflects it in. Racing back after it is Poulin. Poulin plays it around in the boards, and Howard Chuck to the Winnipeg Jets deflects it out into center ice. And he took a hit there from Kaparinov, the former junior star. He played last year in Hamilton at the World Junior Championship as the Soviets won the gold medal. Svetlov in the center ice area couldn't control it, and it's picked up by Howard Chuck. He dumps it in. The Soviets have so much confidence in their men with the puck that their defenseman will pitch a lot and take the body. You saw Kaparinov pinch and nail one of the NHL players. They are physical. There's a chance for Raymond Bork to shot it sails wide. Center to the pocket. And Glenn Anderson almost put that one through. Anderson had it go between his legs. It's picked up by Messier behind the net for Anderson. He circles it front and slam at it. And it just bounced away from Thomas Sanson of the New York Rangers. Dumped into the center ice area. Back there is Raymond Bork. He turns it to his defensive partner, Rod Langway. Canada with the best scoring opportunity of the game so far. The line with Anderson, Messier, and Sandstrom, they combine speed and meanness and toughness. All three like to take the body. Anderson, of course, not as much as Sandstrom and Messier. There was some question as to whether Sandstrom would play because of an injury on Sunday night. He did not arrive here until late yesterday. He had his first practice this morning. In the Canadian zone, they bang it off the boards out into the center ice area. Now going back is Chris Chelios for Team NHL. He takes it behind his own net, fires it over on the left side. That's a 
Tikkanen shoots it in. Yari Curry plays it back to the net. Gretzky lets it go for Tikkanen. It up, but Curry deflected it wide. Gretzky with a shot. That was taken, drops it, and he covers up for a face off. Here's King, very disciplined hockey here. That's the first whistle in some time. 17.08 is the time remaining in a still scoreless first period. There's a road 170,000 kilometers long stretching in front of the average car. And that's why Motomaster parts are what your car needs. Because Motomaster parts are built tough for the long run. And every Motomaster part is backed as tough as it's built. So no matter where in Canada your road takes you, Canadian Tire stands behind them. Down the long road, it's nice to know you've got more than a part. You've got a company. Motomaster parts. Built tough. Back tough. Well, the task of the team NHL line up there right now may be in a checking capacity. They have Poulin, Kirk Muller, and Kevin Deneen facing the Soviets' top line. And this is something that had been hinted at earlier in the week. Well, the Soviets started their top line against Lemieux's line. Now Jean Perron has done what he wanted. The defensive line out against the top line. Kevin Deneen and Fatisov bump in the corner. Picked up now by Krutov. He can fly. He drops it off. For Kazatona off to Makarov, he wheels in across the line, working against Langway, tried to center it. Rick Green flipped it to the corner. Langway set Makarov flying with the tap of the side of the net. Poulin breaks in, looking on the left side for Muller, just a little too far. It's loose, back to the Soviet goal. Picked up by the Soviets. Played ahead to the blue line. Larry Onoff over on the right side, just a little too far from Makarov, and going back after it is Rod Langway of the Washington Capitals. His pass almost intercepted. It got through to Muller. Muller was looking on the left side for Poulin, and it was picked off by the Soviet. Krutov circling in the center ice area, trying to set something up. Puck control, very important for the Soviet. Puck control in the neutral zone. They found themselves a loose puck. Now they're hanging on to it, trying to set up a long pass and a quick strike in motion. On the left side. Fetlov trying to work in. He's bumped in against the boards by Bork. It's played around to the other side to Messier. Messier having some problems trying to get out. Finally pokes it ahead to Anderson. Anderson in across the line. It's knocked off his stick by Pervukin. Fired back in by Team NHL. They're playing National Hockey League rules in this game. So the delayed call on the offside. The player is allowed to come back and touch the line. Slides into the Team NHL zone at the side of the net. Raymond Bork picks it up. Bork working out slowly for Team NHL. 15-33 remaining in the opening period. A long shot handled by Perbukin, and he shoots at the length of the ice where Grant Fuhr stops it for Mike Ramsey. Ramsey hits Messier on the fly. His pass bounced off Paterinoff and back into the Team NHL zone. Then it's dumped down the ice, and Stelnoff goes back for the Soviets. Into the center ice area. They couldn't do anything with it. Gretzky has it on the left side for Tikhanov. Taken and is bumped in against the board, carries on, does some bumping back of the goal, picked up by Stelnoff of the Soviets. The Soviets shoot it down into the Canadian zone, no icing as Ramsey goes back. Ramsey whistling around on the boards into the neutral zone. This has to be a confidence builder for Team NHL. They're five minutes into the game. They've had two real good scoring chances, the Soviets none. Here's a chance for Tikkanen with a long shot. Gretzky picks up the rebound. Gretzky up for three. because they performed so well as a unit. Now it's Mario Lemieux moving it out, looking for Goulet. It comes to the line where it's broken up by the Soviets. They dump it in. Ryakin going into the corner against Rick Green, forces him to circle and flip it over to his partner, Rod Langway, off the boards to Claude Lemieux. 
Lemieux working in against Cimac. He shoots it into the corner. Michelle Goulet for Claude Lemieux. Looking out front for Mario Lemieux. It was deflected by the Soviets, and Priakin brings it out. Priakin over to Semenov to Cimac. His shot deflects off a stick and up into the crowd. Rendezvous 87 is coming to you from Quebec City. This is the beginning. The all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Beauty with a passion for driving. Advanced front-wheel drive traction. Positive response suspension. Electronic fuel injection. The thrust of turbo power. And a world of comfort inside. All with a Chrysler protection plan. The new LeBaron Coupe from Chrysler. Best built, best packed. Yari Curry from Gretzky and Tikkanen at 5.23. The goal that has Team NHL ahead of the Soviets. one nothing with the face-off to the right of Grand Fuhr. And the big line on again for the Soviet Union. This time it's not Rick Green and Langway on the ice for defenseman for Canada. It's Chelios along with Raymond Bork. There was some concern about the state of health of Raymond Bork. He has been playing with a groin pull, but the Boston Bruin defenseman who has been having an outstanding season, tested it, felt that he was ready to face the Soviets. He's had that problem for two weeks now. Play broken up at the line. Makarov for Kasatonov. Gets it back to the line to Larionov. Fedosov tees it up, and the shot is blocked and deflects up over the glass and out of play. The Soviets set that play up very well. Fetisov was wide open. He moved himself to the center ice area for a better shooting angle, but the National Hockey League squad recovered. Poulin slides across, along with, I believe, well, I'm not sure who the other player was, but he popped it up high. The other player was Denine, Kevin Denine, who was born here in Quebec City. His dad played for the Quebec Aces for some time. Grant Buer, who was very, very excited about playing this game, they feel that he has the best lateral movement of any goaltender in the National Hockey League. That's why he's playing. From the face-off, it comes out into the neutral zone. The Soviets like to play with that five-man unit. You'll see Kasatonov and Fetisov back in the blue line with his top KLM unit. And it's Makarov as they wheel and deal in the center ice area. But one thing the Canadian rear guards are doing is they are standing up. They're not going for all that motion. Plus, when the Soviets are going back with a puck and regroup, regrouping, the one NHL player is going there, not two or three. They're trying to draw you in and then set up the long pass. They like that aggressive forechecking style, and they like to take advantage of a mistake. Trap a man, and then bang, they fire it out so quickly. We are seeing a clean hockey game at a very high pace here. The skating is fast. This is just a super quick game. Stolen by Canada out in front as Messier was looking for Anderson. It didn't get through, and now it's brought out by the Soviet Semenov's pass as those intercepted by Messier. For Anderson in across the line. Loose puck. Messier going after it. And finally it's picked up by Svetlov. Then a check as Barnikov is decked by Rod Langway in the center ice area. He caught him with his head down. Pass to an open wing. Tatharinov, the former junior star, an outstanding player last year at the World Junior Championships in Hamilton. Lead pass to Barnikov. He drops it off. Svetlov with a shot. Muir makes the save and then covers up. Eleven fifty-six is the time remaining in the first period. NHL leading one nothing. In a world of cards, one stands out. Our route. It's honored by airlines worldwide, major hotels, car rentals, and fine restaurants. Our route is more than a card. It's a travel management system designed specifically for people going places for business or pleasure. And our route offers savings at hotels and car rental agencies. Our route, the card for people going places. Your travel agent has all the details. Rod Langway, one of two players on Team NHL, not wearing a helmet, and what a check he dished out at center ice. He takes two men. First of all, he stopped that man, then he put his body in front of another. Good, smart heads-up play in the neutral zone by Langway. Incidentally, he didn't think he was going to be picked for this series. Well, a lot of his teammates during the time off were going to play golf in Florida. He said, no, I'm going to pay my own ticket, fly up to Quebec City and watch the series. Glad to have him aboard. He's playing well. 
Rather than pay his own way, he's getting first-class treatment and is going to make some money as well as performing in this series. One of the quality people in the game, Rod Langway, is Beekoff in the center ice area. Long lead pass. It comes to the line, but knocked away from Kamensky. A pass for Gretzky a little too far for him. Kamutov in across the line. A shot fired wide by Beekoff. Picked up at the point by Stelnoff in behind the goal. Doug Wilson up along the boards for Tikkanen. Tikkanen couldn't get it out. Kamensky unable to control it. And the lead pass from Curry to Gretzky too far. Gretzky was down at the Soviet blue line anticipating that lead pass. Centered for Tikkanen. He spins around. A high shot off the glass. Ramsey back of the net for Gretzky. Gretzky controlling it out front. A shot is blocked. As Samuelson had moved in from the blue line, and that shot, that wicked drive, did not get through. Tikkanen breaks up the play at the line. Vilyaleptinov gets it over to Kamyatov. His shot is blocked. Dropping in front of that was Samuelson. Team NHL defensemen have done a good job in dropping in front of those shots from the point. Both teams have done. That's what makes this series so interesting and much better than an all-star game. You're seeing good, gutsy plays like that. The NHL team is playing very well along the boards, getting those loose pucks. Ryakin moving down the right side. He has speed over on the left wing to Cmac. Cmac moving in a shot. Oh, what a blast! He let go. It just went wide and over the glass and out of play. 10:20 is the time left in the first period. He'd heard the news. He couldn't wait, or else he'd miss that bold new taste. McDonald's Cheddar Bell. It was beef from McDonald's. A quarter pound on a toasted rye bun, but it won't stay around. McDonald's Cheddar Bell. With cheddar sauce, grilled onions, too. A bold new taste, a good to be true. Just one fifty-nine for a limited time. Cheddar Bell. It's a good time for the great taste. To go. Of McDonald's, just till March 1st. Well, Jim Day, who is acting as our official translator during this series, was telling us that today in the Quebec newspapers, they were reporting that scalpers were getting between three and $500 for a pair of tickets to this series. That's a lot of fishnaggles. Huh? <laughs> I don't see Lemieux centering his line for Claude Lemieux and Goulet. Right now, Howard Chuck is out there. We'll have to see and watch what the story is. Well, Mario well, Lemieux. Mario Lemieux did have some knee problems in the second last game prior to this rendezvous break. So they could be acting up on him again. On the left side for Michel Goulet. Goulet gets to it, takes the shot. And Bello Shaken got a glove on it. Bello Shaken rests his catching hand on top of his pad and almost teases you to shoot there. He did that and made the save. Rebound, loose puck in front. As Michel Goulet let another blast go, and Raymond Bork following up was going after that rebound. Penalty coming up. I believe Claude Lemieux is going to be going off as he dumped Priakin in the corner. Priakin got a step to the outside on Claude Lemieux. Lemieux stopped skating and used his stick to drag down a Soviet player. And the Soviets get a chance with their big line on the, on the power play. And this should be fun to watch. Shots are 8-3 in favor of the National Hockey League. of this the first period. Now watch the man go to the outside and Lemieux stops skating. He uses his stick, but the power gets by him. Now he really has to hack away at the Soviet player and the call was made. They like to set the puck up in the corner to the right of Grant Fuhr as Bergeron looks around. He sets up the team's penalty killing unit. His Quebec team is number one in the National Hockey League killing penalties. He indicated that they would be very aggressive in killing penalties, and here's Messier breaking in on the way. Takes a shot to save by Bello Shaken, and the Soviets try and set something up in their own zone with Fatisov. The defensemen are all left-handed shots for the Soviets. They like to set up Fatisov on the right point for a one-motion shot. 
Kazatonov fires it into the corner. Larionov leaves it there for Makarov. To Larionov. Soviets moving it around. Makarov back of the net. They're looking to the point for Fatisov. It bounced away from him. A race for the puck. Bullen is going after it. It's knocked away by Fatisov, and in the process, Poulin went offside. In the 79th Challenge Cup, the Soviets were three for six on the power play over the three games. As you look at Dave Poulin, the fine Philadelphia Flyer, player who plays on the power play plus penalty killing. The last time he saw the Soviets play was in the Canada Cup in 1976. It was in Maple Leaf Gardens. He was sitting in the cheapest seats called the Grays, and he is excited as can be to be in this series. Well, Kevin Deneen, I think, put it all in perspective in the dressing room yesterday following the statement that I'm really nervous. And someone said, yes, I'm not surprised. He's not about playing the Soviets, but about <laughs> playing with all these guys. <laughs> Batisov in the corner, being watched there by Gretzky. Team NHL trying to forecheck the Soviets. Prutov in across the line, gets away from Ramsey, plays it around on the boards to Makarov. Makarov. One of the veterans of this Soviet team, Kasatonov to Fatisov. He faked the shot, tried to get it back to Makarov. It's bouncing in the corner, back to the line. Kasatonov into Makarov to Fatisov. Fatisov into the slot. Over to Makarov. Makarov at the side of the net to Makarov in front. He tried to jam it. Gurr was down. The shot did not get through. Finally, it's back on the ice. Kretzky racing after it. Fatisov trying to catch up. Kretzky with a shot off Fatisov's stick. Curry knocks it in back of the net. Gretzky lets it go as Team NHL makes the change on this penalty to go from here. You saw the Soviets try to set up their defense, but Curry and Gretzky were way high trying to force them. As soon as that happened, the Soviets got the puck down low towards Grant Fuhrer. Semenov in across the line with Svetlov. Svetlov at the side of the net trying to slide it out front. Fuhrer comes out to play it around on the board. And the penalized player, Lemieux, steps back in the eyes just as the two players fall in the Canadian zone for a face-off. Let's join Brian Williams in our interview. John Whitman coming up at the end of the first period. We'll talk with Wayne Gretzky, who was figured in the only goal of the game. We'll also talk live with Federal Sport Minister Otto Jelinek about the tough and unfair penalties levied against our national juniors by the International Ice Hockey Federation. Stay with us. That is all coming up at the end of this first period, Don. Brian, that should be an interesting intermission with both Gretzky and the Honorable Otto Jelinek. And it's been an interesting first period with 7.29 remaining. Team NHL leading by a score of 1-0. Yari Curry with the only goal. And Team NHL doing an excellent job of penalty killing on the hooking sentence to Claude Lemieux. Excellent job. They never gave up one shot. The Soviets created one flurry around Fuhrer and could not get a clean shot directed towards Grand Fuhrer. This is some hockey club that Mr. Tikkanen is operating the majority of the players from the Red Army. The Red Army has 29 league titles in club play in the Soviet Union over the last 40 years. The next closest team in terms of numbers is Spartak of Moscow, who had won four times. So you can put the Red Army team and compare them to the Yankees in baseball, Montreal Canadiens in hockey. And they're not particularly popular in the Soviet Union because they have been so dominant in that Soviet National League. Cmac dumps it in. Racing back after it is Bork. He plays it around to Chelios. A long lead pass for Howardchuk. He deflects it back into the Soviet zone. And Tatarinov takes it in back of his own goal. Tatarinov ahead to Svetlov. Too far for him. And Grant Fuhr plays it out to center ice. Here's a chance for Canada as Howardchuk centers it. And a collision as Deneen goes flying into Bello Shaken and takes the net off its moorings in the process. It's a big difference that we're seeing in this game. The National League players are going to the net. The Soviets aren't going to Grant Fuhrer's net. Five on CBC, Rendezvous 87. Hockey fans could never agree on who had the hardest shot, Bobby Hall or me. Bobby Hall, Eddie. Or, or who was the better skater, me or Gordy Howe? It was Gordy. But one thing we can all agree on is Miller Light. Because we know light tastes great. Light tastes less Billy. Tastes great. Tastes less Billy. Oh, I'm going to keep.
keep my nose out of this one. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer, and less. John, you expressed some concern about Mario Lemieux earlier. He is now back, centering this French connection line of Michel Goulet and Claude Lemieux. His last game, Sunday night in New Jersey, he was decked into the boards, and his knee brace, a rivet, was driven into the front of his knee, into the bone. It was very sore, but he had the knee brace fixed up, and he's ready for action. In across the line, a Mayu top was stopped. Lemieux dumps it down the ice, back into the Soviet zone, and the Soviet team is having difficulty in crossing that Team NHL blue line. They like to move that puck in. They really don't like to shoot it in, but the Team NHL defenders are standing up at that blue line and preventing them from getting in as smoothly as they are accustomed to in many international matches. Vikoff for Kamensky. Kamensky is bumped by Lemieux, but he still controls it. He's allowed to walk out front. Pure makes the save and covers up in the rebound. He didn't even look like he wanted to shoot the puck at first. Grant Fuhr did go down, but he stayed square to the shooter and took the puck off the top of the shoulder. Look at Kamensky going around. Now, should he go to the net? He decides to finally and shoots it. Grant Fuhr with a real good save. You know, even though the National League team is out shooting the Soviet 9-5 and they're playing well, it's only a one-goal difference. It's a one-goal hockey game. Grant Fuhr, he has a brace on one shoulder. The other shoulder has a pin in it. Had problems with his shoulders over the years. Of course, there was great concern about Grant Muir about a month ago at Maple Leaf Gardens in Toronto, was he, and he suffered that back injury in a game. Fortunately, it was not that serious, and Muir was really looking forward to playing this game against the Soviets tonight. And then looking at this situation, now the NHL club making a change but they keep Messier on the ice. Gretzky and Curry come out. Tikkanen stays on the ice. Messier, or excuse me, on the bench. Messier on the ice because Messier may be the very best defensively on faceoffs. So Perron using his strong points in his hockey club like Messier defensively. Messier would be a franchise player probably with any other team in the NHL, but in Edmonton, his greatness is eclipsed by number 99. Curry. The pass for Messier. Messier races in back of the net. Messier trying to set something up. Leaves it for Gretzky. He tried to feed it back to Messier in the slot. Messier now going to the bench. Tikkanen coming on. Tikkanen breaks up the play at the line. Gretzky has it as Team NHL starts back three on two. A long lead pass broken up by Priyakin. In the center ice area, Gretzky gets it. Dodges the check. Over there. You can fire it wide. It bounces off the glass, and Priyakin gets it out to the neutral zone. C-Mac. Stopped by Raymond Bork. Loose puck picked up by Bork as Tikkanen did a good job of getting back to pick up his check. Bork in across the line. Drops it off for Muller. Over on the wing, Doug Wilson shoots it in. Back to the net, Fatisov. Starting to move out now for the Soviets. 4.47 remaining in this opening period. Team NHL leading by a score of 1-0. Krutov in across the line. A shot that hit the post. Krutov gets it again. Dumps it into the corner. Bork is there being watched by Makarov. The two of them fight for it. Makarov comes up with it. Makarov is dumped by Bork. And there's going to be another penalty against Team NHL. Big line forcing the play in the zone of the National Hockey League. Draw the penalty once again. Rendezvous 87 will continue in a moment. Make way for the new generation of pickups. Make way! Make way! All new Dodge Dakota, North America's first mid-size pickup. Dakota handles like a small pickup. Room for three inside and full-size payload capacity. Plus, the pulling power and performance of a V6 engine. Mid-size Dakota, the only four-wheel drive with Dodge's Ram top warranty protection. Make way for Dodge Dakota! Dodge, the official trucks of the NHL. The speed and the quickness of the Soviet draw, the second booking penalty of this first period, this time is DeBork. You see, they just get a step on the players, and the National Hockey League players are stationary, and it's over quickly now. We will take another look at 
the shot a few moments ago just to the outside of Grand Fuhr. Grand Fuhr with very good position on the top of the goal crease, expecting that shot. The first unit again is on the ice for the Soviets here to start the power play. They'll go a minute 30, a minute 40 sometimes on that power play, and don't be surprised if the defensemen end up right in front of the net of Grand Fuhr. Makarov in across the line. Makarov trying to set it up. Over to Kasatonov, to Makarov. There goes Fatisov for the net. Shot fired wide. Makarov back to Kasatonov. Over to Makarov. Fatisov going for the net again. And he was unable to pick up that pass. Don, that's called the back door. They start passing the puck back and forth on one side of the ice. Well, that's happening. The defenseman will sneak in, call the back door, and try and get open. It very nearly worked. Mariana shoots it in. Picked up by Makarov. He leaves it in the corner for Krutov. Back to the point for Fatisov. Fakes the shot. He was looking for Kasatonov. Kasatonov almost got turned around, but still managed to keep it in. But now, Team NHL spots an opening, and Samuelson dumps it down the ice. That time, the first unit for the Soviets went a minute, 10 seconds before they made the line change, a little shorter than normal. 50 seconds remaining in the penalty. 3.07 in the period, 1-0, Team NHL leading the Soviets. The Soviets waiting for the quality shot, too, and the NHL penalty killers not giving that quality shot away. Semenov's pass intercepted by Gretzky. Gretzky, lead pass ahead for Curry intercepted, and then Curry intercepts the pass as the Soviets tried to hit Semenov at the blue line. Gretzky has six shorthanded goals this year in the National Hockey League. Curry has four, and they're out as a pair. Gretzky has it, 13 seconds remaining in the penalty, and Gretzky will kill off those remaining seconds as he skates it back into his own zone, and then fires it back into Soviet territory, and Bork is back in the ice. Excellent penalty killing on the part of Team NHL. Four minutes of power play for the Soviets, and not one shot on goal as they waited and tried to find the quality shot. Dumped into the corner, Thomas Sandstrom of the New York Rangers is bumped there. Played around on the boards by Sterikov, but not out. Anderson tried to center it. Bellow shake and knocked that down. Sterikov picks it up in the corner. Sterikov, long lead pass, intercepted by Samuelson. And Poulin gets it to Messier. He shoots it in. Poulin goes to the bench as Team NHL makes the change. Michel Goulet plays it into the corner. He's out there now with Anderson and Messier. Messier tried to center it. It was knocked down by the Soviets. And it's brought back down the ice by Kamensky. Kamensky was checked in the puck loose in Team NHL's zone. Dumped out to the neutral area. Beacon will try to move in. He stopped. In the corner, Chelios has it. Pass intercepted. Kamotov. Had it bounced away from him as it's back, brought back by Claude Lemieux. A long shot is gloved by Bello Shaken. And Lemieux drives for the net as Bello Shaken covers up with 103 left in the third. Claude Lemieux, supposed to be the defensive winger on this line, went for the net very smartly. He didn't hear a whistle, so he went right into the goaltender, Bello Shaken. 103 remaining. In the period, Bellow Shaken wears number 20. Watch, he doesn't hear a whistle, so he goes right into everybody, tries to get the loose puck. That's the same way he played in the World Junior Tournament, reckless abandon. Bellow Shaken wearing number 20 is quite a honor for him. That was the number Trechiak wore. And usually, you don't see a person, you know, after a star like Trechiak, get the same number. Mario Lemieux from the faceoff almost broke in. Here's a chance for Lemieux. Claude Lemieux took a shot that Bellow Shaken got a piece of with Goulet at the side of the net looking for the rebound. Dumped out by the Soviets. Rick Green at the line. Picked up by Kamilev. And he couldn't do anything with it as Claude Lemieux knocks it out into the center ice area. Now it's Kamilev over on the right side to Priyakin trying to go around Langway. The two of them battled in the corner for that puck. Mario Lemieux was there to help out. He tried to get it ahead to Goulet. He couldn't move it out. But it's 
Finally knocked out by Rick Green, and the Soviets go back into their own zone with just 17 seconds remaining in the period. Grant Fuhr way out of his net to play it out into the neutral zone. And as it's dumped down into Soviet territory, it looks very much as though Team NHL is going to leave the ice after 20 minutes of play with a 1-0 lead in this hockey game. And there's the siren ending the first period of play. The first 10 minutes of the period, the NHL squad was very good. The second 10 minutes, the Soviets drew two penalties, but the NHL, as a team should, depended on their penalty killing. They were fabulous. They outshot the Soviets by an 11-5 margin. Yari Curry with the only goal from Gretzky and Tikkanen at 5-23. Two penalties in that period, the Mew and Bork of Team NHL, but as John said, excellent penalty killing on the part of Team NHL. Now let's go to our intermission studio and Brian Williams. All right, Don Whitman coming up in this first intermission. We will talk with Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky figuring in the only goal scored so far tonight. And we'll also talk live with our federal sport minister, Otto Jelinek, about the tough and rather unfair penalties levied against our junior team, also against the Soviets, by the International Ice Hockey Federation. The score at the end of the first period here at the Coliseum in Quebec City, the National Hockey League won and the Soviets nothing. Stay with us. We'll be right back. On Venture This Week, meet the people of the business world. Taking the risks, doing the work, making and losing the money. Sunday night, following Sunday Report. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Quebec City. The Edmonton Oilers have given the National Hockey League a one nothing lead. Yari Curry scoring, assisted by Wayne Gretzky and Essa Tikkanen. You told me earlier today, if you could get through the first ten minutes, you'd be very happy. Well, it's a brand new hockey team out there. We have never played together. And you know, except for our line, nobody's even uh, had a chance to be on the ice together. And, uh, you know, our three guys realized that, and uh, we went out and we were fortunate enough to uh, help us get a lead, and, and hopefully uh, we can play a good, strong, disciplined game, and uh, Grant keeps playing the way he's playing. I think we'll be okay. I tell you, it's really been an Edmonton show so far, Wayne. Let me ask you, anything they have done that has surprised you? I, I know you looked at videotapes, you've only had two practices, but you've played against them going back to 1976. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the one thing that they don't do that I, I uh, have trouble understanding is they don't match lines. Uh, they keep playing one, two, three, four. They keep playing the same uh, defenseman with the same forwards. They don't believe in matching lines. And you'll see Krutov out there every shift with Fedosov and Kasatonov. And they just keep going one, two, three, four. Keep going in rotation. Keep playing those same guys. And if there's anything that's different about their style, it's obviously that. We kept hearing that this is a physical Soviet team. It's like the National Hockey League, not as fast, but it's tougher. Was it that physical out there tonight? Uh, a little surprising. We expected to be more physical than the first period probably was. They weren't as physical as we, uh, we thought they were going to be, but, uh, may, you know, the Soviets do a lot of things. Uh, who knows, maybe that's the way they want to play the first period, maybe next period will be different. What about the penalty killing? Uh, a lot of people in this building surprised uh, the penalties both to the National Hockey League and you killed it very effectively. Well, I think that, uh, you know, we spent the last two days going over penalty killing the defensemen and the, and the forwards going over all the three coaches and, 
You know, again, uh, you're familiar with people you play with. Yerry and I have killed penalties together for six years, and we're familiar with that. And the defense are a little bit new, but we're, we're adjusting, and things went well for us. There's been a lot of talk that the national hockey players, and let's be honest, were less than enthused about this. They were bored. It was a pain in the neck. I've been around you guys now for two days. It doesn't seem that way. <laughs> I think that during the course of the season, when the other players are talking about going to Phoenix and going to Florida, and right. where it's warm and it's a nice four days off, I think there's a little bit of resentment from the other players that they wouldn't mind a few days off. But once the players get here and they see how great of an honor it is to be here and how much fun it is, uh, it's worthwhile uh, being here. Relate to our viewers what you told me yesterday about watching them practice. Tim Kerr, I think, was a little psyched out, and uh, you spoke from across the dressing room. You don't watch these guys practice. I. Uh, I watched them practice one time, uh, one of the first times I got to play against them was the first time I, I watched them practice and I don't believe in watching them because they're uh, great hockey players, they're great playmakers and they're great skaters and of course when nobody's checking them they're going to be that much faster so I don't watch them. Uh, you're tired, good luck in the remaining two periods tonight and of course in the game on Friday. Stay with us up next, the Honorable Otto Jelinek, our first intermission will continue live from Quebec City right after these messages. Feeling great. Ready to move, gonna have some fun. When I get hot, I can go all day. I build up a thirst along the way. I wanna taste so clear and right. The lemon lime taste sensational strike. Sight, lime and taste sensational. Right, get the sensation. Sight, lime and taste. just one thing that makes someone a winner. It's an attitude. You've got to want to win. That's why you choose an investment professional like Wood Gundy. A winning attitude. The essence of bobsledding. The new sled feels like gliding on silk. The essence of shaving. This is new Acro Plus, an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. The Plus is the unique lubricating strip that glides the razor effortlessly. You never felt anything smoother. New Acro Plus by Gillette, the essence of shaving. There's a road 170,000 kilometers long stretching in front of the average car. And that's why Motomaster parts are what your car needs. Because Motomaster parts are built tough for the long run. And every Motomaster part is backed as tough as it's built. So no matter where in Canada your road takes you, Canadian Tire stands behind them. Down the long road, it's nice to know you've got more than a part. You've got a company. Motomaster parts. Built tough. Back tough. Welcome back to Quebec City. The goal by Yari Curry. The difference so far in the game. Big edge in shots, though, for the National Hockey League 11-5. Joining me is the Honorable Otto Jelinek, our Federal Minister of Sport. And before asking you your reaction to the penalties brought down against our juniors and the Soviets for the brawl in Piastani, for those people not familiar with it, it basically means all players are prohibited from any international competition, including the Olympics, for one year. Now your reaction on it. Well, Brian, first of all, I think it's grossly unfair, and we can get into the reasons why. And secondly, and perhaps just as importantly, it's unproductive. It doesn't deal with the overall problem with uh, those type of violence episodes that happen not only in hockey but other sports uh, from time to time. And uh, I would think that the International Ice Hockey Federation should come up with a plan that would try to reduce or eliminate this sort of uh, excessive violence in hockey and other sports. So uh, I think uh, I think they've got a long way to go, and uh, I certainly don't consider this a satisfactory solution, and I say it's unacceptable. Not only is it tough, but the Soviets acknowledge starting the brawl, and they get the same penalty. Well, that's the point. That's the unfair factor. Uh, the Soviets started it, and they get exactly the same penalty as the Canadians. Besides that, if anyone was supposed to be penalized, it should have been the officials, because right. they let that uh, game go out of hand. And uh, if we would have had better officiating in that game, uh, that need not have happened. And people just shrug their shoulders and say, well, that's international right. officiating. But it's about time that something was done about it. All right, what about a, pella, a fellow like Steve Nemeth, who was on loan from the Olympic team, and, and all the other players eligible for the Olympics? 
they can't play in the Olympics. That seems grossly unfair, as you say. What do you do about it? Constructively, what can you do? Well, ironically, uh, my counterpart, Mr. Grimov, the uh, Minister of Sport from the Soviet Union, is here and has been in Canada for the last two or three days. We've been discussing uh, an agenda as to how to improve officiating uh, in the international hockey world, and uh, we're going to be going to the International Ice Hockey Federation in a united effort uh, with specific recommendations uh, to Mr. Sabetsky and others to try to improve this. Uh, I personally have also will be laying uh, co complaints to the IHF uh, to say that if you're going to hand out penalties, do it in a fair way and don't penalize the Canadians the same way as the Soviets when the Canadians did not start the fight. All right, my good buddy Don Sherry, who's looking in tonight, would say we should simply not go over and take part in the international games, and, and I have to agree with him in part on this in light of what's happened. If this were not an Olympic year, if the Olympics were not coming to Calgary uh, in the near future, would you recommend staying away from international hockey as a result of this? Well, Brian, let me put it the other way. Uh, we are going to lodge a protest. We are going to come in with the Soviet Union and offer a package of how to improve officiating and the sport of ice hockey internationally. And if the International Ice Hockey Federation does not accept it, uh, then we're going to have to look at step two and three, and uh, we're not eliminating any options at all. What about Steve Nemeth and the players that want to take part in the Olympics? We, want, get them we, in the Olympics? we want them to participate on behalf of Canada if uh, Coach Dave King wants them right. in 1988, and that's something that I'm going to fight for. Otto, a final quick question. Your uh, Committee on Violence and Sport meets here tomorrow. Yes, in fact, people like Wayne Gretzky, who right. you just talked to, and John Beliveau, or S. Jackson, and many others who are on this Fair Play Committee are looking at ways and means of reducing uh, excessive violence in sport, generally speaking, and I think we're moving in the right direction. Happy to see that the NHL is, uh, is taking steps, some steps in that regard, and uh, I think that's good for the youth of this nation, and that's what it's all about. Otto, thank you for thank joining you. us tonight. The Honorable Otto Jelinek, our Federal Minister of Sports. Stay with us. Rendezvous 87 will continue live on CBC Television in just a minute. Right. Introducing... Colorful, affordable, durable, 100% natural cotton fabrics from Ikea for cushions, bed linens, curtains. Ikea, Swedish for common sense. No, wait. Oh, did I say washable? <laughs> One nothing. Team NHL leads the Soviet national squad after 20 minutes of play. The goal by Yari Curry, John, and I think we saw in that period one of the advantages of having a unit intact come into an international match such as this. Well, it obviously was a design play, Don, simply because Tikanen dumped it into the opposite corner. He's the left winger. He put it into the right corner, and when that happened, Gretzky was on the fly. Gretzky was not standing still when he dumped it in. It's a turnover, a good play by Tikkanen in the neutral zone. And then they, or Curry, excuse me, they dumped the puck in. And see, Gretzky was on the fly already. Now the line gets together. Gretzky's got the puck. Tikkanen goes to the front of the net. Curry, in motion, gets himself into a shooting spot, open ice, and in one motion, the puck is in the net. Now that was an excellent play by Curry at center ice to create that turnover. The Soviets thought they were going to be going on the offensive. When that happened, their defensemen were slow and getting control of the puck. Now look at the defenseman, they're past the blue line. The puck's already dumped in. Gretzky is the first man there with a good forecheck. Curry high in the slot, blends over, moves towards Gretzky so he can get the puck on his forehand, keeking it in front. Bellow Shaken had no shot at all. Just an excellent play by that Edmonton Oilers line. Well, they have the scoring talent on this team NHL roster. Some were concerned that with the absence of Mark Howe and Paul Coffey, they might be suffering on the blue line. But I thought in the first period, they played very well defensively. Excellent. Five shots on goal, only one shot by a defenseman for the Soviets. But the team NHL basically kept the quality shots away from Grant Fury. He did make one save when one Soviet came behind the net and allowed himself the good shot. But their defenseman stood up well. They knocked the Soviets off the puck. I'm really uh, 
just happy the way they're playing in their own zone. Excellent, smart, strong hockey. And we're happy to have you providing all this expertise for our coverage of this two-game series. And live on CBC, this is Rendezvous 87. En route. It's recognized as more than an airline credit card. recognized as the business travel card for people going places. This is the beginning. The all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Beauty with a passion for driving. Advanced front-wheel drive traction. Positive response suspension. Electronic fuel injection. The thrust of turbo power. And a world of comfort inside. All with a Chrysler protection plan. The new LeBaron Coupe from Chrysler. Best built, best packed. We're here to ask people how they'd improve a nasal spray. For me, you couldn't make it work any faster. Right. I breathe easier in seconds. So I'd say... To make it last longer. Yeah, longer. So we did. Long-lasting nasal mist by Dristan. Lasts three times longer than our regular spray. Great. One spray lasts all day. Long-lasting nasal mist by Dristan lasts three times longer. No, 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 no. We don't make carols like they do. We don't make carols like they do. We don't make dragon like they do. Oh, the copiers, 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 just copiers. Unlike other copier companies, Mita only makes copiers. After all, we didn't get to be the fastest growing copier company by making microwaves. Mita, all we make are great copiers. You're about to see the difference between an ordinary electric kettle and Black & Decker's boil and off kettle. The one that won't forget to shut itself off, even if you do. Five seconds to boil and off. Enough time to tell you that Black & Decker kettles have a two-year warranty. The boil and off difference. It boils, then it's off within 30 seconds. The other will steam on until it's dry. Worry-free, convenient boiling off with push-button restart. Another powerhouse innovation from Black & Decker. Curry from Gretzky and Tikkanen at 523. The only goal of the opening period, the chemistry among these three, very apparent each time they were on the ice. And I think we'll see a little more flow develop among the other attacking units for Team NHL, John, as the game progresses. Well, the butterflies have to be gone, I would think, for the younger players like Kevin Deneen and Thomas Sandstrom. As far as shots on goal go, Don, Bork had three shots on goal. The Gretzky line had two. Curry being one the goal. Gretzky had one himself. And only one of the five shots for the Soviets were by a defenseman. Dale Howarchuk will... Be out there for Team NHL for the opening face-off of this second period. Howard Chuck, during the practice sessions, has been flanked by several different wingers, and they now have him with Poulin and Kevin Deneen. He had Tim Kerr with him uh, during the practice sessions, and he was also working with Claude Lemieux, but I think they have settled on this particular trio to stay together. Kerr was scheduled to play, but he injured his leg at the practice today, a full muscle. He was scheduled to take face-offs in the offensive zone. Krutov in across the line. His pass doesn't get through, and it's picked up by Green. Green in the corner, fighting with Makarov. Plays it around on the boards for Kevin Deneen of the Hartford Whalers. He fires it in deep. Poulin picks it up off the boards, tried to center it. It bounces. Gretzky took a swipe, or uh, Howardchuk, I should say, took a swipe at it, and it bounces in the corner. Fatisov is bodied heavily by Poulin. The two of them go down. Samuelson keeps it in. Poulin centers it. And as a tone off, flipped it down the ice. Poulin with a big check on one of the biggest men on the Soviet team, Fatisov. The defenseman, Fatisov and Kazatonov have 415 pounds of muscle between them. Two big, big, strong men. And as we have seen before from Fatisov, he has that mean streak. Here's Krutov. Trying to go around Samuelson. The puck goes loose in the corner. Krutov is taken in against the boards, and it's picked up by Messier. 
for Ramsey. Ramsey trying a pass into the center ice area. Knocked down by Semenov, but Messier following up on the play shoots it in. One nothing team NHL leads with 18.35 remaining. Stolen by Messier. Up front for Anderson. He's landed on it. It bounced away from Chelios. Here's the chance for Stelnoff, and his backhand shot is stopped by Grant Fuhrer. But what a glorious opportunity as Messier fed it out to Anderson in the slot. It bounced away from him. Anderson with another chance. He hit the side of the net. Raymond Bork in deep for Messier. Messier. Out front, and again, being tied up with Anderson. Curry gets the shot. It goes wide. Messier along the board, batting there for it, and finally holds it for the face-off. But good pressure by this line, centered by Mark Messier. Mark Messier getting all sorts of room out there. Remember the Canada Cup game in Calgary? He hit a man by the name of Coven, and I don't think Coven's ever been heard from since, but Mark Messier playing with all sorts of room. The coach just said he would be a key simply because he is stronger than any center on the ice. In 78-79, he was playing hockey in the WHA in Cincinnati. Max McNabb, the general manager of New Jersey now, was then with another club, Washington. He went to see Messier play, and Don Messier never got a shift on the ice. And if he had of, maybe he would have ended up being a Washington Capital instead of an Edmonton Oiler. This was before he was drafted. Well, he played tier two hockey in St. Albert. And, uh, of course, as you said, that uh, WHA experience with Indianapolis and Cincinnati before becoming an NHL star. Kamensky for the Soviet Union. He's replacing Davidoff. Davidoff was the player that led the Soviets off the bench in that junior brawl in Czechoslovakia. Don, you were there. You saw that. Yes, indeed. Looking forward to watching an international game come to a conclusion. The reason he's replacing Davidoff is because Davidoff was suspended for a calendar year, 1987. He will not play for the national team during that year. Myotov into the center ice area. Picked up by Stelnov. Stelnov working to the corner. Tried to center it. It bounces right through the crease. And Grant Fuhr may have deflected it off into the corner. Picked up by the Soviets again. They were looking for Bikov. He has great speed. He can really dance. He leaves it in the corner for Kamensky. He's taken out of the play. Langway unable to get it out. Kamensky from behind the net. Having trouble there with Green. Langway comes in to help out. So does Gretzky. And Gretzky gets the puck. He cuts in front of his own net. Tries to feather it up on the left side for Langway. A little too far for him. Bikoff's line likes to forecheck. You saw that during the shift. Bikoff may have the quickest speed of any skating person out there. He's a water bug on the ice. He is number 27 for the Soviet national team. Langway in his own zone, poking it up along the boards. Deaconin gets it to Gretzky. Gretzky over on the right side for Claude Lemieux. Lemieux in deep, taken in against the boards by Kusarov. And back comes Priyakin at the line. Play broken up. Priyakin gets it again. Over on the right side for Bilya Leptinov. To Cimac, his shot stopped by Grant Fuhr, and Team NHL gains control, led by Mario Lemieux. For Goulet, Goulet tried to get it back to Lemieux, broken up by the Soviets, and dumped out to the neutral zone. Samuelson, lead pass for Goulet. He again, he attempted to go cross ice for Lemieux. It was broken up by the Soviets, and they now dump it out to center ice. We're seeing the Soviets dump it out of their own zone more than we normally do. Not regrouping as much. Don't forget they're used to a larger ice surface. Here's a chance. Krutov with a shot. Clear out of his net. A sliding save as the Soviets came in three on one. That was out of character for Krutov. You see how long it took him to release that shot. If he shoots that quickly, he buys himself a goal. That little delay allowed Grant Fuhrer to get across. Pass intercepted at the line. Kevin Deneen looking cross ice. It did not get through and it jumped out into the neutral zone. Team NHL shoots it in with 15-10 left in this second period. 1-0 is the score in favor of Team NHL. A first period goal by Yari Curry. Doug Wilson of the Chicago Blackhawks for Kirk Muller of New Jersey. A shot, left saved by Bello Shaken. And the whistle with a face-off upcoming in the Soviet zone. From Quebec City, this is Rendezvous 87 on CBC. There is an airline that's a great way to fly. Always remembers who comes first. 
treats you like gold and is as smooth as silk. Cathay Pacific, the only airline that offers you the warmth and hospitality of not just one, but ten Asian lands. Cathay Pacific, we do everything possible to help you arrive in better shape. Grant Fuhrer, who made a big save earlier in this period. We talked about lateral movement. There he's getting across one shove with his right leg. His body was across the ice. The pads were stacked in a fine, fine save. Will Chamberlain enjoying himself. Pele, Pele to his left. Two fabulous athletes over the years. A number of international sports celebrities have been participating in Rendezvous 87 celebrations. Wayne Gretzky was telling me he had quite a time talking to Wilt Chamberlain the other day. Two greats in their respective sports. Pazarin off, rink wide pass, broken up by Green, and it's whistled down as it was ruled that he hit it with a high stick. John Perron, the head coach of the Montreal Canadiens, who was named the number one man for Team NHL for this series, working in conjunction with Michel Bergeron of the Quebec Nordique and Bob Johnson of the Calgary Flames. Bob Johnson is upstairs watching from above. Bergeron, as we mentioned, will look after the penalty killing unit, and Bob Johnson studied tapes and set up the power play unit for the NHL squad, but they haven't had a chance to use it yet. Messier in across the line, fakes the shot, trying to set something up, looks back to the point, and Rick Green had not yet moved into position. Green back into his own zone, over to Langway. For Messier, Messier has to circle and go back into his own zone. When the Soviets chased the National Hockey League team, whoa, boy, that puck was spinning. And when it hit the stick, I believe, of Bellow Shaken, it almost went between his legs. He almost misplayed it with 14.20 left in the period. I told him, son, gas isn't just gas anymore. Today, you need a gas that cleans. Why? It's <laughs> simple. Fuel injectors and carburetors get dirty. The new no-trouble gasoline from Esso cleans as you drive. And it's in all our pumps. Thanks, Dad. No trouble, son. I told him. Bellow Shaken comes from Suck Highland, an island in the far east of the Soviet Union. That puck is spinning, and when it spun off the back side of that golf stick, almost went through the legs of Bellow Shaken. That island is, is in the far east of the Soviet Union, just north of Japan. It's a large, large country, the Soviet Union. Bellow Shaken had a great performance in the Hesbestia Cup. He played in three games and gave up just one goal. Kamensky. Starts out now for the Soviet team. Drop pass. Curry is back there. He loses it. Starikov with a shot. Saved by Grant Fuhr. And then Kamensky is taken in against the boards. Bork trying to get out. The puck loose in Team NHL territory. And finally a sprawling Curry knocked it out to the neutral zone. Curry battles with Kamensky. Kamensky tries to get around him. Curry takes him in against the board. Now Bikov for the Soviets. Working in against Curry. Curry staying with him all the way. It comes out front. It bounces and back to the line. It's kept in by the Soviet. Kamutov moving out front. Takes the shot and Grant Fuhr got a piece of that one. A couple of times these Soviet attackers have been allowed to walk out front. Starikov with a screen drive goes wide. Good pressure here by the big red machine. But now Team NHL comes up with the puck. Rink wide pass for Tikkanen and in across the line. He tried to slide it through for Curry. It did not come through. Triaka in across the line. A shot and high up and Grant Fuhr. He deflects it to the corner and it's fired down the ice by Team NHL. This will produce an icing call. Live on CBC, Rendezvous 87. Carlsberg like, all right. People here say it's one good beer. Carlsberg like, all right. Cold as ice, it's one real good beer. Crack a cold one and you'll see why it's got that great light taste for me. Carlsberg light, 
all right. Raise a cheer for good beer. At the Team NHL bench, you see the sticks all leaning against the boards in the hands of number 99, Wayne Gretzky. That stick he uses, $37 per stick. It cost the Edmonton Oilers. And Gretzky was telling me something I found absolutely amazing, John. In his National League career, he has never broken a hockey stick. And he uses the heaviest stick in the league. It is amazing. It really is. The Oilers budget $25,000 a year for sticks that they give away that belong to Wayne Gretzky for good public relations. But it, it, imagine the years he's played pro and never broken a stick. A race for the loose puck, and Ramsey of Buffalo gets back there for Samuelson of Hartford. The Hartford Whaler rear guard goes cross ice. Ramsey to Goulet. He was looking for Mario Lemieux too far for him. And Gusera nudges it ahead to Priyakin. Priyakin gains the blue line. Still has the puck. Out front for Bill Yeletinov, and it went off his stick, and back comes Goulet. Claude Lemieux catching up with the play. Lemieux in front, tried to deflect it, as Goulet spotted him out of the corner of his eye, going for the goal, and Lemieux just failed to deflect that one. Back after it is Langway, and as he touches it, it's an icing call against the Soviet. Good setup by Goulet as he got the puck across. Lemieux, but Bella shaken there again. Kutov is one of 23 players in the Soviet Hall of Fame. It's called the Honored Masters of Sport. And what's interesting about that is you can still be playing and belong to the Hall of Fame in the Soviet Union, whereas the North America players are retired usually when they're entered. He's also been drafted by the Vancouver Canucks, and how they would love to have him in the lineup. He and Larionov. Larionov and he are on the same line, both drafts of the Vancouver Canucks. Ooh, and you see the emotion starting to build to the coaching staff on that bench. But one thing this Soviet squad can do is strike quickly. And it seems when they score one, they apply immediate pressure. And quite often, they get one and two goals in quick succession. Dr. Demers talked about the Edmonton Oilers like sharks with a fin going around in the water. They're a quick strike team. The Soviets are the same way. You can think you're holding them at bay and then over a two-minute span give up three goals. You have to play constant for 60 minutes in order to beat this great team. Howarchuk got the face off, but Poulin was unable to control it, and Makarov brings it back in across the line. Makarov into the slot, Fedosov in oh. a glove, saved by Grant Muir, as Fedosov from the point came racing in, appears to be home free, and Grant Muir gloves it. That could be enough for a person's career to make a save like that. They find Fedosov in the slot. He sees him over to the club side, gave the shooter that side. Grant Muir went there. Watch the goaltender. He knows he's going to go to the club side. He's over, he's down, and what a fabulous save by the Edmonton Oilers, Grant Muir. He gives him the club side. The man had nowhere else to shoot the puck. He had time, a good wrist shot, as the Soviets are a wrist shot hockey club. Wow, what a save. Take it off, the Soviet coach at the bench, and I'm sure he had a great scouting report on Grant Fuhr, and included in that scouting report would have been his tremendous lateral movement, and we have seen evidence of that during the course of the game. Kevin Deneen looking out front for Poulin, and it was knocked away by the Soviets as they go to the attack again with Krutov, stopped at the line by Langway, Makarov following up. Taken in against the boards by Langway, and now Dale Howarchuk leaves it for Poulin. Breaking in on the left side. Poulin driving for the net, and he's taken off the puck by Kasatonov. But it comes back out to Deneen at Kutkov. And the glove save by Bello Shaken with 11-11 left in the period. NHL, create a turnover and bang. They get a shot on goal. The fine goaltender, Bello Shaken, makes a real good save. There's the stats as far as face-offs and checks go. You see the big difference, checks, NHL had 15, they finished the body with, the Soviet Union 7, most of those 15 were forechecking checks by the National Hockey League, and when they did that, especially when Messier forechecks, the Soviet Union didn't want any part of that in the first period. In other words, they were looking around expecting to get hit. Kirk Muller is now playing with Anderson and Messier, so perhaps Thomas Sandstrom, who came into this game not 100%, is having some difficulty had bad ribs. He'd been playing with it for a few days. 
and he would love to play. It's, it's not a broken or a cracked rib, bruised. He's been batted around the last couple of weeks, as had Thomas Sandstrom, and he is a fine, fine player. Rendezvous 87 returns after this. Severe weather has messed up another Monday morning. If you don't have to go out, don't. Got important things to do. Goodyear always gets me through. The Goodyear Vector has a self-cleaning tread for extra traction through snow. And some people have learned to make the most of it. Unfortunately, five more inches are heading our way. Goodyear, take me. of this two-game rendezvous series and in the stands you see Badum, the official mascot for rendezvous 87 enthusiastically reacting to what has taken place so far Messier with Muller and Anderson the two Edmonton Oilers and the New Jersey Devil of course Muller has international experience from the 84 Olympics he starred in the World Championships in Czechoslovakia. Wilson with his shot, and it was blocked by Svetlov. The puck comes off the boards right in front of the net. The Soviet player falls. Muller trying to center it. It comes to Messier, a shot, and Bellow shaken down, makes the save. Oh, Katerinov did not like Glenn Anderson knocking the skates out from the Soviet defender, and he shouldn't. Katerinov, a very strong individual who loves the North American style. He was a draft in 84 by Washington. He lists Dave Schultz as his hockey idol, <laughs> so you know he likes the rough hockey. There's turnovers by Anderson. He creates one. Katerina standing there, and Anderson just knocks his skates out. Imagine he lists Dave Schultz as his hockey idol. With all due respect to the hammer, yeah. <laughs> Katerina has considerably more talent than Dave Schultz. But that was a play along the boards where the board checking and the hitting of the NHL created turnover. The Soviets just aren't used to the bumps as much, I don't think. From the faceoff, Gretzky with a quick shot, and Bello Shaken is forced to make another save. We are seeing a pretty good show from Wayne Gretzky. He started his hockey. Actually, a lot of roots go back to Quebec City. He played in the Pee Wee tournament here many years ago. He lost in the final 4-3 to Oshawa. Greg Steffen, the fine goaltender in Detroit, was the goaltender for Wayne Gretzky's hockey club. From the faceoff, back to the line for Ramsey. Ramsey for Gretzky. Along the boards, he leaves it for Curry. It goes back to the net, and Stelnov has it for the Soviet. The lead pass for Kamensky off the boards, looking for Beekoff. It slides into Team NHL territory. Kamensky tried to center it, and it went off the pad of Grant Fuhr with Kamoatov breaking in from the left side. Over to Tikkanen, and back into the spot for Curry. He deflected it towards the net, but it goes back to the goal, and in the corner, Kamilev plays it around. Gretzky picks it up back of the goal, trying to set something up. Oh, Curry. He fanned on it. That's two great opportunities for Team NHL with both Glenn Anderson and Yari Curry set up in the spot and unable to get shots away. They waited and waited to not go after Gretzky. The last second they did, as soon as that man went towards Gretzky behind the net, he passed it in front to the open man, Yuri Curry. What a great play. Wayne Gretzky is putting on a pretty good show here in the first half of the hockey game. By far the most dominant player on the ice. Something that Bello Shaken did there. There could have been a penalty call in the National Hockey League. He could have played that puck. Boy, he's going down the play as much as possible. There's a stay-at-home defenseman, Stelnov. Mostly a hard-hitting defenseman, capable of making offensive plays, but he likes to stay at home. And the Bugler is getting things going. We're seeing a playing game here. You know what's setting up this game is the goaltending has been fabulous. Both ends of the ice. Into the center ice area. Barnikov is knocked off the puck. Claude Lemieux came back very strongly for Team NHL. He's out there with Goulet of the Nordiques. And Mario Lemieux of Pittsburgh. Mario Lemieux with a shot off the stick high up into the crowd. When an NHL player has a puck, the Soviets like to send everybody on their team over to that side of the ice. Lemieux was open because he stayed wide. He got the good pass, and then the shot came his way. Mario Lemieux, of course, the resurgence of hockey in Pittsburgh. They've had 19 sellouts and 26 home games this year in Pittsburgh. The old record was 13, so they're already ahead by six. And they have 14 games left to go. And there's Mr. Pittsburgh Penguin franchise, Mario Lemieux. 
Yes, there's no question when he was drafted number one in 1984, they hoped and felt that he would be the franchise player that he has turned into. Into the neutral zone, Langway for Team NHL. Team NHL showing good puck control so far in this hockey game and leading by a score of 1-0 with 9.07 left in the second period. The only goal coming at 5.23 of the first by Yari Curry. Langway in his own zone. He goes rink wide. Green plays it up along the boards for Goulet. Goulet couldn't get out. Reaction. Tried to slide it in to Kamilev. Intercepted by Team NHL. Now it comes loose again. Dusarov couldn't move in. Goulet looking on the right side too far for Claude Lemieux and the Soviets try and go to the attack again with Kamilev to Priyakin. Priyakin in across the line. To the corner working against Chelios. Chelios comes up with the puck. Chris Chelios now. Lead pass for Kevin Deneen to Goulet. He deflects it down into the Soviet zone. 8-14 left to play in period two. Soviets dump it out to center ice. Makarov with Larionov. Makarov going for the net. A couple of good moves out front. And Krutov couldn't get a shot away. There's going to be a penalty here against Team NHL. Krutov was upset by Dale Howardchuk, I believe. And the puck deflects out into the center ice area. The Soviets have that extra attacker out there on this delayed penalty call. Kazatonov back into his own zone to Makarov. Kamayatov. Trying to move in. He loses the puck. Picked up by Larionov. They center it. And finally it is deflected down the ice. And the whistle goes on the delayed penalty call. This is rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. of the hockey game to Team NHL, the, the third hot hooking call, excuse me, this time it's Howard Chuck at 12.28 of the second period. He may have saved a goal here, a beautiful pass across, and watch Howard Chuck just hook the Soviet player as he was about to unload a good shot at Grant Fuhrer. That pass across was just outside of the stick, the goal stick of Grant Fuhrer, a beautiful play, and Howard Chuck perhaps saved a goal. And Team NHL was questioning why the whistle had not gone when they deflected the puck out into the neutral zone. They had to go to the interpreter for the official explanation to referee Nikolai Morosov of the Soviet Union. Maggie Kuklowitz is the interpreter in the penalty box area and he will be used if needed as the Soviet official does not speak the English language. Long lead pass broken up by Langway and Team NHL fire it back in. Look at the aggressive penalty killing here by NHL. Messier's in. Now you'll see Muller go to the loose puck. That's what Bergeron wants. That's the way his Quebec Nordique team kills penalties, and they are ranked, as I said earlier, number one in the National League in penalty killing. Has a phone off. Leaves it there for Krutov. Krutov going around Messier. Puts on the brakes. Back to the line. Has a tone off to Krutov. Krutov into the corner to Larionov. He's having difficulty there with Langway doing an excellent job. Back to the point now to Kazatonov to Krutov. So far, they haven't been able to get a shot away. Krutov back to the line for Kazatonov. He takes the shot. It bounces to the corner. Krutov gets it again. Messier has lost his stick. Back at the line to Petisov. He slides it in. Mark Messier still playing without his stick. There's the blast that's deflected to the corner. Finally, Kirk Muller gets possession and dumps it down the ice, and they bring Messier and Muller to go to the bench. They finally worked their play to the national team for the Soviet Union. They set up the right defenseman, and since he's a left-handed shot, he shoots it quickly in one motion. They waited, waited patiently, and got the shot. The pace off, fighting it in for Kamensky, saved by Grant Fuhr. In the corner, Kamensky. 
Being bumped there by Ramsey. Gets it to Makarov. Makarov. Rides it into the corner. Back to the point now to Fatisov. He couldn't control it. It bounces out to center ice. Gretzky has it with Curry. The two of them in across the line. Curry tried to slide it ahead to Gretzky. It was knocked down. And the penalty to Howard Chuck has expired. Good penalty killing again by Team NHL. Mike Ramsey. Back of his own net. And as he touches it, the whistle goes on a high sticking ball. Five on CBC, Rendezvous 87. There's a powerful new reason to drive a Chrysler Magic Wagon. Front wheel drive V6 power. Fuel injected power. And this is what V6 power is all about. The power to climb, to pass, to tow to pull you through the toughest winter with front-wheel drive V6 power. And you're protected for five years or 80,000 kilometers. Powerfully new Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager. Best built right here in Canada and best backed. Having just survived the penalty to Dale Howardchuk, Canada, or Team NHL, I should say, will get its first power play opportunity as Kamensky goes to the penalty box. Too many men on the ice, Don, is what happened just before the whistle went. And with six players with the first name Sergey in the lineup, perhaps that's one of the problems that... Stikhanov has on that Soviet bench. You imagine you sitting on the, on the bench saying, Sergey, you're up. Six men jump on the ice at the same time. Okay, let's watch this. NHL power play. Messier will be towards the front of the net. They will also have Wilson and Bork on the power play on the point. They'll try to set up Anderson, uh, excuse me, make that Messier in front and Howard Chuck on the other side. Howard Chuck, Gretzky, and Messier. Howard Chuck to Bork. Bork. Back to the line for Wilson. Wilson over to the other side. Over to Bork. Bork in front. Good and wide by Dale Howardchuk. What a great chance for Team NHL to take a 2-0 lead. Messier back of the goal. He's bumped in against the boards by Stelnoff. Howardchuk in there. Scrapping Bork. Comes up with it. Gets it across to Gretzky. To Bork. Bork takes the shot. It's blocked. Gretzky gets it again. Back to Bork. He tees it up. And hit the side of the net. At the point, Bork is able to keep it in for Messier. In front for Howard Chuck, the pass never got through as Gretzky tried to center. And we are seeing some pretty hockey. This power play with the NHL best players never played together on the power play before. Move that puck around like they should. Was that pretty? Their one power play opportunity, and so far, Team NHL coming closer than the Soviet. In front for Anderson, it bounces at the side of the net, and finally the Soviets hammer it down the ice. Bob Johnson coaching the power play unit. The Flames are in third place in the National Hockey League behind Los Angeles and the Islanders, but you see the confidence here of the NHL squad. Harry Olamieu tried to go around the Soviet defender. It goes into the corner. Curry is there battling for it, and they force a face off with 24 seconds left in the penalty. And there was four Soviets in the corner there killing that penalty to make sure the puck was frozen along the board. They're not typical when they kill penalties. They don't stay in that box area. Howard Chuck can't believe that he missed that chance. He just tried to redirect the puck into the open side of the net. He stationed himself very well on the top of the goal crease. And once the goaltender got it, watch this one. He gets himself in the perfect position. Nobody's there as the defenseman had moved across to the puck side of the ice. Ooh, and he just missed it. He had another similar chance later, and Bellow Shake and the goaltender used his goal stick to intercept the pass across. From the faceoff, Tatharinov clears the zone. Doug Wilson over to Raymond Bork. He shoots it in. Curry trying to pick it up off the boards for Mario Lemieux. Lemieux having trouble with Perbukin. It goes back to the goal. Anderson looking back to the point. And the Soviets dump it down the ice as they return to full strength with Kamensky coming out of the penalty box. Grant Pure back of the net playing it around on the boards. And it's picked up now by Yari Curry. Curry dumps it in and Team NHL making a line change. Glenn Anderson. Knocked off the puck in the corner. Picked up by Lemieux. He tries to center it. Anderson scores!
loves to wrap around, but the goaltender drops, and he gets the stick away from between his legs. And when that happened, it opened up an area, and a lot of Soviet players looked back to glare at their goaltender, Bella Shake, and the watch the goal cross and drop. And then his stick is going to be away from the hole between the legs of Glenn Anderson, so smart with a puck on his forehand, put it home. Well, two of the Edmonton Oilers stars, Yari Curry and now Glenn Anderson, responsible for Team NHL's 2-0 lead. That comes at the 17-minute mark. Anderson from Mario Lemieux. Just as the penalty to Kaminsky had expired. Goulet trying to center it. It's deflected by Claude Lemieux. It went wide. He's battling with Gusarov. Goulet comes up with it. He was looking for Poulin. It was behind him, and Priyakin breaks out with Kamilev to Priyakin. Priyakin trying to go for the goal. He's taken in against the boards, and it's jumped out by Team NHL. Claude Lemieux racing after it with Gusarov. They bump in against the boards with 2.23 remaining in the second. Team NHL not skating the puck out of their own zone. They're moving it smart smartly. They're moving it quickly. They know that that's the way to counter against the Soviets. Those Park with Langway, flipping it down the ice. And I'm not sure what that is laying on that's the playing surface. Where the bench and the glass meet, that's the rubber against the glass that protects players from injury. And it's been jarred loose on and it's laying on the ice. That was a as a result of the collision involving Gusarov and Claude Lemieux at the Team NHL bench. Now it's Fatisov circling back into his own zone, moving it to Kurt Muller, and he hit the post. Kasatonov plays it around in the boards, kept in. He's looking for a backhand. It's stopped by Kurt Muller, and Melo Shaken made the save. Now it's Larianov in across the line. He's written off and goes down, and then Ramsey bumps with Krutov, but the puck comes back to the line to Kasatonov. A shot he scores! Grant Fuhrer not happy with himself. That was a shot that he could have played and should have stopped. Everybody left the slot area wide open. They moved the puck out quickly, and everybody thought that the NHL squad was out of danger. And then it's a, just a little wrist shot going away, and it's fluttering, and Grant Fuhrer simply misplayed it and squirted it over his goal stick between his legs, and that got the Soviets back in the game here late in the second period. See how everybody's vacated that slot? Now look what happens. It's just a little wrist shot, and it just skips on Grant Fuhrer. A little concentration lapse, perhaps, and in between the legs it went. You see him trying to eye the puck, and his hand and the blade of his stick got caught together, and he missed it. That's all there is to it. Kasatonov from Makarov, the official on that Soviet goal. Goes puck in the Team NHL zone again, and Vikov. Tried to take a shot, but it was blocked and did not get through. And it's fired by Kamatov as the whistle goes for an offside call against the Soviet Union with one minute left. In a world of cards, one stands out. Our route. It's honored by airlines worldwide, major hotels, car rentals, and fine restaurants. Our route is more than a card. It's a travel management system designed specifically for people going places for business or pleasure. And En Route offers savings at hotels and car rental agencies. En Route, the card for people going places. Your travel agent has all the details. The goal's coming a minute and 42 seconds apart. Glenn Anderson for Team NHL from Mario Lemieux at 17 minutes and Kazatonov for Makarov at 18.42. This is something that Bello Shaken will do when play is in the other end. He goes down think, and has a rest. Hey, when you play for the Red Army, you're used to having periods where you can get a rest. He's a free spirit. He's still on his knees, and the puck is just being shot in. Quite often, he stays down until the attacking side crosses center ice. That's certainly different. I can say that much. You used to do that, didn't you, John? Yeah. Yeah, but only I had a lot of trouble getting up at the time. That was the big difference. <laughs> well, you played the Soviet squad twice when you were with the New York Rangers, December 28th, 1975, December 27th, 1979. What do you remember about those two games? Well, I remember one game I had a sunburn from the seven goals I got behind me, but I had shin splints. My in-laws were in New York, and I was walking 
the streets of Manhattan the night before. <laughs> uh, they were something else. I remember Valerie Harlamov scoring a goal on me, and I never even knew he shot the puck on a breakaway. Well, Harlamov, he was. You know, he's the only player in Soviet history that has had his sweater retired, number 17. And uh, that's quite an honor. Well, I, was going to say, I was going to say that uh, when Harlamov <laughs> scores, you don't have to be embarrassed about that because of the honor yeah, that has been bestowed upon him. From the other six guys, though. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, going back after it is Rick Green. 50 seconds remaining in the second period. 2-1 Team NHL leads the Soviets. Langway in his own zone. Got it to the line. Deacon in his bumps. Gretzky digs it out along the boards and flips it back to Langway over to Green. I like this Green-Langway combination defensively for Team U or excuse me, Team NHL against that Larionov line, the big line. They did a good job. Ahead for the Tisoff. The Tisoff working in against Tikkanen. Two of them battle along the boards. And they go down on top of the puck, resulting in a whistle with 14 seconds left in the period. An excellent hockey game tonight here at La Colise, the first of a two-game series at this National Hockey League All-Star break in Rendezvous 87. What a week it's been with that gourmet dinner the big stage show last evening, the luncheon, and still more to come tomorrow and Friday. It, it connects with the ice sculptures in this city, around town. Everywhere you go, there's ice sculptures. I can say one thing, though. They certainly won't melt. <laughs> <laughs> Not with the weather we've experienced in Quebec City the last couple of days, but everyone here has been warm and friendly. Kasatonov shoots it in. Makarov picks it up along the boards looking for Batisov back at the point, but it was deflected out by Team NHL with three seconds left in the period. And that was Messier that took that defensive face off in a tight hockey game. Don, we're seeing fine hockey. We're seeing basically disciplined hockey, very few cheap shots. The Soviets, I think, expected a, a dirtier series. In fact, they brought in one defenseman. Billy Aletnikov, just for that reason, but it's been just fast paced, yeah. great goaltending, except for the uh, couple of mistakes, but it's been fine to watch. Well, Team NHL is certainly capable of matching the Soviets with speed with the lineup they have here. The shots on goal, 9-9 in that period. Team NHL leads 2-1, and that's the score at the end of the second period. Winter, a great time to get away. Enjoy all that Ontario has to offer. Go to the theater, or take in a concert. Go shopping, or treat yourself to a fine meal. Or just get out and have fun in the snow. Ontario. Only one chip is thick enough to take it. The Works, a new flavor from O'Grady's brand potato chips. Never been nothing like the fully loaded taste of The Works. A mountain of a chip. Right. Thick with flavor. New from O'Grady's, The Works brand. The more potato, potato chip has it all. There's never any time for a no time left in a day. We're both so close and yet so far We've got to get away Let American Airlines Special Low Fares take you away with someone special Without a single care We're American Airlines Something special in the air It's back at the brick No down payment No interest until 1989 on all home furnishings, that means you can buy this sensational imported Italian black lacquer and brass five-piece bedroom suite and pay only $65. That's right. Make no down payment, just 23 payments of only $65. Total price, just $14.95, and you pay absolutely no interest at all, ever. Hurry, limited time only. CBC News with Milton Nash. Good evening. Here are some of the stories we're following tonight for The National. 
The latest public opinion poll has the Tories trailing. They're 10 points lower than the NDP and even lower than the undecided. Prime Minister Mulroney says he isn't worried. Democracy is back in the Philippines as President Aquino proclaims a new constitution and troops are sent to hunt communist rebels. The ceasefire is over. Thousands in Iran celebrate the 8th anniversary of the Islamic Revolution. They shout support for the war with Iraq. Two middle-aged Canadian sisters get ready to go on trial in Rome on drug smuggling charges. And Prince Andrew, Duke of York, is sworn in as a member of Britain's House of Lords. He swears allegiance to his mother, the Queen. And outside the home of the Prince and the Princess of Wales, two policemen are hurt subduing a man with a knife and a hammer. We'll have more news later tonight on The National and on The Journal. Now, back to Rendezvous 87. End of the second period. Welcome back to the Coliseum in Quebec City. The Edmonton Oilers have done all the scoring for the National Hockey League. Curry in the first period. Len Anderson in the second period. Joining me in our studio is Pittsburgh's Mario Lemieux, the leading vote-getter and the man that assisted on that Glenn Anderson goal. First of all, Mario, let's clear something up. We kept reading and hearing prior to this series that you didn't want to take part. Not really. Uh, because of the injury of my knee, uh, I, I said that I was going to take a decision a couple of days before the rendezvous. And, uh, at that time, I had uh, five more games to play, and uh, uh, I was going to see uh, a couple of days before the rendezvous if my knee uh, was okay. And uh, I went to see the doctor, and everything was fine, so uh, I didn't say that I was, wasn't going here. What about your knee? There was some speculation you might have hurt it in the first period? No, no. Everything's fine. I, I'm wearing a brace right yeah. now and uh, I just missed a shift. Uh, uh, Jean Perron made a change for Robert Chuck and me. So. All right. We should tell the viewers at home, when you came in, you looked at me and you went, whew, yeah. God, is it fast out there? Yeah, it is. Uh, <laughs> it's a different game. They, uh, they cross over a lot and they, they skate. Uh, they never uh, stop on the ice and uh, it's hard to, to get used to that and uh, read the play properly. And uh, I guess we, uh, we just have to keep one, one man high and uh, try to read the, pl the play as well as we can. Your defense has played very well. Without Howe and Coffey, there was some concern they might not be able to lug it out with the <coughs> exception of Raymond Bork, but the defense has been played well tonight. Well, everybody's playing well. Uh, we're playing good defense, and that's the key to against the Russians. Uh, every defense that we have on the team are good with the puck, and they can uh, uh, look up and make a play and uh, get, a get us uh, out of our zone, and uh, they're playing very well. Take us behind the scenes, the mental preparation. What did you guys do last night? Uh, how, do you, how do you get ready for this? It comes so suddenly at you. Well, it's just uh, we had a team meal last night, and uh, we just uh, get together, talk a little bit about the game tomorrow, and uh, uh, we go to bed early. Can you sleep? Well, it was tough for me to okay. sleep. Uh, I couldn't sleep before 2 or 3, three o'clock last night, and uh, you always think about uh, uh, the game tomorrow and, uh, and the pressure and the media that you have to face, and uh, it's always hard to prepare against the Soviets. Mario, is there a clubhouse leader for the National Hockey League, uh, maybe a veteran that uh, sort of speaks for <sighs> I think we have a few. Uh, Ray Bork, uh, he's been around uh, quite a few years, and especially uh, uh, Wayne Gretzky is our captain, and he talks a lot in the room, Rod Langway, and all these... Uh, uh, great hockey players that have been around for uh, five, six, seven years are our, our, our leader this year. All right, congratulations on a good effort so far. Good luck in the third period. Hopefully no overtime, and right. uh, good luck in the game on Friday. Stay with us. That is Pittsburgh's Mario Lemieux, and our second intermission will continue live from the Coliseum, Quebec City, right after this. Stay with us. Tiny troubles Mom, time Thank you. No trouble. Tiny troubles. Tiny troubles. Taking care of them is no trouble to us. No trouble. <laughs> People, gather round. Ludlow's our new supervisor of accounts receivable. Hard to believe how he used to be. Another piece of paper won't get customer attention. But falling long distance will. Amazing, he's now collecting on time, solving invoice problems. Ludlow, congratulations. Pity, no more lessons for Ludlow. But there's always... Fillmore. Fillmore, Fillmore. Business long distance from Bell. In the beginning, all RRSPs look alike. They save taxes and make money for retirement. But if you look closer, you'll see that some make more money than others, consistently. Over the last 19 years, the industrial group of funds from McKenzie Financial has proven that to more than 250,000 Canadian investors. So to see your RRSP take off, 
See your investment fund dealer or stockbroker, the industrial group of funds, looking both ways to manage your money. Around here, they know my name. A neighbor's a friend, not just a person next door. Around here, we know our game. Plans to win, cause we're keeping score. And our fear around here is O.B. O.B., my friend. Around here, our beer is O.V. A scoreboard after two periods of play, Yari Curry and Glenn Anderson with the goals for the National Hockey League. Everyone's been talking about the off-ice activities and distractions here this week. No one throws a party like the people in Quebec City. Let's relive a very special week. The week-long festivities here in Quebec City have been an added bonus to the popular annual Carnival, so a week at a glance for Rendezvous 87 must include the International Ice Sculpture Competition with top prize this year going to Finland. Now, no carnival in Quebec City is complete without Bonhomme Carnival, the event's spiritual leader and mascot promoting the joy of wintertime activity and celebration Everyone loves a parade, and this week visitors to the grand old capital will have had more than their share, including one that is still to come tomorrow night that we'll have here in CBC. Carnival Queen is Susie Caron. She'll reign over festivities this year. She is the 33rd Queen and was crowned last Thursday. Her Carnival Majesty and Bonhomme were regally welcomed to a formal ball to launch her year-long reign over carnival activities marked by, of course, the traditional waltz. And from the traditional to the world-famous Bolshoi Ballet from the Soviet Union. Things are changing behind the Iron Curtain, folks. This is a Soviet rock group called Autograph. But the team arrival was the most anticipated ingredient to Rendezvous 87. Coach Victor Tikhanov and his national team headed for another showdown with the NHL in this two-game series. Competition aside, though, there is something for everyone's appetite in Quebec City this week, including the Red Army Choir, also known as the Alexandrov Soviet Army Song and Dance Ensemble. Hockey League Hall of Fame has moved up here to Quebec City. Since the move from Toronto, I'll tell you, huge crowds, unbelievable, have filed through daily. Some 4,000 items, almost the entire Hall of Fame collection have been on display, much to the delight of those who have waited their turn. Long lineups. There are two of the stars from 72, Vatslav Trechak, and of course, Paul Henderson, who scored that winning goal. Paul here earlier this week. He's back in Toronto tonight. There are photos, logos, sweaters, sticks, skates, and all sorts of hockey artifacts assembled throughout the hall's temporary Quebec City Armory location. Depicted in various black and white or color photos and paintings are the game's greatest teams and action plays. Memorabilia including team programs, books, magazines, as well as a display of the types of skates which have been used throughout the years. Meanwhile, over at the Coliseum, Montreal's Jean Perron and his assistants, Calgary's Bob Johnson, Quebec's Michel Bergeron, have done their utmost to prepare the All-Stars in a short time span. Two practices, one at Laval University Monday, and this one at the Coliseum yesterday, was all the time that the coaching staff had with their recently assembled All-Stars. They held their usual pre-game skate this morning. Now, over at the Soviet national side, Coach Viktor Tikhanov has had his team well-trained and prepared for this run to do 87 confrontation. Twelve of his Soviet players are members of Tikhanov's strong Red Army team back home. That is ten straight years, Red Army, the national champion. And as we watch the Soviets work out, their practices are unbelievable. Wayne Gretzky says, I don't even look at them, I get intimidated. It hasn't, however, been all work and no play for the teams. They've been welcomed at various gala functions during the week. One such appearance by the hockey greats was the much-talked-about gourmet spectacular. 
truly a gastronomic feast which involved 10 courses and I'll tell you almost as much wine. The menu is the diligent work of hundreds of chefs offering Canadian, American, and Soviet appetizing delights. There were countless surprises on the menu, and the night's program was a tremendous success. I know what some of you people at home are thinking, but the answer is no. Those two dogs were not part of the gourmet evening. They were simply there for show. Live on CBC Television, you're watching Rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. In the world of business, there are leaders who are the first to think of a brilliant idea. And there are followers who will try to imitate it. The same holds true for copiers. At first glance, the imitations may appear exactly like the real thing. But look closely, and you'll discover nothing is as good as the original. Hi, I see you're back. And this is mine. Mm -hmm. Obviously. <laughs> Getting settled in for another fascinating night of videos? <laughs> yeah, well, I've seen it all. Oh, cool. <laughs> Good taste. This is cozy. You watching me. Me watching you. What's he watching? Because I'm talking irresistible. I'm talking smooth. Then I'm talking the best tasting cola. Coke! Obviously. <laughs> Catch the wave. Coke. <laughs> There's a road 170,000 kilometers long stretching in front of the average car. And that's why Motomaster parts are what your car needs. Because Motomaster parts are built tough for the long run. And every Motomaster part is backed as tough as it's built. So no matter where in Canada your road takes you, Canadian Tire stands behind them. Down the long road, it's nice to know you've got more than a part. You've got a company. Motomaster parts. Built tough, backed tough. Touchstone Pictures presents Bette Midler at her most outrageous. I know what you need. What about a squash? That kind of evening, huh? Maybe. Keep your pants off. Maybe not. Kids are going to be gorgeous, you know that? Please don't insult my intelligence. I want to have your child. All right. Only it's going to take a couple of hours. Shelly Long. <laughs> Bette Midler. Talk about ding -dang. In the year's most outrageous comedy, Outrageous Fortune. Now playing at a famous player's and other selected theaters near you. Check your local listings. And now, replay brought to you by Apple and authorized Apple dealers throughout Canada. Grant Fuhr made a couple of spectacular saves in the second period of this hockey game as the Soviets pressed to get back on even terms. And you'll see him take one away from Krutov. The puck goes down into the Team NHL zone. And it comes across to Krutov, but Fuhr, with that great lateral movement, comes sliding across to deflect the puck into the corner. And then perhaps the best save we've seen for quite some time. Fatisov will move into the spot as Makarov spots him breaking through. And he'll move right in on Fuhr, going for the glove side, but Grant Fuhr whips out that glove hand to take the puck off the stick of Fatisov, and it's still 1-0. Then the Canadians, or Team NHL, made it a 2-0 hockey game as Glenn Anderson goes back of the net and puts it between the legs of Bellow Shaken. And then an unfortunate goal as far as Team NHL was concerned. It appears to harmlessly come back to Kazanotov. He takes a weak shot, but Fuhr seems to get his glove and his stick tangled together, and it skips between his legs. A late goal, and it's 2-1 after 40 minutes of play. Team NHL leading the Soviet Union. Replay brought to you by Apple and authorized Apple dealers throughout Canada. This man represents one of the most famous computer companies in the world. Universally respected by its customers for security and reliability. It's the only computer company in Canada that offers a full one-year warranty and the security of extended warranty protection on every product that bears its symbol. The company, if you haven't already guessed, is... You guessed it. And the warranty is called Apple Care. When I got my real estate license, I thought I knew it all. 
But you have to keep learning, and you can't do it all alone. So I joined Century 21, and things started to happen. For me and my clients, with over 100,000 agents in North America and abroad, Century 21 has a world of experience. And the industry's finest training program puts that experience to work in my own neighborhood. And that makes a world of difference for my clients. Century 21, the largest real estate organization in the world. That's fantastic. Louis seeing double, then he becomes king for a day. You are the king of Paola. The season premiere, Seeing Things, Tuesday, February 24th. Game two of this Rendezvous 87 series from La Colisee in Quebec City takes place on Friday night. We advise you to check the telecast time in your area, and we hope you'll be joining us for the action, and we hope you've enjoyed what you've witnessed so far this evening. 40 minutes of play, very entertaining, very exciting. The game played at a tremendous pace. It's 2-1, Team NHL leading. Yari Curry scored the only goal of the first period. In the second period, Anderson and Kazatonov were the marksmen. See the big difference there, the passing stats. The Soviet Union have attempted 79 passes. They completed 58. And the Team National Hockey League, not quite as, as good a percentage of completion of passes. What's interesting there is the Soviet Union can accept passes better than any other team in, in North America, of course, simply because they can take passes off the backhand, they can kick them ahead with their skates. They're very, very adept at doing that. Not only do they flip the puck from teammate to teammate so well, as you said, they receive it so very well. Larianov, Krutov, and Makarov out there against the Howarchuk, Deneen, Poulin line. Krutov in his own zone. Ahead to Kasatonov for Larionov over to Makarov. Makarov shoots, saved by Grant Fuhr as Krutov was cutting in from the right side looking for the rebound. They wanted to make the pass and they couldn't, so finally Makarov took the shot and Fuhr made the save. It was good back checking on the far side of the ice that saved the pass across in front of Fuhr. Howarchuk digs it out, tried to center it, it deflected over to the far board. Soviets with a lead pass up to the line to Batisov, Batisov to Larionov. Batisov was spun around at the line. He was hit there by, I believe, Ramsey it was Ramsey of yes, the Buffalo was. Sabres. Boy, did he stand him up. Batisov has been knocked around a little bit in this hockey game. He's certainly not used to that. Ramsey from behind his own net as Team NHL makes the change. Len Anderson into the neutral zone to Muller. Muller couldn't go anywhere with it as he was tied up. Bounces down to the Team NHL goal and it's gloved by Grant Muir and held for a face-off. Batisov has his left glove on and he is massaging his left knee. He was nailed by Ramsey. He's 28 years old. There's Langway. He perspires so much that he changes gloves between each period. In other words, during a game, he'll go through three sets of gloves and he constantly is putting liquid back into his system. It just, he perspires so much his system is that way. Well, I imagine if the pace this game is being played, he would do some perspiring out there. We're seeing short shifts from the face off a shot from the point sails wide and it's deflected by Anderson out to the neutral zone for Kirk Muller. Messier going for the net. Muller centered it, but Messier was tied up. Bork had moved in deep from his blue line post. It goes into the corner. Messier dodges one check. The puck comes around in the boards. Chelios keeps it in. Anderson into the corner. For Muller, he takes the shot, and out of his net to cover up is Bellow Shaken. A face-off to the left of Bellow Shaken from Quebec City. This is rendezvous 87 on CBC. All I want to do is hurt him, cripple him. When the switch goes on, I feel like a machine. The talk is over. Now the action begins. Get in here. Stallone. Why not? Over the top. Starts Thursday at the Sheridan Center and starts tomorrow at a theater near you. Which home furnishing store has Canada's largest selection of brand name living room sofas, chairs, and love seats, all at guaranteed lowest prices? That's correct. The Edmonton Connection, Team NHL, Gretzky, Curry, and Tikkanen. 
Only 15 players on the team NHL bench. There should be 16. I believe it's Sandstrom that has gone into the dressing room. He has not played for some time. And he was not scheduled to start the game because he originally took a chance. And the injury came back, obviously. Gretzky has a little nick on the left side of his chin there. Five stitches. He was clipped by a man he called the most dangerous man in the blue line in. And he, his own teammate, he was talking about Dave Hunter. Centered, and Curry was tied up. Couldn't get a shot away. Picked up now by Amayutov. He flips it into the Team NHL zone, but it's dumped right back out. And Starikov at his own line to Hamayutov. Over on the right side to Bikoff. Bikoff into the slot, getting set. A shot scores! That time they gained the blue line. And when they gained the blue line, Bikoff was thinking pass, pass, pass. Finally, he was in the slot. He had no choice. And what a snapshot inside. Look how he gave that blue line. He cuts to the middle to go to his forehand. He wants to pass it. Instead, he waits for a screen as his man took out the NHL player who is Chelios. What Chelios, 25. He's going to get taken out right there. Now, there's a snapshot inside the right goalpost. A great shot, and we're tied at two. Back to the Team NHL line. Green has it. Over to Langway. Langway to Curry. It bounced away from him. Green gets it again. Ortikin under Curry in across the line. Leaves it for Gretzky. Gretzky for Curry. He tried to one time it, but he was tied up by Vilja Letkinov, the veteran of this Soviet team has not participated in the past couple of international matches. Now it's Priyakin. Priyakin trying to center it. He's knocked down. Gretzky comes up with the puck. On the right side for Curry. Curry drives it in deep. Tikkanen racing in after it. Played around the boards by Bellows shaken. Gretzky got it, tried to deflect it back to the point, but Krutov intercepted. 17-03, the time remaining in the third. The game tied at two. Krutov on the right side for Makarov in full flight, trying to go around Ramsey, attempting to center it, and it was knocked down by Grant Fuhr. Dumped out into the neutral zone. Krutov gets it again for Kazatonov to Makarov. Makarov still controlling. Makarov tried to go back to the net, had it taken away by Samuelson. Into the center ice area as Goulet attempted to deflect for Mario Lemieux, and it's picked off by the Soviets. Great wide pass for Krutov. Krutov with a shot. Fuhr out of his net to make the save. Loose puck in the spot, picked up by Ramsey. Too far for Mario Lemieux, and Krutov has it again for the Soviets. The Soviets have the quicker pace going right now. Into the corner, Samuelson after it for Team NHL. Ducote Lemieux, rink wide pass, hit escape. The Montreal forward gets it again for Mario Lemieux. Having difficulty controlling it at the line, it goes into the corner and the delayed offside is called against Team NHL. This is the beginning. The all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Beauty with a passion for driving. Advanced front-wheel drive traction. Positive response suspension. Electronic fuel injection the thrust of turbo power and a world of comfort inside all with the chrysler protection plan the new lebaron coupe from chrysler best built best packed the official scoring on that tying goal for the soviets at 203 bikov from haimayutov and starikov it was one nothing after one two one after 40 minutes of play and they say that Soviet Union don't play well when they're behind. Well, you see them picking up the pace here. They've tied it up, and now they're getting more chances. They sharp passing. The team NHL are trying rink-wide passes, and the Soviet Union are right in the middle of the ice, breaking them up. And, of course, if the game is tied after regulation time, they will play the five-minute overtime that prevails in the National Hockey League. Anderson spun around, took a shot. It bounced off a stick to the corner. It bounced away from Messier behind the goal. In the Soviet zone, they finally gain possession and clear. And Doug Wilson takes it back into his own end for Raymond Bork. Spelt off. Bork checking for the Soviets, forces him back. 
He gets it ahead now to Kirk Muller, who shoots it in. Perbukin playing it around on the boards and picked up by the Soviets. Semenov in across the line. Semenov looking across eyes for Barnikov. It didn't get to him. It comes to the line now to Stelnov. Over to the other side. The shot right on by Katharinov. And Grant here makes the save as it's brought back by Mark Messier. Messier shoots it in deep and Team NHL makes a change. The Soviets also making a change as it's dumped down to the line. Green, a long lead pass intended for Gretzky too far as it's touched by the Soviets. It's an icing call against Team NHL with 14.42 left in the third. The wife of the Prime Minister, Mila Mulroney, watching the game here at La Colisee along with Prime Minister Brian Mulroney. Marcelo Boo, the man responsible for Rendezvous 87. <laughs> First row seats. Not bad. <laughs> right behind Team NHL. Alan Eagleson, the czar of international hockey, sitting with them as well. Beacott's line back on the ice. They've had a good hockey game centered. Number 27, who is centering that line. That's Beacott. He had that last goal. Rick Green brings it up to center ice. Picked off by Beekoff. Beekoff knocked down by Messier. The two of them continue the battle along the boards. Back into Team NHL territory. Rick Green plays it off the boards for Yari Curry. Back to Langway ahead to Tikkanen. Beekoff is 155 pounds. Messier was 205. Beekoff was not intimidated by him. Picked up by Beekoff. He has great wheels. Of course, Stelnoff as he tried to move into the slot, but Samuelson did a good job of defending. Now it's Gretzky for Curry. Curry in across the line. He drops it for Samuelson, intercepted by the Soviets at two on one. Kamensky takes the shot. He fired it wide. Picked up off the board by Tikkanen. That's the first two on one that the Soviets have had in this hockey game, and they like to uh, catch you in that situation. And that was created because of a drop pass by Curry. You want to make sure on a drop pass, because if you don't, you're going against the flow of your teammates. And that time, NHL got caught. And actually, I think that puck may have deflected off the left pad of Grand Fuhr. Samuelson playing it up to the line. Following up on the play, he picks it up over on the right side for Dale Horachuk. Horachuk puts on the brake, centers it, deflected by Gene, and Bellow shake and sprawl to make the save. Pretty play by Horachuk to Gene, but he couldn't get a clean shot. 13-12 left in the third period. I volunteered. I dropped out of college and told him I wanted the infantry, combat, and Vietnam. Out of the hole! Ah! First of I got a bad feeling on this one, all right? Watch out! Rocket! Tom Berenger, Willem Dafoe, Charlie Sheen. No such thing as a coward out here, don't mean nothing. The first real movie about the war in Vietnam is Platoon. Nominated for eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture, now playing at a theater near you. Play just underway. Doug Wilson with a shot from the point, knocked down by Bello Shaken. Bork manages to keep it in. Comes back to him again. He gets it to Howard Chuck. Howard Chuck behind his back. The pull it in front. The score. Play. Howard Chuck with the behind the back pass. An incredible play. He caught everybody looking in the wrong direction. Bell Shaken did not use his goal stick. And that pass came out in front of him. He was very deep in his net. Flat right here. Bork keeps the puck in. Great play. That's the first one. Now watch Howard, Chuck. There's going to be a pass. Two men going in the opposite direction. He found the open man. And now look at the man in front. And that's Deneen. And did he finish it quickly? Perfect position. That line. Swing it out. Deneen right outside the goal piece. You see what I mean by Bellow taking it in deep? He had a chance to intercept that with his goal stick. He did not. And again, Team NHL takes the lead. What did Emil Francis, the general manager of the Hartford Whalers, tell you about Deneen? He said Deneen would go to any place, in fact, places where angels fear to tread, and that's the area called the slot. And he did it smartly. He's got himself a goal. Deneen from Pullen and Howard Chuck. 
Here's Poulin again with a blast that goes high up into the stands as it's deflected. The time of the goal, 7-0-3. Out of the University of Denver, Kevin Deneen played in the 1984 Olympics, and he was Hartford's number three pick in 1982. Hartford general manager Emil Francis said about Deneen, he says, he practices like he plays. In fact, the coaches have to go back onto the ice surface after practice and say, Kevin, get off, you've had enough. He likes to stay out there and work and work and work, and that's why he's playing in this series. That effort was rewarded as he stood in front of the net Took that centering pass and fired it past Bello Shaken. Wilson driving in deep from the point. Whistled that one high off the glass. Semenov, his belt off. Broken up at the line, but now kept in by Pervukin. Pervukin faked the shot. I think he thought the defender would go down, but Muller stayed right with him. Now it's Raymond Bork playing it around the boards and down the ice and going back after it is Semenov. Semenov to Varnikov. Over to Tatarinov. Long lead pass for Semenov. Going in. Scores! And then he crashed into the net. He may be hurt. If he's hurt, it will be his shoulder. He banged into that goal net. He is down and not moving. And there's now an individual that has come onto the ice surface. He's headed out to the direction. But what a great play by the Soviet Union. A lead pass. And in full motion... He was going, and then he faked a backhand shot up high on Fewer, which froze the goaltender, went to his forehand, and popped it into the open side. Anatoly Semenov with the tying goal. And that comes with 11.56 remaining in the third. Semenov, a big, tall center, is the NHL president. John Ziegler looks on. Watch this pass. They gained the blue line first, so it's not two lines. Now he's in full motion. There's the backhand fake. That frees his fewer. And then quickly went to his forehand. And what a crash that was into the goalpost. What a sensational play by the Soviet. You can see how they accept those passes that we were talking about. Backhand fake. Freezes the goaltender to the forehand while he was going down. And bang, did he get nailed. And Katharinov did an excellent job of spotting Semenov in full flight to feed that lead pass to him. Penalty coming up here against Team NHL. Essen Tikkanen, I believe, is going to be off. Another hooking call. Rendezvous 87 returns after this. I'm feeling great out in the sun. I'm ready to move. Gonna have some fun. When I get hot, I can go all day. I build up a thirst along the way. I want to taste so clear and right. Lemon lime taste. Another hooking call to Team NHL. This will be their fourth time. The fourth time they have been in the penalty box. Soviet Union zero for three on their power play. They've had very little chances. They've been trying to set up the pretty play in the neutral zone. You'll see Tikkanen in with a stick into the midsection, and the only thing missing there was the diving board. But the call was made. And with the score tied, a key situation in this hockey game, the Soviets have never led. I'd also point out as a point of interest that in a game involving the Soviets and the Minnesota North Stars, 24 minutes and penalties assessed against Minnesota, four against the Soviets, and the official was Nikolai Morosov, the same man who is working this game. I, think, I don't think he's done too, much, too bad of a job here simply because he hasn't had much of a job to do. That last call, not a good one, obviously. Oh. And Mayutov, good move at the line to Kamensky. A shot just whistled it wide. Along the board, Sterikov leaves it for Kamensky. Kamensky back to Sterikov. They move it around to Kamensky. Those Soviet wingers always circling, always on the move. Back at the line, Sterikov. For Kamensky, he's having difficulty there with Curry. Now it comes loose out to Stelnoff. Stelnoff tried to play it off a skate, wasn't in position to take a shot. Gretzky along the boards, gets control, unable to clear. Zikov over to Stelnoff. And along the boards, dug out now by Bikov, being watched by Green. 
Peacock taking a look. Out front as Peacock went for the net. And it was deflected by him. A shot from the point. Fuhrer flips that to the corner. Beekoff gets it again. They move it around with Kamensky. Beekoff in front of the net. Back to the line to Starikov. Tried to try to pass by Rod Langley. And the veteran defender read it and fired it down the ice. Good patience by the penalty killers. Waited, waited, waited. Finally it paid off as the Soviets made the mistake. What putt control they had shown to that point. 20 seconds remaining in the penalty. Esatikinen in the box. Makarov in the neutral zone. Looks at the head to Larianov. With Fatisov. Fatisov came in across the line and then was decked by Samuelson. And I think these two have a rivalry that goes back to international hockey uh, of a couple of years ago. Michelle Bergeron, penalty killer is there. Stood up at the blue line, and Samuelson waited, went to his man, Patisa, but knocked him down. Patisa, it's a tough night at the office. He's been down on his butt a number of times. Just six seconds remaining in the penalty to Tikhonen. Semenov from Tatarinov and Varnikov, the tying goal for the Soviets at 8.04 of this third period after Kevin Deneen had put Team NHL ahead. Now Tikhonen is back on the ice. Another excellent penalty killing chore by Team NHL. Now the Soviets in across the line. Krutov with a shot. It goes wide. Makarov from behind the net to Krutov. Krutov out front. And it bounced away from Fetisov or from uh, Kasatonov as Fetisov races back into his own zone ahead to Larionov. And it's broken up and jumped out by Goulet. 9 12 remaining in the third period. Lemieux in across the line tried to center it. Larianov broke it up for Makarov. In across the line trying to go around Raymond Bork. Bork takes him out of the play. The two of them go down and Goulet gets it in the corner. Makarov went down because he did not want to get crunched into the boards by Wilson. So he sort of bailed out. In other words, dropped down so he wouldn't get slammed. 8.44 remaining in the third. The game tied at three. Soviets make some six, unusual yeah. line changes. Well, that time they had six men on the ice right in front of their own bench, and they had control of the puck right there, and that's too many men on the ice. They make them at unexpected times. They had control of the puck directly in front of the bench, and everybody started coming on the ice and going off. Sometimes they'll fire the puck back to their goaltender, and then all five of the players, the skaters, will head to the bench and make a change. Herbukin shoots it in. Fuhrer out of his net to stop it. He leaves it there for Doug Wilson. Wilson, lead pass. He was looking for Tikkanen. No icing as Perbukin goes back after it. For Semenov. And apparently he's all right. To Svetlov. Svetlov tied up by Langway. The puck goes back to the net. Simak tried to get it out front. He was tied up and Tikkanen gains control. Tikkanen for Gretzky with Curry. Curry. Had it knocked off his stick by Tatarinov. Curry is taken in against the board. Cmac comes up with the puck. Cmac celebrating his 21st birthday today. Former junior star, now with the national team. Comes into the Team NHL zone, and then it's dumped back out by Rick Green. As it's brought in, Green gets control again. Circles back of his own net. Serge Savard, the general manager of the Canadians, had some very complimentary things to say about Green today and why he was selected to Team NHL. One reason is because he's an excellent penalty killer, and we've seen that in this hockey game as the Soviets are 0 for 4 on the power play. Now what we're seeing is the Soviets taking away passing lanes. The NHL players are looking for an open man, but there's nobody open because every time there's a lane there, there's a red jersey. Vilayetkinov has his shot blocked, and Team NHL comes back. Gretzky to Curry. Curry tees it up, and well, Shaken makes the save. The Soviets dump at the length of the ice, and this will be an icing call against the Soviet Union as it's touched by Doug Wilson. This is Rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. If you want it, here it is. Come and get it. Make your mind up fast. If you want the complete car with 47 comfort and performance features you don't have to pay extra for, 
Chrysler presents the complete car. Dodge Shadow and Plymouth Sundance under $9,700. Come and get it. Chrysler, best built, best backed. 641, the time remaining in a 3-3 hockey game. Team NHL and the Soviet Union. Game two here at Le on Friday night. The defensemen talking amongst themselves how to find an open man. The Soviets are dropping back and really clogging up the area they call the neutral zone between the two blue lines, the center ice area. And Team NHL have not been in sync going into the Soviet zone. Messier in the face-off circle yeah, against no Bikoff. The, the I I there's a loose puck there. Messier should get it. Yeah, okay. 50 pounds heavier. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He gets the draw, but back at the point, Raymond Bork had moved over. And now, Grant Fuhr way out of his net as Anmayutov was coming in after that loose puck along with another Soviet player. Here's a chance for Messier. A bellow shaken out of his net to knock it off his stick and the Soviets move to the attack. Bikov to Haimoyatov. Bikov gets it again in front and the Soviet player was taken right into the net. That was Kamensky by Glenn Anderson. Good job of coming back by Glenn Anderson. He has done that three or four times in this game. Very smartly defensive hockey by Glenn Anderson. Bello Shaken, what a save on Messier. That's one of the few times Bello Shaken has come out of his net, out of the goal crease area. He did because Messier had no other options. All he could do was try and deke the goaltender. The goaltender never gave him any time. Pullen racing after it in the corner. He tried to slide it out to Anderson, and it went off a leg and back into the corner. Now the Soviets to the attack with Makarov for Krutov. But coming back to pick it off is Poulin. He plays it into his own zone to Rod Langway. Soviets forechecking. They get the puck. Krutov trying to set up, being harassed there by Langway. Still manages to control it. Has a turn off at the side of the net to Makarov, and he deflected it wide. Now it's Poulin trying to move it out. It bounces high, still in Team NHL territory. And finally, the pass intercepted by Samuelson. He was looking for the lead to Howarchuk. He couldn't go anywhere with it. And Krutov brings it back for the Soviets with 4.59 left in the game. Kevin Deneen gets it over on the left side now to Muller. Muller in across the line. Deneen going for the net, but Muller was tied up in the corner by Kasatonov. And the loose puck picked up by Krutov. 3-3 three, three the score. The first of a two-game series here at Rendezvous 87, game two on Friday night. That may have been the best shift in the whole hockey game by the big line. Marianov centers for Kutrov and Makarov. Svetlov, spun around by Samuelson, gets it back to Perbukin. His shot, and what a save by Grant Muir as he flipped that pad out on a shot that appeared to be labeled. Well, he thought it was going to be stopped by Ramsey, and the puck went through Ramsey. A quick snapshot from the blue line. Grant Fuhr is sharp. An icing call with 4.15 left in the third. So no trouble gasoline. Uh, no trouble. Why? Because it cleans as you drive. Well, the Rendezvous 87 parade takes place tomorrow night. Ernie Afghanis and Terry Liable will be on hand to describe this very colorful event and part of this Rendezvous 87 celebration. And we invite you to tune in over most of these stations following the low plate. Oh, Late local <laughs> news and sports. Geez, I hope you and I don't have any trouble pulling that New York Ranger boat around, huh? <laughs> Perbukin back at his own line. Over to the other side to Tatarina. Lead pass to Svetlov, and he didn't even stop that puck. He just redirected it to the other side in anticipation of the winger on that side breaking in, but Team NHL broke it up. 
Soviet defensemen are getting the puck at their own blue line, waiting, waiting, back and forth, and passing the puck, but then playing that quick strike pass up the middle. Pass intended for Tikkanen, bounced away from him, fired back to the line. Raymond Bork is there to break it up for Team NHL. For Wayne Gretzky, to Raymond Bork, over on the wing for Tikkanen, back to Bork. Bork in deep. Bork maintaining control, tried to play it around behind the net, nobody there. Langway managed to keep it in. Now Tavarinov spots an opening and then hammers it down the ice, and he is bumped by Claude Lemieux. And these two have a rivalry going from the World Junior Championships in Helsinki in 1985. They That's were there Rina. for that one oh, when boy. Wendell Clark and Jim Sandlack decked Tatarinov with very clean hits and put him out of the hockey game. It was a battle. And the Canadian side won the gold medal. Tikhanov, who likes to get a good look at the ice surface, he stands in front of his players where coaches over here in North America stand behind and there he's able to see yelling instructions in the 70s he played for Diamond Riga, a second division team excuse me he was the head coach of that team that team had helmet Balderas on it a flashy Soviet star he wasn't a bad hockey player he had a lot of mustard for him though wow three minutes remaining in the third Curry's pass is intercepted by Cmac, but he couldn't get a shot away. Now Gretzky breaks out for Team NHL on the right side. He was looking for Curry. It just didn't get there. Now the Soviets cross at the line, drop pass. Ryakin was looking for Cmac, and Team NHL got back very quickly to pick that one off. 2:39, the time remaining in regulation play. It will be a five-minute overtime period. Should it still be tied? Cmac. Played it off his skate. Kicked off now by Gretzky. Gretzky coming in against Kucherov. And Belosheikas. Good as ground to make the save. Gretzky tried the area between the legs. The goaltender dropped down and left an opening. And Gretzky couldn't find it. There's a big area they call a five hole. And he tried. Wandivu 87 returns in a moment. Gurry with a turnover right at center ice gave it to Gretzky and a watch Belichick and he's going to drop and it's going to be a hole between the legs. Gretzky tried to find it but he just couldn't get it there in time. He had Belichick exactly where he wanted it even though he was on the short side. Didn't quite hit that opening. I believe in Craig Patrick's scouting report that's one of the things he indicated that uh, wraps the area between the legs is where the young goaltender was vulnerable. Glenn Anderson has the goal there and Gretzky very nearly had one. So you know they're trying to find that area. Craig Patrick, you have to give him credit. A 27 page report to set up the series for Team NHL. Here's Claude Lemieux in across the line. Bumped by Kamensky. Lemieux still with one hand on the stick. Tried to center it. It didn't quite get through. 142 remaining in the third. Kamensky tried to go around Wilson. Wilson took it away from him. Mario Lemieux stopped at the line. Brought back in by Kamensky. Now it's Makarov. In across the line, working against Wilson. Doug Wilson stayed right with him and comes up with the puck for Mario Lemieux. He has Poulin going in with him. Mario Lemieux shoots and scores! Lemieux with a wrist shot, and it is deflected by Poulin over 
And what a timely goal. 115 left now in the third period. Let's see what the Soviets do. When will they pull their goaltender? Here comes Krutov. Krutov dropping it off for Makarov, and he couldn't control it, and it's dumped out by Team NHL's Kevin Deneen. We're into the final minute of the third period. Team NHL leading by a score of 4-3. Makarov against Deneen. Gives it to Mariana. Over to Batisov. Batisov has left looking for Krutov, and he was tied up at the side of the net. Rod Langway had him tied up, and he just, no way in the world he was going to be able to redirect that puck. The goaltender hasn't even had a, any idea to go over to the bench for the extra attacker. Dumped in by the Soviets with 29 seconds remaining in the third. The Soviets coming oh so close to getting the tying goal. Messier. Ahead to Kirk Muller, it's deflected down the ice. Bellow shaken is forced to play it with 15 seconds left in the third. The piece off is forced back by Kirk Muller. They haven't got their goaltender out. We're into the final second. Seven seconds left. Pass intercepted. Team NHL is going to win this opening day. The final score of tonight's game is Team NHL for the Soviet three. Make way for the new generation of pickups. Make way! Make way! All new Dodge Dakota, North America's first mid-size pickup. Dakota handles like a small pickup. Room for three inside and full-size payload capacity. Plus, the pulling power and performance of a V6 engine. Mid-size Dakota, the only four-wheel drive with Dodge's Ram top warranty protection. Make way for Dodge Dakota! Make way! Dodge, the official trucks of the NHL. En route. It's recognized as more than an airline credit card. recognized as the business travel card for people going places. This is a typical kind of house that we Japanese have lived in for hundreds of years. Today we're building more and more Western style homes like this one. We use your Canadian wood and we also import your technology. Remember, you are leaders in the world's forest industry. Our forests, our richest resource, our biggest business. Let's not take them for granted. Dave Poulin of Philadelphia has officially been credited with the game-winning goal at 1845 from Mario Lemieux and Doug Wilson. And it was a tremendous hockey game, the first of this two-game affair here in Quebec City at Rendezvous 87. Great pace, tempo throughout, highly entertaining. It certainly was. Give the penalty killing unit of the Team NHL some credit. The goaltending of Fuhr was very good. We saw a great hockey game, Don. Canada led 1-0 after one period. It was 2-1 after 40 minutes. Team NHL went ahead again in the third before the Soviets tied it, and then Dave Poulin with the winning goal at 18.45. So that's it from La Colise in Quebec City. On behalf of Brian Williams and John Davidson, I'm Don Whitman saying good night. Rendezvous 87. Brought to you by Carling O'Keefe, Brewers of Miller Lite. Chrysler Canada, who bring you the all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. 
by Esso. Stop in and fill up with the no trouble gasoline. By your local bottler of Coca-Cola. Catch the wave, Coke. Once again, the final score of the National Hockey League 4, the Soviet Union 3. Poulin now credited with the winning goal. Just a reminder, we're back on the air, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, with Game 2 Friday. It's been a good one. We'll talk to you Friday night. Late in the third period in the opening game Wednesday night. Poulin going in with him. Mario Lemieux. Just A winning goal scored by Philadelphia's Dave Poulin added to the team for his defensive ability. When you play against a top offensive line and you do create turnovers, you're going to get offensive chances. And we knew that, and uh, both Dale and, and myself, as well as Kevin, were well aware that, that we may have good chances to score. And if we did, we had to capitalize and could really turn the game around. The game featured some spectacular goaltending by Edmonton's Grant Fuhr. He was confident prior to the opener Wednesday, and it is no different tonight. We got a lot of talent, a lot of heart in this room, and I think we should win tonight. One of the pleasant surprises for the NHL, the strong play on defense. Many considered it suspect with the injuries to Howe and Coffey. Washington's Rod Langway and Montreal's Rick Green were dominant, and their continued dominance of the blue line is definitely needed this evening. Well, I think that with the offensive ability of those, uh, the Russians, the, uh, they can score goals, and I think we have to respect that. I think that it's uh, critical for us to leave, uh, leave the shots from the slot area and uh, keep everything to the outside uh, so that the goalie can see it and, uh, and then clear the rebounds. And I think that if we can do that, then, we're, uh, then we should be pleased. The game's most valuable player, Edmonton's Mark Messier, for him tonight is quite simply a dream come true. Well, I think everybody here relishes it. I think it's, uh, it's a nice opportunity to be here amongst uh, some pretty good hockey players that weren't selected. And uh, to be selected here is, uh, is a very nice honor, and uh, we're going out there and giving it our best. So tonight, it's the final showdown here at Rendezvous 87 in Quebec City. Rendezvous 87. Brought to you by Carling O'Keefe, Brewers of Miller Lite. Chrysler Canada, who bring you the all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. By Esso, stop in and fill up with the no-trouble gasoline. By your local bottler of Coca-Cola, Catch the wave, Coke. Good evening, everyone. I'm Brian Williams. Welcome to Le Calice here in Quebec City. This is it, the showdown. Now, on Wednesday night, the National Hockey League won by playing smart, controlled hockey. The credit for that has to go to the coaching staff, Montreal Jean Perrin, Calgary's Bob Johnson, and of course, Michel Bergeron from right here in Quebec City. I will be talking with Jean Perron in just a few minutes. The Soviets, well, they were stunned to say the least. They had a long, hard practice yesterday that at times was downright nasty. There was slashing, there was hacking. Coach Victor Tikhonov was yelling. And word here tonight is that if Tikhonov doesn't win this game, his job is very much on the line. He could be replaced by a former great Soviet player, Boris Mikhailov, right now. Let's introduce you to our play-by-play -play crew for tonight's second and final game. Here are Don Whitman and John Davidson. Brian, there seems to be a general feeling, even among the players, John Davidson, that the Soviets will come out flying tonight. 
I think, Don, what you'll see them do or what they tried to work on at practice yesterday was to go to the net. They felt that they didn't play that bad in that loss to the National Hockey League, but they did not finish. So their practice yesterday was it just all they wanted was to, for them to go around the net, find those rebounds, get there quickly, and try and finish as much as possible. They also worked a little bit on that power play, which was 0 for 4 in game one. The National Hockey League themselves, Don, felt that their, their work along the boards and forechecking was good. They want to come out and bang early. I think you'll see it. Team NHL in game one did such a good job of controlling the zones. Well, their defense and their forwards played as a unit, which was very, very important. Their defense played defense, and I think that was the biggest key. They made good, smart decisions, either simple little passes or chip the puck out. Team NHL did an excellent job in game one, winning by a score of 4-3, and now standing by with the head coach, John Perrant, here's Brian Williams. All right, thank you, Don Whitman. Coach Shaw Perron, prior to the game Wednesday night, you told me if you would get through the first period with a scoreless tie, you'd be happy. Do you have the same feeling heading into this final game tonight? Yes, uh, I do. I feel uh, the Russians will uh, come out uh, a little bit more aggressively, uh, using uh, more short passes to uh, take our defensemen off guard. And uh, if we can uh, react uh, very well away from the puck and uh, move up the puck uh, quick, uh, I think we have the defensemen who can uh, feed our forwards very, very well. Uh, and uh, using short shifts like we uh, did on Wednesday night, we'll be in the driver's seat after the first. All right, I know you have to get out very quickly. You've studied the videotapes. What were your last-minute instructions to the team? Oh, pride, intensity, discipline, even if we have... Uh, an NHL referee, uh, it's going to be very, very important and uh, making sure that uh, we react very, very well defensively. Good luck tonight. Thank you very much. Everything is in readiness at Le Colisee, and we will return with the player introductions right after this. Hi, I see you're back. And this is mine. Mm -hmm. Obviously. <laughs> Getting settled in for another fascinating night of videos? <laughs> Yeah, well, I've seen it all. Oh, cool. Good taste. This is cozy. You watching me. Me watching you. What's he watching? Because I'm talking irresistible. I'm talking smooth. And I'm talking the best tasting cola. Coke! Obviously. Catch the wave. Coke. Of all the movies you can see this year, only one has been acclaimed by every single critic. Vincent Canby of the New York Times calls it a singular achievement, exceptionally moving. A great movie, two big thumbs up, say Siskel and Ebert. Mike Clark of USA Today gives it four stars as the year's most powerful film. See the one David Denby of New York Magazine calls a great American movie, Platoon. Nominated for eight Academy Awards, including Best Picture, now playing at a theater near you. She had a perfect home, a perfect marriage, a perfect life. Then the phone rang. Sorry, Edna, but I thought you ought to know. Dancing in the Dark. Best on the Box, Sunday. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Quebec City for the second game of Rendezvous 87 between the players of the Soviet national team and the National Hockey League All-Star team. Mesdames, Mesdemoiselles, Messieurs, Son Excellence, le Gouverneur Général du Canada, la très honorable Jean de Sauvé, Your Excellency, the Governor General of Canada, the Right Honorable Zan Sauvé, and the Honorable Maurice Sauvé. Here now is the starting lineup for the USSR national team. Playing in goal, wearing number 20, Evgeny Belichakin. À la défense, le numéro 2 et capitaine, Vyacheslav Petitsov. Le numéro 7, toujours à la défense, Alexis Kajakova. At center, wearing 
number 11, Igor Larama. At left wing, wearing number 24, Sergei Makanov. At right wing, wearing number 9, Vladimir Krutov. Et voici maintenant les joueurs de l'Union soviétique. s'achève, rendez-vous 87, c'est voulu le rassemblement des artistes et des athlètes représentant trois des plus grandes nations de l'univers. Mesdames et messieurs, voulez-vous vous lever pour vous joindre à M. Guy Lavoie qui interprétera l'hymne nationale du RSS.
And now, Mr. Guy Belanger will sing the Star Spangled Banner, the national anthem of the United States of America. Pour chanter au Canada, accueillons Madame Ginette Renaud. Become an integral part of our national game. Depuis 15 ans, le hockey international a fourni aux amateurs quelques-uns des plus beaux moments de l'histoire de notre sport national. Qu'on pense à la série du siècle de 1972, la Coupe Canada de 1976 et la Coupe du Défi de 1979. Qu'on pense aussi à la victoire surprise de l'équipe olympique des États-Unis à Lake Placid en 1980. 
to commemorate some of the most important moments in the history of international competition, let's greet three players representing Canada, the United States, and the Soviet Union, who played key roles in those competitions. Vladislav Kretschak, the hero of the 1972 Super Series. Mike Eruzioni, captain of the 1980 U.S. Olympic gold medal winning team. And Guy Lafleur, member of the 1976 Canada Cup winning team. Mesdames et Messieurs, Vladislav Kretschak, Mike Eruzioni et Guy Lafleur. Nous demandons maintenant au capitaine des deux équipes de s'approcher pour la mise au jeu protocolaire de cette rencontre. And now the captains will exchange gifts, a tradition before every international hockey competition. Les capitaines des deux équipes, Yatislav Petisov et Wayne Gretzky, vont maintenant procéder au traditionnel échange de cadeaux entre les équipes participant à une rencontre internationale. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much and enjoy the game. Madame, Monsieur, bonne soirée et bon match. Stay tuned for the opening face-off. This is Rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. I told him, son, gas isn't just gas anymore. Today you need a gas that cleans. Why? It's <laughs> simple. Fuel injectors and carburetors. Get dirty. The new no-trouble gasoline from Esso cleans as you drive. And it's in all our pumps. Thanks, Ed. No trouble, son. I told him. Around here they know my name. Neighbors and friends, not just the person next door. Around here we know our game. Play to win, cause we're Beer is OD. En route. It's recognized as more than an airline credit card. recognized as the business travel card for people going places. Over the years, General Electric has been turning ironing into less of a chore with innovations to meet the changing needs of each generation. Today, the General Electric heritage is carried on by Black & Decker with advanced models featuring automatic shutoff to make ironing safer, easier and more convenient. Worry-free ironing backed by a two-year warranty. Black & Decker. Remember the name and you can forget about the iron thanks to our automatic shutoff. Another powerhouse innovation from Black & Decker. Welcome back to La Colisee in Quebec City and for tonight's second game, a National Hockey League referee will be in charge at the Soviet bench. Viktor Tikhonov and his assistant Vladimir Yerzinov look on and all three coaches will be behind the Canadian bench tonight. Michelle Bergeron, who will look after the penalty killing, Jean Perron, the head man, and Bob Johnson of the Calgary Flames, who will handle the power play. He spent game one up in the press box, observing from up high and passing on his thoughts between periods. But the Canadian squad feels that they will have more power play opportunities in this game, and Team NHL thus has opted to have Johnson down at ice level. And as I said earlier, the National Hockey League supplies the referee for this second game, Dave Newell, who has just recently worked his 1,000th game, will have Ray Scapanello and Ron Finn with him. Avgeni Beloshakin is back in goal for the Soviet squad. He plays for the Red Army, and he made some great saves in the opening game, as did the man at the other end, 
the team NHL goaltender from the Edmonton Oilers, Brad Pure. Not really much of a surprise that the coaching staffs on both sides are staying with the goaltenders from game one. And what else is not a surprise is the fact that the team NHL is the home club and they start Howard Tuck along with Deneen and Poulin against the big Red Army line centered by Larry Onoff. Before a checking line, they did well in game one for Team NHL. They came up with a pair of goals. Kevin Deneen and Dave Poulin with the winner. Green back into his own zone. For Langway, for Howard Chuck in the center ice area, he spins away behind his back for Poulin. In across the line, he fires it into the corner, and Krutov goes back to pick it up, loses it there to Howard Chuck. He tried to center it. It went off the skate and back of the net. It's Kasatonov. Long lead pass to Larionov. The three Soviets in across Team NHL's line for Krutov. He tried to center it, but Howard Chuck was there to deflect it. It goes to the board, and it's picked up. In the Team NHL zone by Doug Wilson, a long lead pass too far. It slides down the ice for an icing call against Team NHL. The Soviets are already seeing more physical play from Team NHL. Kikanov, very, very testy after game one. He said his team simply didn't play as well as they could have. Don, they changed their style in that game. They dumped the puck in five times into the Team NHL zone during the first period. In other words, they gave away possession once only in the second period and three times in the third. So the possession game that the Soviets used to employ, they did that during the second half, regrouping, going back into their own zone. Ferran's team, he said, would come out more physical. Deneen broke his stick over uh, Makarov that shift, and then Powerchuk or Poulin make that, took a run at one of the players. The official symbol of Quebec Winter Carnival, Bonhomme Carnival, and so symbol of the carnival has a pretty good seat to take in action here in game two. Team NHL icing the puck and the faceoff will take place back in the Team NHL. And what they're doing there is picking up the splinters from Deneen's stick when he hits one of the players and Poulin finished up with a check right there and bang and he finished. He used the size, the upper part of his body and the stretch along the boards. That's what the NHL wants to do in this hockey game. It was interesting, after game one, Team NHL didn't think it was a particularly physical game. The Soviets thought it was a very physical game. Two different theories on how to play the game. You must keep your emotions where they should be, though. Gary Curry to Gretzky as Team NHL breaks out in across the line. Gretzky tried to drop it back to the point for Chelios. It was picked off by the Soviets, and they bring it out. Katarinov. In across the line, into the slot for Lavrov. He had it knocked off his stick. There have been two changes in the lineup for the Soviets for this game. Nemchinov and Lavrov are in the lineup, replacing Simonov, who scored a goal, and Varnikov, who picked up an assist on that Simonov goal. Curry fires it around the boards, picked up by Tikkanen. Tikkanen tries to go back to the net for Gretzky. Katarinov got there first, played it around on the board, but it's kept in as Chris Chelios had pinched in from the point. Centered, and it just bounced away from Yari Curry as Gretzky dug it out in the corner. In the center ice area, Svetlov spun around by Chelios. Kamensky following up took a backhand shot that goes wide, and it's brought out by Green. Over on the left side for Gretzky, too far. The Soviets knock it back out to the neutral zone. And then it's gloved and thrown in by Essa Tikkanen as the puck bounced high. He went off to the bench in the chains, but he simply threw that puck down into the Soviet end. Here's Vikov with a shot, and Pure makes the save. A high, rising shot that Pure gloved and juggled. That was a great pass by Kamensky, a young, rising star to the Soviets. A great pass, and the first shot that Grant Pure takes is a high shot on his glove hand side. Team NHL with eight defensemen dressed for this game. Norman Rochefort, who did not dress for game one, is in the lineup. Thomas Sandstrom is out of the lineup. He suffered an injury, and the New York Ranger forward will be lost for the next couple of weeks to his team. Incidentally, Sandstrom has a cast on that foot now, and they're not real sure, and they think it may be a fracture. Rochefort getting his first shift. Nemchinov tried to center it. He was taken in against the board by Rob Langway, who played a superb game for Team NHL on Wednesday night. 
in the center ice area. Lemieux has spun around. Langway following up. Shoots it into the Soviet zone. And there's a whistle on the play. A penalty call against the Soviet Union. So a power play opportunity early for Team NHL. This is the beginning. The all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Beauty with a passion for driving. Advanced front-wheel drive traction. Positive response suspension. Electronic fuel injection. The thrust of turbo power. And a world of comfort inside. All with a Chrysler protection plan. The new LeBaron Coupe from Chrysler. Best built. Best packed. 22 seconds. Ventinov in the penalty box. The call is tripping at 322 of the first period. That was only his second shift on the ice. He did not play in game one. And we'll see what Deacon and the coach thinks about that. Watching the neutral zone. He goes in along with Anderson. And he's the left catch. Not much of a call there. I think Lemieux went down trying to get out of the way of Glenn Anderson. I think Ventinov feels the same way. But the National League team now with the power play they wanted on the ice. Get a chance. Bork with the shot, it goes wide. That puck came bouncing off the top of the goal and almost went out front. Out front, and they score, Messier! <laughs> Soviets are arguing the fact that that goal went in, that the puck went over the line. They set up behind the net. Curry is there. What three Soviets try to scramble back to get at Mark Messier? They can't. And Newell points to the man that scored the goal. Messier and tribulation is there. Watch the man get stripped by Curry right there. That's what the Soviets are upset about behind the net. Now all three of them are trying to get back. They think they had the puck. They didn't. And it's one nothing National Hockey League. The captain now, Batista. Arguing the point right now with the official. Mark Messier, who was the outstanding player for Team NHL in game one, getting the goal, a power play tally. And the assists go to Curry and Gretzky at 332. So it's one nothing Team NHL over the Soviets. And it didn't take long for them to capitalize on that Soviet penalty. Their power play, the one opportunity they had in game one, really looked strong. It looked strong. They had chances to put the puck in three or four times. What the National Hockey League wanted to do in their power plays, decide who was going to set up behind the net. Batisov, back of his own goal. He's bodied by Poulin. Krutov tries to come out the other side. And Poulin has certainly been throwing his weight around early in the hockey game. He has dished out a couple of good body checks. Patisov to Larionov. He takes the shot, and that's handled by Grant Fuhr. And off his stick, it goes up into the crowd for a face-off in the Team NHL zone. Running to 87 is coming to you from Quebec City. No, 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 no. We don't make Unlike other copier companies, Mita only makes copiers. After all, we didn't get to be the fastest growing copier company by making microwaves. Mita, all we make are great copiers. The Soviets overload when they kill penalties. They're all trying to look at that loose puck. Look at Messier, all by himself in front. The Soviets overload to one side. That cost them a goal, a couple of deflections on the way in, but the puck went over the line. Boy, when they kill penalties, they all end up on one side of the ice. That reverse angle slow-mo showed us that Messier really didn't get good wood on it, and it actually went into the net off Krutov's stick. Back at his own line, Chelios quickly over on the wing for Bork. He dumps it in for Team NHL. Michel Goulet in behind the net. Picked up by the Soviets, and it's Petlov in the neutral zone. Stopped by Chelios. He was looking for Goulet. Goulet gains possession. Retreats to the center ice area as Team NHL attempts to set something up. Leading by a score of 1-0. Deflected in by Goulet. 15-06 to 
time remaining in this opening period. We are seeing a very, very physical National Hockey League team here. The sticks are up. They're finishing checks all over the ice. Lemieux plays it back to Samuelson. He tried to drive it in. It was broken up by the Soviets, and it goes back into the team NHL zone. It's cleared, and Mark Messio scored that power play goal. Feeds Anderson for Muller. Muller had difficulty controlling it. Delnoff takes him in against the boards, and pretty the good Soviets elbow. bring it back. That was a pretty good elbow. Kamensky racing for the loose puck along with Samuelson. Samuelson goes down, falling on top of it and covering up for a face-off. Michelle Bergeron talked about the penalty killing in game one. He said it's a situation where most teams in the National Hockey League kill penalties in a very similar style. And he, he said, listen, it was easy to coach that part of it. Samuelson, the Hartford Whalers, he and Thomas Sandstrom grew up in an area of Sweden together. They started playing hockey together as nine-year-olds. They're the coaching staff on the bench of the Soviet Union discussing things and what strategy to use. According to Emil Francis, Samuelson is a very underrated performer. He says he's an original. You can't change him. He's a very different individual. He plays his own game. He's an aggressive player. Gusarov, a uh, backhand shot, steered to the corner by Fjord. Ryakin picks it up there for Cimac. Cimac into the spot and couldn't get a shot away. And back comes Gretzky. Gretzky with the long drive that is gloved and held by Bello Shaken for a faceoff in the Soviet zone with 14.09. The time left in the opening period, and it's 1 0 for Team NHL. The Thornbirds was a success in Canada. It earned some dollars for Australia, as it even earned one or two for me. Mind you, most of my books are printed on Canadian paper, and that earns a lot of dollars for you. I know how important your forest products are. Just make sure you stay ahead of the competition. Our forests, our richest resource, our biggest business. Let's not take them for granted. John, as you pointed out at the start of the telecast, Team NHL is the home team for this game, so as a result, John Perron has the opportunity to match lines, something that Tikhanov did not do in game one. They just go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, unless they were losing. They used this very on off line a little more, but what they're also doing is keeping Langway and Green on the ice as much as possible against that big line. Very defensive defenseman. Howard Chuck gets the draw to Green. It's played back to the net. Howard Chuck with it, looking out front. He's having trouble there with Fatisov and Kasatonov manages to get a shot away. Deneen takes the shot, and that goes over top of the net. Kasatonov trying to move out and finally dumps it down the ice as Green takes it back into his own zone, plays it off the boards. It got away from Deneen and is picked up by the Soviets in the neutral area. Krutov dumps it in. Langway goes back after it. Rink-wide pass. Deflected out into the center ice area. That's a dangerous type of pass in your own zone. And here's the Soviets going back now, setting up. They did this a lot more in the second half of the game with the Team NHL taking away passing lanes. The Soviets trying to find some place to move the puck. A shift back in the blue line for Team NHL as Bork and Wilson come out. But the Soviets are offside. They're only offside once in game one. As far as game one went, five times the National Hockey League was offside, only once the Soviet Union. Howard Chuck, I was talking before about the power play when Gretzky lights to set up behind the net, so does Howard Chuck behind the net, and so does Mario Lemieux, and all three were on the ice at the same time, and Gretzky said they were going to draw straws to see who had the opportunity to set up behind the net. He had an interesting comment after game one. He said, you really notice the speed when you move from junior to the NHL. He said, game one was another level of speed. Lemieux racing after that puck in the Soviet zone. He couldn't get to it, and the Soviets dump it down the ice. Racing back after it is Doug Wilson. Grant Fuhr also went into the corner to play it, picked up by Cimac. Cimac tried to center it. It's in escapes. It goes around the boards on the other side and finally is knocked out. Here's a two-man break for Team NHL, but Mario Lemieux is tied up by Cimac, and the Soviets start out into the center ice area. Svetlov. 
Goes rink wide. Tatarinov takes a shot, a high shot off the chest of Grant Fuhr. Tatarinov gets it again. Another shot that Lavrov almost redirected. Stelnov back of the net, playing it around on the board now to Svetlov. Svetlov fighting along the boards with Goulet. Goulet with Kamilev. Manages to poke it free, but it does come out as Mario Lemieux nudged it past the Soviet defenseman. To this point, John, the Soviets have been unable to penetrate the slot area. They're taking some good shots, but they're from the bad angle. Mikov in across the line. Getting set, takes the shot. Grant Fuhr the save, and he covers up in the rebound with two Soviets in the ring. Mikov tried to go to the slot. He couldn't get there. He went across the top of the slot and shot from a bad angle. 11.47 remaining in the first period. Hockey fans could never agree on who had the hardest shot. Bobby Hall or me? Bobby Hall, Eddie. Or, or who was the better skater? Me or Gordy Howe? It was Gordy. Well, one thing we can all agree on is Miller Light. Because we know light tastes great. Light tastes less belly. Tastes great. Tastes less belly. Tastes great. My nose out of this one. <laughs> Light beer from Miller. Everything you've always wanted in a beer and less. Beacock ends up almost past the face-off dot before he took the shot. That's what I meant by a bad angle. And good checking in front of the net. There's three NHL players, two Soviets there. In other words, the NHL club outnumbered the other team, and that's what you simply want. You don't want them to get those loose pucks. Face-offs in the first game, Don, there was 55 altogether. A team average in the NHL is around 75 uh, for the two hockey clubs. Messier was 15 and 8, and here he's taking all the face-offs in the defensive zone once again. Nemchinov in the face-off circle against Messier. Messier is waved out, so is Nemchinov. Kamilev comes in, facing Gretzky. Gretzky gets the draw back of the net, and Grant Fuhr out of the goal to play it. Comes ahead to Gretzky on the left side for Messier, just a little too far for him. Messier tried to flip it back out the short side, but the Soviet defenseman was there to cover up, and it's cleared into the neutral zone. Chelios bumps with Nemchinov. It's knocked back into Soviet territory. Gretzky with some aggressive forechecking along with Curry. They managed to keep the puck in there. Gretzky back to the net, trying to get it out front. Goes around one defender, a backhand shot. Loose puck at the side of the net as Belushakin made the save. Gretzky tried to flip it out front again, and Tikkanen couldn't get a stick on it. Good pressure by this line. As Curry attempts to center it, Nemchinov ties him up, and Priakin starts out with it to Gusarov. The Soviets coming in three on two. A shot by Gusarov. That just went wide. Pass into the slot is intercepted by Yari Curry as Team NHL starts back. Curry dumps it in, goes to the bench on the chain. Tikkanen chases in after the puck, and Gusarov comes up with it for the Soviet. Makarov. Larianov. Larianov looking in front for Makarov. The save by Fuhr. Loose puck. Kazakonov couldn't get a good shot away. Larianov picks it up in the Team NHL zone to Kazakonov. Kazakonov sees it up. Tries it back to Larianov. He couldn't get the shot away. Tries to deflect it. And it's intercepted and brought back by Anderson. His shot goes off a leg to the corner. He's bumped by Krutov. Kasatonov tries to play it around on the board. There's a whistle on the play. With 10-10 remaining. And there are going to be penalties to each side. When it comes time to sell your home, Consider this. Only one real estate sales organization sells more homes, finds more homes every day than anyone else in the world. No one has the power to move real estate like Century 21. Century 21, the largest real estate organization in the world. Krutov and Anderson go off for high sticking at 9.50. Uh, the incident took place in the corner on the left-hand side of the screen. The balance of Glenn Anderson here, he meets with Krutov, and they have quite a battle along the board. See him keep his balance, and they go after each other pretty good. 
bumping and grinding in this hockey game. The team's NHL rules will still play six aside. Not bad having Krutov in the penalty box, though. Tatarinov whistles it around the boards. Lavrov at the line, tried to flip it back for Cmac. He was just outside the blue line offside. As we look at the Soviets, now they're getting 25 cases of coke dropped off at their hotel every single day, and the players are drinking up to a dozen apiece per day, if you can imagine that. I don't know how they skate around. <laughs> These days, I think you'd better say Coca-Cola. That's not. right. <laughs> <laughs> Two players to a room. That means each of them is consuming 12 cans of Coca-Cola per day. They love Coca-Cola. And it's in their contract. It has to be dropped off. That's part of their negotiations. The Soviet Union is a country built from 15 different republics. Six of the republics are really heavily into hockey, where hockey is very popular. In other words, 120 million people are interested in hockey of the 100... Well, there's a whole crew, 100, 281 million, make that, excuse me, 281 million people in the country, 120 are in areas where they like getting involved with hockey, Moscow being the front of the city. A lot of players to choose from. But the majority of the team is made up of players from the Red Army. And that's the team that Viktor Tikhonov coaches in the Soviet Union, the team that has dominated in the Soviet National League for a number of years. Kevin Deneen in the corner kicks it back to the net to Muller. Out front, he spun around as he attempted to do the wraparound move on his backhand. Now Lavrov getting set, takes the shot off Langway, goes to the corner. Langway up along the boards for Muller, unable to get it out. Langway trailing on the play, does pick it up, brings it down the ice and shoots it into the Soviet zone as Team NHL makes the change. 9.05, the time left to play in the first period. 1-0, Team NHL leading the power play goal by Marc Messier. Kamensky across the line, looking out front for Hamilyusov. It didn't get through. Kamensky gets it again. Into the corner, Doug Wilson goes in to try and help out, but it was deflected over the glass and out of play. The Soviets just made a line change and controlled the puck during that play. Coming up at the end of the first period, we'll talk with Washington defenseman Rod Langway, a star on Wednesday, a strong game again tonight. John Davidson, yesterday you spent some time with coach Bob Johnson, watched him go over videotapes. We'll have a special feature on that, and that is all coming up at the end of the first period. Don? Well, Brian, the teams did indeed take advantage of videotape to uh, look at game one. They spent a lot of time studying the moves of the Soviets and, of course, some of their own work. And I think you'll enjoy that feature during the first intermission. Kamensky is taken in against the boards. Team NHL attempting to clear. It goes over the glass and out of play. A collision right at the blue line involving Lemieux and Stelnoff. <laughs> Lemieux was in the hallway behind the NHL bench a while ago, and he had one of the trainers juggling with his legs as he was laying on his back. In other words, he was getting cramps. The puck is into the stands here, and Lemieux went to rub out the defenseman in case that puck stayed in, and he was going to make sure that the puck went out of the zone. The Some people wondered up. about his selection to the that team. He was at it because of his physical presence and his checking ability. Well, he just took a penalty, and Perron is looking around now. He has taken a two-minute minor. That puck was in the stands. He had to stick up high on the Soviet defenseman. In fact, the call is high-sticking. So the Soviets will get a chance now in their power play. Now with Krutov still in the penalty box, that will upset their green line, the, the line they call the greens because they wear green jerseys every day at practice. So they will not start that unit. They don't have a special power play unit. They throw out five guys, although the green unit is usually the one that goes up. Belichakin likes to rest take his time when the puck's at the other end or a stoppage of play and a lot of times he'll just get down on his knees a little unorthodox perhaps but he does it to take the pressure off the thighs and a lot of times he stays in that position until the other team is almost at his own blue line maybe um, uh, maybe he plays on teams that he doesn't get much action in his zone so he's able to take a rest 
Now, Messi, again, on the face-off, he and Gretzky do kill penalties a lot for the Edmonton Oilers. Langway and Green, of course, the better set of defensemen as far as penalty killing goes for the NHL team. Gretzky deflects it down the ice. Messier goes off as Curry comes on to kill off this Soviet power play. Kamensky tried to move through, and Rod Langway stood his ground, knocked him off the puck. Green takes it into the corner, wins the battle there, and fires it down the ice. These two were very solid in game one, Green and Langway. Played very well. Green was plus two in that hockey game. Langway was plus three. Green out-muscled Beekoff who got the puck down the, the ice. He talked about people that have influenced him throughout his career, and he credits his dad. He says his dad, who lives in Lakehurst, Ontario, is the man that was most responsible for helping him along. He had some lean years. Six years he was in Washington, never in the playoffs. In fact, the junior, the four years that he played, he was only in the playoffs once. Stopped at the line. Samuelson's shot did not get out. Krutov in the corner. Makarov taking up the position right to the right of Grant Muir. He did this throughout game one whenever they had a power play. Whenever this line is on the ice, 24 Makarov will set himself up to the right of Grant Muir and stay there. Even though the Soviets move the puck around, he will station himself there for a deflection, a rebound, or a pass towards him. The NHL club are very, very aware of it. Larionov in across the line to Krutov. Krutov to Larionov. Back to the point. Kazatonov. Petitsov takes the shot. Goes off the skate into the corner to Makarov. Petitsov trying to slide it into the side of the net to Krutov. It bounces to the corner. Krutov gets it to Fatisov. His shot goes wide. Kazatonov at the other point. Unable to keep it in as it's dumped down the ice by Pulin. Not a quality shot by the Soviets. They're trying to make the nice play to the front of the net. And at the front of the net, the NHL club are knocking people out of the way and reading the passes. Just 17 seconds left in the penalty. Zima. Body there by Green. Lavrov comes in to try and help out. Zemak has lost his helmet. He goes to Lavrov. The penalized player is back in the ice. Lavrov tried to center against Green. It bounced off him into the corner. Langway plays it around in the boards and down the ice. Petisov in his own zone. Just managed to get it out. He fanned on the shot, and Michel Goulet almost kept that in. That would have been a three-on-one for Team NHL. The Soviets fire it out to the neutral zone. No man Rochefort along the boards. He did not rest for game one. He was an addition to Team NHL with the injuries to Paul Coffey and Mark Howe that prevented them from playing. Live on CBC, Rendezvous 87. There's a powerful new reason to drive a Chrysler Magic Wagon. Front-wheel drive V6 power, fuel-injected power. And this is what V6 power is all about. The power to climb, to pass, to tow. To pull you through the toughest winter with front-wheel drive V6 power. And you're protected for seven years or 115,000 kilometers. Powerfully new Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager. Best built right here in Canada and best backed. That time, Makarov is set up on the other side of the net because the puck is on the opposite side. They will continue to use him. player. Langway's aware of him. You see him look around, he knows he's there. If the puck is going to be passed through, there's no way he's going to let it allow, allow that puck to get through. Now he reads the play and goes behind and makes it. Makarov, the team studied the Soviet power play. They saw him standing there, and that's good defense by NHL. Coach John Perron said, we saw evidence of it with Rod Langway. Your head has to be on a swivel playing these guys. <laughs> Rod Langway kept spinning around, glancing back to take a look at where Makarov was. Langway talked about his confidence level after game one going way up. He said he's not had a good season in Washington and neither have the Capitals. But after that game, he felt his confidence level just re rise right up and he said he's ready for anything. And again, he's having a good night. That perhaps might not be good news for other teams in the Patrick Division. The 
battled along the boards involving Rochefort, Muller, and Billet Benoff. And they finally forced a face off. <laughs> There was a, a line change not too long ago. The Soviets had control of the puck. And well, well watch them. They're going to try and make a line change. And what happens is they control it. They control it. They control it while their players skate to the bench. Look at how they see it. They're making a change. They turn back. They go the other way. They can make two or three quick passes. That allows their teammates to get back on the ice. They make a line, ch line change and never lost control of the puck. Most times in the NHL, the team will dump it in and then make the line change. It's interesting to watch the different theories of, and different cultures and the way they play this game, and that was educational to see that. And the two sides have learned from each other. I think we're seeing a combination of both right here in this hockey game. Physical play plus a lot of good puck-controlled situations. 1-0, Team NHL leads, 5-16 remaining in the opening period. The Soviets to the attack. Priakin in across the line, having difficulty controlling it as he's bodied by Raymond Bork, played around on the boards. Vilya Letinov keeps it in. It comes out to Nemchinov. He takes the hit from Wilson. Priakin picks up the loose puck. He tried to go cross ice, but it's intercepted by Raymond Bork of the Boston Bruins. A long shot, and that's kicked to the corner by Bello Shaken as Team NHL makes the change. Team NHL have not established a forechecking pattern here as the Soviets are moving out easily from their zone. Chelios takes it away from Kamalev. Plays it around on the boards, but not out. Bikoff managed to keep it in. Kamalev tried to backhand it into the corner, picked off by Team NHL. Essa Tikkanen was looking for Glenn Anderson breaking out of the zone, but the pass did not get through. Team NHL tries again, but they're stopped at the Soviet line, but they intercept the pass. Curry in across the line for Tikkanen. He tried to go rink wide looking for Gretzky. It's intercepted by the Soviets as they go to the attack. Amayutov in across the line for Bikoff. He couldn't do anything with it, and it's dumped out by Team NHL with 4-0-3 remaining in the opening period. 1-0, Team NHL leading on a power play goal by Marc Messier. Delnov in his own zone. Up on the boards, too far for Kamensky. Rod Langway gathers it in for Gretzky. Gretzky plays it to the line, a neat pass to Tikkanen. He simply flips it towards the Soviet goal. He couldn't move in across the line as he was being well shadowed by two Soviet defenders. Soviets seem to be well prepared for the counter that the NHL used in game one. When the NHL club went from defense to offense, they get it quickly. Here the Soviets, who spoke about it, Katarinov, the defenseman in particular, seemed to be aware of it, just sending one man towards the NHL club. And they get control, they're trying to come out again. Both sides so adept at making that transition from defense to offense. A shot off the side of the net. Soviet player tied up by both NHL defensemen as it's brought out by Dale Howarchuk to Kevin Deneen. Offside on the left wing was Dave Kuhlin, and now there's a collision deep in Soviet territory involving Deneen and Krutov, and then Krutov is uh, shoving along with Petisov with Chris Chelio. Rendezvous 87 continues in a moment. <laughs> Captain Fatisov in the penalty box, roughing the call, 17.04. Team NHL are one for one on the power play. They do not have that same unit on the ice now. We'll see, the whistle had sounded and he went in and gave Deneen a pretty good shot. Dave Newell decided to make the call. Fatisov, incidentally, is playing hurt in this game. He has a bad knee, ligament problems. He was nailed by Ramsey in game one of this series. Howard Chuck at center with Anderson and Goulet. 
Dork and Wilson back on the point. Delay to Bork, who takes it to safety behind his own net as he's watched by McElroy. Now, Team NHL to the attack. 2.40 remaining in the period. Fired in. Anderson takes the shot from a bad angle. It whistles around the boards. Howard Chuck picks it up in the corner. Howard Chuck spun around a behind the back pass for Goulet. He's particularly adept at this. He's done it a number of times with the Winnipeg Jets, and he did it twice in game one. Two excellent behind the back passes that he made. One setting up a goal. Our Chuck has it again behind the net. Finally, he's tied up, and the puck is played around the boards by the Soviet and into the neutral zone. What Howard Chuck was trying to do is just get the puck away from himself into an open man. There were three Soviets over against Howard Chuck, and if he could have found an open man, the Soviets not putting pressure on the NHL club coming out of their zone. When the NHL club takes the puck back, there's simply no pressure at all. Look at the Soviets. They're backing off. He pass for Gretzky. Gretzky behind his back to Yari Curry. For Mark Messier, back to Curry. Two of them take it into the corner. Now Gretzky comes in after that loose puck for Messier. Messier back to the point for Bork. He had difficulty controlling it, couldn't get a shot away. Gretzky tried to slide it back to Bork. It was intercepted by Krutov and dumped down the ice with 25 seconds remaining in the penalty to Fatisov. 118 left in the opening period. Here we see the Soviets peeling off again and the NHL club moving out of their zone rather easily. That's something that the Soviets have not done in recent games. Katarinov gets it ahead to Simak, and the Soviets knock it out, and they go to the attack. Stopped at the line, and Mario Lemieux brings it back. Here's a two-on-one. Gretzky sliding it to the goal. He was looking for the winger, and Bello Shaken put a pad out to stop it, but really wasn't sure where that puck was. It almost looked like Gretzky was moving the puck and hoping that the goaltender would leave a rebound for his winger, who was heading in, but it was well checked. A couple of Gretzky passes in this period have been intercepted. Now watch this. The, he's trying to move it across. And Pelo Shaken lost it. The NHL club, again, wants to try and find that hole between the legs of the goaltender. Gretzky talking. You know, look at his stick. The blue tape on the top. He does not put a big knob there. He feels it's uncomfortable for his hands. And he would be able to handle the puck quite as well. He has specially made sticks. We mentioned the other night. $37 each. And they are a very heavy stick. Well, you go to the net as much as he does. They like to chop away at his stick and try and break it. And as the same thing as we mentioned before, there's a man that had a great game in game one. Vikov, 155 pounds. Mario Lemieux centered it. But Claude Lemieux could not get a stick on it. Vikov, backhand shot just went wide. What a good backhand. Gusarov with a shot. That's why. Centered. Nobody in the spot. Team NHL gains control on the left side. Dumped in for Kevin Deneen now as Deneen runs into the Soviet player Gusarov. Deneen comes up with it to Lemieux. Lemieux tried to center it. Gets it again. Lemieux plays it back to the net with 14 seconds left. Out front intended for Poulin. He was knocked down. The puck slides out to the neutral zone. Amayutov. Tried to feed it across ice to Bikov. Now it comes in across the line as the seconds tick away. And that's the end of period one with a bit of a skirmish along the boards in the Team NHL zone. Seven shots on goal for the Soviets in the opening period. Six for Team NHL. Team NHL with the only goal, a power play tally by Marc Messier at 332. Now let's go down to Brian Williams. All right, Don Whitman, in this series, we have seen the reemergence of the defensive defenseman. And coming up, we're going to talk with one of the best, Rod Langway. Then we have that feature, John Davidson yesterday spent some time with assistant coach Bob Johnson of the Calgary Flames, finding out just how he broke down the videotapes of the first game. Stay with us. The score at the end of the first period, the National Hockey League won and the Soviet Union nothing. Hello from Red Deer, Alberta, and another Anison Gallup poll. Last year, 200 families here who were not using Anison tried it instead of their regular pain reliever. Did Anison work for them? Would they keep on using it? Two months later, 81% of the families interviewed said yes. Once again, we learned the people who try Anison stay with Anison. Why? Anison works time after time. Anison in Red Deer, 81% said yes.
tiny troubles my time thank you no trouble tiny troubles tiny troubles taking care of them is no trouble to us no trouble <laughs> In a world of cards, one stands out, our route. It's honored by airlines worldwide, major hotels, car rentals, and fine restaurants. Our route is more than a card. It's a travel management system designed specifically for people going places for business or pleasure. And our route offers savings at hotels and car rental agencies. Our route, the card for people going places. Your travel agent has all the details. There's a road 170,000 kilometers long stretching in front of the average car. And that's why Motomaster parts are what your car needs. Because Motomaster parts are built tough for the long run. And every Motomaster part is packed as tough as it's built. So no matter where in Canada your road takes you, Canadian Tire stands behind them. Down the long road, it's nice to know you've got more than a part. You've got a counter. Motomaster parts. Built tough. Back tough. What did he do to you? He once held the power of life and death over her. Carrie's going to make sure it doesn't happen twice. Street Legal, best on the box, Tuesday night. End of the first period, like on Wednesday, one nothing for the National Hockey League, and like on Wednesday, an Edmonton Oiler has scored the goal. Tonight, it has been Mark Messier. We talk about the re-emergence of the defensive defenseman. Next to me is one of the very best, Ron Langway of the Washington Capitals. Prior to the series, we kept hearing that players looked on it as it was a pain in the neck. They want to go to Phoenix. They want to play golf in Florida. You wanted to come in the worst way. Well, I think uh, not to play. I think uh, in a situation where I wasn't even on the first 30 players to be representing or asked to be chosen to play in this game, and I felt that uh, with a week off that I had an opportunity to come up here and enjoy one day to see Quebec and to see some great hockey players. And, I was thinking to just come up on a Wednesday and stay overnight and leave on Thursday. So you were going to pay your own way up here? Oh, for sure. I yeah. speak for all Canadians. I'm glad you didn't have to. <laughs> You're one of the few non-Canadian players on this team. Well, my father's in the service, so uh, I was born overseas in Taiwan, and I grew up mostly in Boston, and I played mostly football and baseball, and then all of a sudden Bob York came around, and uh, like any Bostonian, uh, we started to fall in love with the Boston Bruins, and I started playing. went to the University of New Hampshire on a football scholarship, and I played both football and hockey, and... I got chosen to play in the NHL and the WHA. I tell you something, you said Bobby Orr just like a Bostonian. <laughs> Number four. <laughs> right. Let's talk about what have you changed in your game plan tonight and what have the Soviets done differently? Well, I think we've played the same way. I think, again, they're not out skating enough forwards. I think uh, when a defenseman can only play a one-on-one -on -one situation against that team, tonight it seems like we're getting caught a little bit too much. We're trying to go on the offense a little bit and they're getting quite a few three-on-twos on our defense, but Grant made some great saves, and we've been pretty lucky with the pucks hit my skate a couple times, and Rick Green's and the other core defensemen are playing extremely well. But we've got to tighten it up a little, a little bit more, and I think they're going to the net. I think instead of dropping the puck, they're just throwing the puck softly at the net, and they're getting some opportunities because of that. Rod, prior to the series, there was concern. Without uh, Howe and Coffey, with the exception of Ray Bork, the defensemen weren't able to lug the puck out, but we've seen the defensive players come back, led by yourself and Green. Well, it makes our job a lot easier when you have talent that's on this club, no doubt about that. And I think that if we can, like I said before, we can play defensive hockey and also do the job of moving the puck when it's on our stick. We're not going to beat anybody one-on-one -on -one with the puck. Mm -hmm. And I know myself and Rick, we've been around a long time, and we played against great hockey players before, so we're more at ease of playing our own game and not worrying about putting on a show. Take us behind the scenes. What did you do after the game Wednesday night? How did you come down? <laughs> well, we went out and had a couple of beers. And, uh, that that's normal for me anyways. I don't like to go out and have something to eat because I can't, my stomach's too nervous and uh, I enjoy to have a couple of beers with the guys and talk hockey and enjoy a win. And uh, that's the most, that's one of the best things about playing hockey is that you have the time to, as a group, go out and have a good time. What about last night? Were you able to get to sleep? We had a good meal last night. We went for uh, Michelangelo's to have a, a good spaghetti dinner and uh, we went out after that and had a couple more beers and uh, we had a good night's sleep. 
We had a nice skate this morning and got a lot of rest this afternoon. All right, Rod, there are charters leaving uh, after the game tonight, taking the players back to their various locales. I know Kevin Deneen has to play tonight, if you can, or tomorrow night, if you can believe it, in Los Angeles. Where do you go from here? I'm staying over. I'm going to, again, enjoy the win or a loss. I'm going to take it easy and get up tomorrow morning and take a flight to Edmonton. And we play Sunday afternoon, so I've got a day of relaxation, really. Well, again, I speak for all Canadians. Good to have you on this team. Good luck in the remaining two periods. Right. Stay healthy and good luck with Washington. Oh, thank you very much. That is Rod Langway of the Washington Capitals. Stay with us. Our first intermission will continue live from Quebec City right after these messages. Hello, sports fans. Have I got a scoop for you. The Everybody Wins with Kraft Hockey program is ready to go. Free NHL superstar cards and selected Kraft products. A superstar charcoal print offer. What do you say about that, Larry Robinson? Not a bad looking guy. And there's more. On every jar of Kraft peanut butter, a hockey scratch and win card. Win cash coupons are one of 33,000 hockey equipment prizes. The Everybody Wins with Kraft Hockey program. 33,000 prizes? You got it. In the beginning, all RRSPs look alike. They save taxes and make money for retirement. But if you look closer, you'll see that some make more money than others, consistently. Over the last 19 years, the industrial group of funds from McKenzie Financial has proven that to more than 250,000 Canadian investors. So to see your RRSP take off, see your investment fund dealer or stockbroker, the industrial group of funds looking both ways to manage your money. From Touchstone Pictures, audiences everywhere are raving about Bette Midler and Shelley Long and outrageous fortune. I thought it was fantastic. Good show. Outrageous. I think every guy in the country should come see this movie. That kind of evening, huh? We just went to a funeral and it really cheered us up. <laughs> I thought it was hysterical. Wild. Yeah, I'm bringing my next boyfriend next Saturday. Promising sexual favor? Outrageous. Outrageous. Outrageous fortune. The title sister. Now playing the famous Selected theaters near you. Check your local list. You know, when it comes to hand and power tools, I know that home hardware has everything for me. <clears throat> home has a great selection of uh, benchmark and uh, brand name tools, all guaranteed and always at a great price. Because behind my home dealer, <laughs> there are over 900 more. And that means they're behind me too. <laughs> home has more for me. <laughs> close to close. That's way too nice, people. Home hardware. <laughs> End of the first period. Welcome back live to Quebec City. Mark Messier's goal the difference so far. Hockey, like other sports, has entered the electronic age. And yesterday afternoon, following practice here in the Coliseum, John Davison visited with an old friend. Coaching 14 years uh, internationally, how do you prepare, especially team-wise, for the Soviets? Well, one, we uh, take a tapes uh, of their recent games in, uh, against North American teams, and that was involved in the Calgary Cup uh, over the uh, Christmas holidays. Uh, two, we had uh, Craig Patrick uh, follow them in the Avestia tournament. So we had a pretty good book on what they did in the power play and what they did killing penalties. And then we showed both our power play and our uh, penalty killers uh, right there on the tape what they did so they could visualize. And then we had, you know, only a couple of days to prepare, but uh, obviously the first game, our penalty killers did a great job. And the one opportunity, we had some pretty good chances on our power play. Show me. Okay, here, this is the one opportunity we had last night, John. And this is the, the, the Russians were called for too many men on the ice, and they put number 13 there. Uh, Kaminsky, their 20-year-old player in the penalty box. But uh, we do a pretty good job. Uh, we have designed uh, two power plays. First of all, we had uh, Raymond Bork on the right side and uh, Doug Wilson on the left. In the front line, we had... Uh, Gresky, uh, Messier, and it was supposed to be Curry there on the offside, but Curry was tired, so we had to throw Howard Chuck out there. He did That's a pretty good bad. job. <laughs> he did a pretty good job. They're very aggressive in the point, so we were trying to get it to Gresky over here, and uh, Messier was going to be in front of the net, and Curry was going to slide in late, and uh, Wayne, he made a nice pass. Now there, if you see that, uh, if that player would have been right-handed instead of left-handed, uh, you, you made the ch uh, Angle would have been better, and the shot would have been quicker. Good opportunity here. There's Gressy and Messi and Howard Chuck. They're getting the loose pucks. Here's Wayne now. Uh, he puts it behind the net. And watch, oh, yes. watch the Russians. There's one, two, three players over there. They only have one player left. <laughs> They're trying to outnumber you, but we win the battle, I think, here. Howard Chuck does a great job here. Messi wins the battle. It puts it right over to Gresky. Has a chance. 
Now, now you see all three Soviets now heading over to the other side of the ice. Yeah. They are very aggressive. Uh -huh. Now it goes back, and we try to hit, hit Messi in front of the net. There's Borg again. Fires the puck. You see Messi and uh, Howard Chuck are both in front of the net trying for a tip in. They do not appear to be overly physical in front of their own net. In other words, their defensemen are staying back there to no, knock you down. No, they're trying to outnumber you uh, wherever the puck is, and, and then they'll, they'll shoot it down the ice, and they'll be very aggressive coming down, which uh, we practiced in the morning yesterday, but really didn't get a chance to work on it. It's a good play here to keep it in. Now watch this. If this, in front of the net, if this would have been Curry instead of Howard Chuck, being no. right-handed the left-handed. In other words, you're saying Curry's right-handed, yes. Howard Chuck is left-handed. Left and he still makes a pretty good play, Howard Chuck. Watch. See, if the angle of the stick, if he would have been uh, right-handed, he maybe could have scored Because right. he would have been out on top, yeah. on top of the crease, and the right. puck could not be intercepted by the goaltender. All right. Thanks very much, Coach. Uh, 14 years of international experience. I can certainly see why it works. All right, thank you, John Davidson and Bob Johnson. I'll tell you something, Johnson's done an excellent job with the power play. They look like the Soviets, the way they threw it around on Wednesday. And, of course, tonight, Marc Messier has scored a power play goal. Stay with us. Lots more to come. Rendezvous 87 will continue in just a moment. There's never any time for a No time left in a day we're both so close and yet so far We've got to get away Let American Airlines special low fares take you away with someone special Without a single care Think Mother's makes a perfect pizza. Authentic Chicago style deep dish or Mother's original style. Baked with fresh dough, made daily, fresh grated cheese, even fresh mushrooms, and done right from scratch. And the pasta's perfect too. Mmm. Now that is what I call good. Real good. Mother's pizza pasta made perfect. Now open in the Millican Wells shopping center on McCowan, south of Steeles. Mark Messier with the only goal, a power play tally in the opening period. Team NHL leading the Soviets by a score of 1-0. John, let's expand on the comment we made in the first period. Team NHL did not feel game one was particularly physical. The Soviets did. This one is much more physical from a Team NHL point of view. Yeah, the Soviets are probably in the dressing room right now with ice packs on their legs, their arms, their backs. The... the uh, NHL club knew Dave Newell, the NHL referee, was out there. They knew that they could play a physical game because that's what they do basically every night in the National Hockey League. They're back playing their style. The Soviets uh, did control the puck well in their own zone, came out well, had trouble finishing once again. Go back and give the credit to Team NHL in their own zone. The forwards are coming back deep with the Soviet wingers. The defensemen are clearing people out in front. The one area I thought the NHL club had good success was right behind Beloshakin's net. Two or three times the players... Controlled the puck, Howard Chuck in particular, uh, Gretzky one time to set up uh, with Messier. In fact, they, the goalie scored set up from behind the net. John, the team NHL coaches worked with videotape. I would suspect from what we saw in the opening period, the Soviets also spent some time viewing videotape of game one. The coach, Tikhanov, says, no, yeah, we don't <laughs> use it. And the goaltender, Bello Shagan, says, sure, we look at tape, so you tell me. Who does? I think I'll believe the goaltender. You, you bet they do. And they... Uh, they change their style somewhat. They have the ability a lot of times to change their style during a game. They get two or three different game plans. They, uh, they're, they're still controlling the puck well. We saw that during the line change, not dumping the puck away. One thing about puck possession, which is what they want, you have to win face-offs to have good puck possession. Mark Messier is doing a fine job winning face-offs and not allowing the uh, possession all the time to go to the Soviets. one nothing is the score for Team NHL live on CBC. This is Rendezvous 87. I, when they invited me along for this turnout, I took the precaution of bringing enough of the liquid gold to go around. Ah, Ripper. Looks like I did the right thing, too. That stuff looks about as popular as a piranha in a hot tub. It's truth. Must be worse than I thought. Foster's, the golden throat charmer. 
A few minutes prior to boarding. My favorite time. Some people think there's nothing to do but wait. We know better, don't we? Hmm? <laughs> think what can be accomplished by calling ahead and touching base with customers. Or tying up loose ends back at the office. All with this. And those, of course. <laughs> Aren't they clever? You're really never out of the office with business long distance from Bell. In the world of business, there are leaders who are the first to think of a brilliant idea. And there are followers who will try to imitate it. The same holds true for copiers. At first glance, the imitations may appear exactly like the real thing. But look closely, and you'll discover nothing is as good as the original. Ann Blake, buyer, condition, headache. It's a constant nagging throb. Why haven't you tried Tylenol? You'd have to prove to me that it worked just as well as mine. Clinical studies prove Tylenol has the strength to deliver really effective relief, yet it won't upset your stomach. How do you feel? I feel great. I really do. Now that I've tried Tylenol, I feel much better and the headache's all gone. I will buy Tylenol. Saturday on Hockey Night in Canada, fresh from Rendezvous 87, Dale Howarchuk rejoins the Winnipeg Jets as they play at the Montreal Forum against the Canadians. And some of you will watch Terry O'Reilly's Boston Bruins in Toronto against the Maple Leafs. Saturday on Hockey Night in Canada. Well, after the first period on Wednesday, it was all Edmonton. The goal had been scored by Curry with Gretzky and Tikkanen assisting. Tonight again, it is all Edmonton. Power play, 332 of the first period. Mark Messier with the assist scoring to Yari Curry and Wayne Gretzky. Shots on goal a lot more even tonight. There were something like 11 to 6 for the National Hockey League after the first period Wednesday. Tonight, they're 7 6 for the Soviet Union. We're just about ready for the second period. Coming up after the second period tonight, we'll talk with Dave Poulin, the articulate forward from the Philadelphia Flyers, who had the winning goal on Wednesday. And we'll talk live with NHL President John Ziegler. We're going to find out if we'll get another one of these great series in the near future. Right now, let's take you back upstairs. Once again, here are Don Whitman and Big John Davidson. Thank you, Brian. And you talk about this uh, series perhaps continuing. I think there are a lot of people here in Quebec City who would like to see it go about seven more games. <laughs> As you look at the first period statistics, that passing percentage of 79% is up 6% from game one for the Soviets. For the NHL, it's minus 5% down to 70. Face off 14 and 5. They were 6 2 in favor of Messier. The body checks, well, you saw that in the first period. The NHL controlled that area. Period two underway with Rick Green bringing it out and dumping it in. Racing back after it is Fatisov for Makarov. Played ahead to Krutov. He drops it back for Makarov. Returns it to Krutov. Krutov playing it back to Fatisov. Backhand shot. Pass save by Grant Fuhrer. Team NHL starts back. Fatisov was allowed to move into the slot. And he let that shot go. Somewhat similar to the play he made in game one where Pure staked out that glove hand to take an almost sure goal away from the veteran Soviet defenseman. Fatisov, a long shot from the point. Pure handles that one easily. It's along the boards in Team NHL zone. Picked up now by Rick Green. Around the boards for Deneen. He anticipated that move by Fatisov. Now it comes back to Kasatonov. And Kasim Tonov let a wicked drive go just wide. Larry it off for Krutov. Krutov back at the net. Out front looking for Fatisov. He races in from that point. He was right in front of Grant Fuhrer. And that was a one minute, 10 second shift for that NHL line. And they were dead tired at the end of it. Could hardly get to the bench for a line change. The pace of this game is very quick once again. Anderson back to the net looking for Kirk Muller. It goes around on the board and is brought out by Svetlov. He shoots it into the Team NHL zone. Bork knocks it out into the center ice area. Messier racing after it. Trying to get away from Perbukin. Perbukin is hammered into the board by Messier. Team NHL with the puck. Rick Bork, or Raymond Bork had moved into the slot. He finally got it, spun around and fired it wide. Chelios. Over to Ray Bork. 
Back to Doug Wilson. Wilson shoots it in for Vukin. Plays it around on the board. Out to the line to Svetlov. And now Kasatonov sends Svetlov away, but he was hit by a check in the neutral zone from old Samuelson of the Hartford Whalers. Quick pace. We talk about it and talk about it. You're seeing it. We're nearly three minutes into this second period without a whistle again. Kamensky moving into the slot. A high shot off the glass as he came in against Samuelson. Kamensky likes to go high all the time. Brett Muir standing up prepared for those high shots. Norman Rochefort shooting it into the Soviet zone. Gretzky racing after it. Gets it to Tikkanen. Tikkanen centers it. Double shake and steers it to his defenseman. Starikov and it's knocked out into the neutral zone. Mayasov circling at center ice. On the right side for Bikov. Runs into a check there from Rochefort. The puck comes back to the line. Starikov winds up. The shot does not get through. Picked up by Hamayasov. Hit the side of the net. Another shot. They score. Kamensky. Team NHL get themselves caught going after loose pucks. And what happens is the Soviets finally get to set themselves up in the slot area. They hit a goal post, and then once again, they got a good shot from the slot, and they finished the play. Kamensky, the young star, to the NHL club, four people in one position. They're all looking at that loose puck. They're not picking up assignments. And look how wide open Kamensky is. He almost missed the shot himself, but it did finish. As soon as they started looking around, looking for those loose pucks, they missed their assignments. And the Soviets got there. Nobody's on them right away. And Kamensky, one motion shot at a 1-1 hockey game. Mayusov and Vikov draw the assists on the goal by Kamensky at 3-13. It's tied at one. Claude Lemieux, back of the net. Trying to move out. To the line now to Chelios. His shot is blocked. It bounces high into the neutral zone. Uh, Priakin picks it up. He takes the shot off the leg. Chelios behind his own goal for Team NHL. Having difficulties there with Priakin. Puck goes loose in the corner. Chelios is bodied by Kamilev. And finally, it's knocked out into the neutral zone. John, that goal was scored at 313. That was the first stoppage of play in that period. Lemieux, and across the line, gets away from Dukarov. Lemieux, back of the net, gets it out front, and it bounced away from Mario Lemieux, comes out to the neutral zone. Claude Lemieux doing a good job there of sending off the check to center that puck. Tried to find a man open in the slot. Soviet in a sloppy line change here. Icing will be called because of that sloppy line change. But the Soviets can see the second period. They can dish it out pretty well themselves, and that was the scouting report. They can play physical, they can play with finesse, we're seeing both. From Quebec City, this is Rendezvous 87. When you're buying or selling a home, it's important that a lawyer protect your interests. You should see your Advocate Legal Center member office regarding the transfer of title and related financial matters. The cost will be $440 plus disbursements, an additional charge for mortgage preparation. To buy or sell real estate, see your Advocate Legal Center member office. Advocate Legal Centers. Ron Finn is the only official to work both games. He was partnered on the lines by John D'Amico in game one. He's working with Ray Scapanello in this second game. And Dave Newell is the referee. Nikolai Morosov of the Soviet Union officiated game one. Our Chuck with Poulin and Deneen for the faceoff in the Soviet zone. Draw comes back to Langway. Langway tees it up, lets it go, it just goes wide. Howard Chuck back of the net. Looking out front. Tries to center it. It bounces off a leg. Krutov gets it. And the Soviets start out. They try to dump it in. It's intercepted by Green. A touch of irony in the fact that Green and Langway are partnered back in the blue line as they were involved in that trade a few years back between Washington and Montreal. Lead pass for Krutov working against Langway. 
Comes out to Makarov. He tried to jam it in the short side, and Brad Fuhrer got a piece of it. Good. Green also did a good job checking. Larionov going to the corner. Gets it to Petitov. Petitov out for a score! Kruzov! What a beautiful play by the Soviets. Fatisov, the team captain, joined the play. The three forwards were spread out. They had puck control. Fatisov went through, and he was wide open. He got control of it. They're spread out. There's no red jerseys together. They're all spread out. Now the NHL club have lost two men, three men now against the boards. It's now a wide open man in front. And they finish. Fatisov with a good play to move the puck. Grant Fuhrer tries to move out as a shooter. It went off the top of his goal stick through his legs. The first time that the Soviets have held the lead in the two games. Bounces away from Gretzky and is dumped down the ice by the Soviets. Top back of the net by Grant Muir for Old Samuelson. He comes out with Doug Wilson of the Chicago Blackhawks. He shoots it in. Verbuchen takes it into the corner. Plays it around the boards for Lavrov. Gretzky forces him back. Verbuchen gets it again. Through the line, kept in by Samuelson. Gretzky centered it, but Katarinov was there to intercept for the Soviets. He plays it off the boards and down the ice. No icing on the call as Grant Fuhrer is way out of his net. He plays it high up in the glass, but not out. Kept in by Perbukin. For Lavrov, he leaves it for Svetlov. Svetlov being harassed there by Doug Wilson. And he just to play it in back of the net. Fuhrer way out of his net to bang it around on the boards, but not out. Soviets are flying pressure. Finally, Gretzky gets it ahead to Curry. But Perbukin wins the race for that loose puck. Stopped in the neutral zone by Samuelson. He has to wait for his teammates to get onside before he can shoot it in. And Team NHL makes the change. Anderson keeps it in. Gets it again. Takes the shot. And that was steered to the corner by Bello Shaken. Deacon now gets it centering, looking for Anderson. The pass does not get through. Good forechecking checking by Anderson. He gets it to Gretzky. A shot. And the save by Bello Shaken. And now we have a skirmish, and this involves Anderson and Paterinov, who had a bit of a set two in game one. We saw some fine checking by the Soviets in their own zone, but it was persistence of the NHL club that worked and worked and finally had the scoring chance. 13-13 left in the second period. Make way for the new generation of pickups. Make way! All-new Dodge Dakota, North America's first mid-size pickup. Dakota handles like a small pickup. Room for three inside and full-size payload capacity. Plus, the pulling power and performance of a V6 engine. Mid-size Dakota, the only four-wheel drive with Dodge's Ram top warranty protection. Make way for Dodge Dakota! Make way! Dodge, the official trucks of the NHL. With 13-13 left in the period, Team NHL came close to tying it. The go-ahead goal at 5-17, Krutov from Fatisov and Larionov. Gamensky scored the other Soviet goal at the 3-13 mark of this second period. Mark Messier, the only goal for Team NHL. Messier in that face-off circle gets it to Anderson. Anderson takes the shot off the leg, goes back to the net, tried to go to his backhand. He was spun around. Good work by Anderson. He keeps it in there. Anderson for Messier in the corner. He centered it. It's deflected by Bello Shaken. Up off the glass, the Soviets pick it up and bring it out. Broken up in the neutral zone by Raymond Bork. And Team NHL attempts to set up now in its own zone. Lead pass for Glenn Anderson. Drops it for Messier. Back to Anderson. Anderson behind the goal. Looking for Kirk Muller. He was tied up, and the Soviets knock it out to the neutral area. Brought back in by Team NHL. Anderson drops it for Messier. Messier back of the net. Tried to slide it out front for Anderson, who was uncovered, but it didn't get through. Now Kirk Muller at the side of the net. Battling for it with Sarakov. Aggressive forechecking by Team NHL in that Soviet zone. And finally, the Soviets gain control, and it's brought out by Hamayutov. He works against Raymond Bork. Bukov follows up in the play, takes a hit as the puck goes behind the net, and Raymond Bork starts back. A lead pass too far for Claude Lemieux. No icing on the call, however, as Priakin in his own zone now 
gets away from Lemieux, but he's forced back by Mario Lemieux. Circles and gets away from the two Lemieux and goes to the attack. Lead pass intended for Nemchinov. Too far is it touched by Team NHL. It's an icing call against the Soviets. The tempo has definitely picked up in this second period. Live on CBC, Rendezvous 87. It's recognized as more than an airline credit card. En route is recognized as the business travel card for people going places. The face-off to the right of Belo Shaken, 11.41 is the time remaining in this second period. 2-1 the Soviets lead. Lemieux is out there with Goulet and Bob Lemieux. Norman Rochefort and Ulf Samuelson back on the blue line. NHL talked about the Soviets moving around a lot in the face-off circle. They said they just didn't stand still. And they said Finns, the linesman, was getting frustrated by it. See how they're moving around in there? Back to the line for Rochefort. Takes the shot, geared to the corner by Bello Shaken. Kamalev tried to get it up. Couldn't move it, tries again, gets it to the line, to Nemchinov, to Priakin. Priakin couldn't go anywhere with it as it's dumped back up by Ulf Samuelson. In the neutral zone now, Samuelson with possession. Ahead for Mario Lemieux, he's checked as they battle for that loose puck in the neutral zone. Rochefort runs into Heimelov as it's fired in and deflected to the corner by Fuhrer. Lutzerov keeps it in at the point. A long shot. It's blocked by Grant Fuhrer and held for a whistle. Fuhrer does the smartest thing he could. The Soviets have been very strong in this period in their own zone. Great condition is Grant Fuhrer. I think his great conditioning allows his athletic ability to come to the forefront in the concentration levels there. He's talking about an athlete. He's also a three handicap in golf. There he one times the body is a bounce and the puck bounces into him, excuse me, and he hangs on to it. He was smart. He had his body behind that catching hand when he made that save. Team NHL bench looking on as the faceoff takes place in Team NHL zone. Played around the boards and down the ice, racing back after it is Fatisov being watched by Howarchuk. The Soviets unable to clear. Pullen in the corner. Tried to go out into the slot to Howard Chuck and it was deflected down the ice by the Soviets. Green for Howard Chuck. He deflects it into the Soviet zone. Poulin is racing after it. He's taken in heavily against the boards by Fatisov. Played around to Makarov. He takes a hit from Howard Chuck, but Larionov stop, starts out. He has Kutov with him. Fatisov going for the net. Drop pass for Makarov. Makarov tried to drop it off, and it was knocked out into the neutral zone by Dale Howarchuk. What we're seeing here is a game within a game. Larionov's line on the ice all night against Howarchuk's line. The defensive pairings are the same for each team when they're on the ice. It's almost like a miniature game. Here's a chance for Tikkanen. Shot, save, big rebound. And Curry was tied up and Larionov brings it out to the neutral zone. Pass knocked down in Team NHL zone. Now Doug Wilson gets it again. Over to the other side to Ray Bork. Bork shoots it in. Stopped by Bello Shaken. He leaves it back in the net for Katarinov. Up to Lavrov. Lavrov being watched there by Curry. Got it ahead to Svetlov. To Simak. He couldn't go anywhere with it. It's knocked into the Team NHL zone and then fired right back up with 9.28 remaining in the second period. The Soviets leading by a score of 2-1. Zemak now in across the line to the corner for the Soviets. Taken in against the boards. The puck back of the net. Chelios comes up with it for Team NHL. Chelios for Wayne Gretzky on the fly. Gretzky working against Perbuk and puts on the brakes. Gives it to Tikkanen. Tikkanen trying to move into the slot. Knocked off balance. Gets it to turn. He tries to kick it to Gretzky. And it just went past him. Centered by Gretzky and the Soviet defenseman Katarinov was there and as the Soviets ice it, the fans react here at the Colossae. This is the third time the Soviets have iced the puck in the second period. 
Rondy Boo, 87, returns after this. I'm feeling great out in the sun. I'm ready to move, gonna have some fun. When I get hot, I can go all day. I'm filled up with thirst along the way. I want to taste so clear and bright. The lemon lime taste sensational strike. Strike! Lemon taste sensational. Strike! Get the sensation. Strike! Lemon taste sensation. 8.48 is the time remaining in the second period. 15,395 watching the action tonight at the Tomasse. And wherever you're looking in across the CBC network, we hope you're enjoying this second game of Rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. Team NHL winning the opener by a score of 4-3. Back of the net. The Soviets trying to move out. Anderson keeps it in. Kirk Muller back to the goal looking for Messier and Messier was cutting right into the crease area as Bello Shaken gloved it and held on. The NHL Hockey Club are playing four sets of forwards and they're rotating them right now. Ramsey, the defenseman, is not getting as much ice time as everybody else. They have eight dressed and they're playing seven from what we can see to this point. Samuelson getting a little more ice time. Bello Shaken, the fine young goaltender, looks on. Face off to the right of Bellow Shaken. Loose puck gathered in by Starikov. He almost lost it in his own zone as he was looking up the ice for someone to pass it to. Anderson behind his back for Messier. Saved by Bellow Shaken. Excellent play by Anderson with Messier on the fly on that right side, and Bellow Shaken made a big save. Good the Soviet scored in this period. This line centered by Messier has really picked up their tempo. Back into the neutral zone, Kaminsky lost the race to the puck to Bork. Muller knocks it into the corner. Starikov playing it around on the boards for Amayatov to Vikov. Vikov, very speedy individual to Amayatov. A shot, and that went over top and out of play as it may have been deflected by Grant Fuhr. So the score holds at 2-1. This is Rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. the goaltender for the Soviets in the 86 World Champions World Championship. This ends up another good save off Mark Messier as he got in there. The 86 World Championships. He was the goaltender for the Soviets. Seven games. He only allowed 11 goals. That's a 1.57 goals against average. Rather low. He was also named the outstanding goaltender at last year's World Junior Championship in Hamilton. And they're going to announce an outstanding goaltender in this game. And it's between one of two people. It's between two people. Muir and Bella Jacob. Messier along the board. Fighting with Starikov. It goes loose to Vilya Leptinov. Knocks it around in the board, but not out. Now the Soviets gain control. Priyakin to Nemchinov. Nemchinov to Priyakin. A shot that doesn't get through as it was blocked by the defenseman Rick Green. Mario Lemieux shooting it in. Goulet off the board, takes the shot. Bello Shaken is down. Two Soviet wingers coming back, crashed right into the net as they attempted to cover up that slot area. Here's Mario Lemieux getting set a shot and fired it wide. Goulet just failed to pick up that rebound off the end board. Back comes Gusarov. Gusarov to Makarov. Back to the line, a shot, the rebound, Gusarov. Saved by Grant Fuhr. What a great goal save off Gusarov. Galio plays it off the boards, out to the neutral zone. First That's team NHL coming close, and then the Soviets coming right back. I like the idea of Lemieux shooting the puck high, even though he missed the net. Bellow Shaken's been dropping before NHL have been shooting the puck. 
And Lemieux tried to find the top corner. And then Grant Fuhrer, it was showtime at his end of the ice. Kevin Deneen loses it along the board. Larry Onoff. He gives it to Kasatonov ahead to Makarov. The top line for the Soviets. It's amazing how that Batistov will go right for the net. Here he is again, moving in. Centering it. What a great save by Grant Fuhrer Krutov. Another shot, and that's deflected to the corner. Krutov. Tried to slide it out front. Knocked down by Doug Wilson. And Team NHL goes to the attack. Ray Bork on the right side looking for Deneen. Too far for him. And Krutov starts back to Svetlov. Svetlov stopped at the line. Fired down to the Soviet line where Fatisov loses it to Howard Chuck. Brought in to Tikkanen. Tikkanen winds up. Fires it wide. Howard Chuck in the corner being tied up there by Fatisov. Howard Chuck manages to come up with the puck. Howard Chuck back to the point. Rick Green winds up. His shot is blocked by Lavrov, and it bounces all the way back into Team NHL territory. Kicked off by Cmac. Cmac tied up by Green. Lavrov gets it. Lavrov checked by Tikkanen back of the net. And it's Rick Green sending Tikkanen away. He shoots it in. Picked up by Perbukin. Perbukin to Katarinov. Around the boards to Svetlov. They don't even look when they bang it out of their own zone. They anticipate where those wingers will be. Team NHL now with Gretzky to the attack. And across the line, he has Tikkanen with him. Behind his back to Tikkanen. Back to Gretzky. Gretzky, back of the Soviet goal. Allowed to walk out. A backhand shot went off Katarinov. Better. Better has took a swipe at it. The puck back of the net again. Gretzky. Out front of the shot just goes wide. Armin Rochefort pinches in from the point, trying to keep it in, but the Soviets get control and fire it back into Team NHL territory. Wayne Gretzky finding the soft spot. Behind the net it is. There's a chance for Curry, and it was behind him. He couldn't quite pick it up. And it's dumped down the ice by the Soviets. This will produce an icing call with 3.58 left in the period. Live on CD. There's a road 170,000 kilometers long stretching in front of the average car. And that's why Motomaster parts are what your car needs. Because Motomaster parts are built tough for the long run. And every Motomaster part is backed as tough as it's built. So no matter where in Canada your road takes you, Canadian Tire stands behind them. Down the long road, it's nice to know you've got more than a part. You've got a company. Motomaster Parts. Built tough, back tough. Team NHL has been battling hard to get the equalizer after the Soviets went ahead on that goal by Krutov. The both teams are keep going, but what we see here, since the Soviets have taken the lead, is that they're trying to stay back and not force the play near as much. But we see matchups here. Not only Howard Chuck against Larionov, we're seeing Bikov against Messi. And as we mentioned, game one is a big difference in size of the two players. Glenn Anderson has had a real good second period. Messier against Bikov. Gets the draw. Back to the line. Bork fakes the shot. Gets it into Anderson, a shot right on, and Bello Shaken made the save. Mikoff out into the neutral zone. Lost it there, and Team NHL to the attack, led by Messier. It's dumped in. Starikov plays it around the boards for Kamensky. Kamensky to Bikoff on the right side for Hamayutov. And as he cut in across the line to drop it for Bikoff, they went offside. At the end of the second period, we will talk with Dave Poulin of the Philadelphia Flyers, who scored the winning goal on Wednesday. And we'll talk with National Hockey League President John Ziegler. We're going to find out if we'll see another one of these series in the near future. That's coming up in just a few minutes. Once again, Don Whitman. Dave Poulin, a very well-spoken Philadelphia Flyer who gets stronger as the game goes on. When he turned pro with Philadelphia, he weighed 165 pounds at Dave Poulin. He worked all summer with Bobby Clark on his upper body. He went up to 185, and that's how you see him play so strong, or that's why you see him play so strong against the uh, Soviets. Pullen wasn't a bad free agent signing by the Flyers. Kamensky dropped it into the slot, intercepted by Goulet. 
He starts out with Mario Lemieux. Back to Goulet. Goulet with a fine move. And he was upset with a good body check by Starikov as he split the defense and almost got through. 3.17 is the time lapse. This is the beginning. The all-new Chrysler LeBaron Coupe. Beauty with the passion for driving. Advanced front-wheel drive traction. Positive response suspension. Electronic fuel injection. The thrust of turbo power. And a world of comfort inside. All with a Chrysler protection plan. The new LeBaron Coupe from Chrysler. Best built. Best packed. Michel Goulet with a good rush on the part of Team NHL. Goulet, whose idol is Bobby Hull, tries a little fancy stick work, but he had the hip taken to him, and Bello Shea could cover it up. All three forwards went to the net looking for a rebound. Starikov, who was a member of that Soviet Olympic gold medal winning team in 84, is the man who checked him. Goulet tries again. It comes back to the point. A shot by Chelios, a weak one. Back to the net, a wide open goal. And they couldn't get it back to the point. Now it comes back and it's fired wide by Rochefort. Mario Lemieux back to the point. To Goulet. Back at the line. Rochefort unable to keep it in and Chelios goes back into his own zone. The first game, the NHL club scored goals in the goal crease of Bello Shaken. In this game, you're seeing the Soviets do a pretty good job trying to control that area. Goulet leaves it for Claude Lemieux. Back to the net for Mario Lemieux out front, and he tries the wraparound play and just missed on the far side. Green with a shot. That hit Lemieux in front. He goes into the corner, taken in against the boards by Gusarov, out front. And Michel Goulet could not get a stick on it as Bello Shaken covered up. There you see, once again, the Soviets controlling that crease area. Goulet tried to get to the loose puck, he couldn't. Mario Lemieux tried to wrap around with his reach. The wrap around was almost started from behind the goal line. He just barely missed. That may be his best tip of the series. Now watch Lemieux trying to set up behind the net. Goulet's in front. See how he's taken down right away or covered up? He doesn't have that stick loose to be able to get to the puck. Not only the Soviets taking the body in that area, but they're reaching out and grabbing the National Hockey League players stick. Therefore, you can't get to those loose pucks. Lemieux's got a younger brother that belongs to the Pittsburgh organization, older brother, excuse me, belonging to the Pittsburgh organization, playing in the American League. And the general manager, Ed Johnson, said today he may be called up. He's quite a scorer. The only problem is he plays center. If he's going to play behind Mario. He might not get a lot of ice time. A busy weekend for Mario Lemieux as Bello Shaken takes a rest, something that Mario Lemieux will not be able to do as Pittsburgh plays Vancouver tomorrow night. Then on Sunday, Pittsburgh travels to New York to take on the Rangers. Three games in three days. They are not allowed to do that during the regular season. That's against the Constitution of the Players Association. From the faceoff, a shot from the point by Rick Green sails up into the crowd. While we have a moment, a reminder that this program is copyright and restricted for the private use of our audience any reproduction retransmission distribution or exhibition in whole or in part without the express consent of the canadian broadcasting corporation is strictly prohibited and that was the reach of mario lemieux <laughs> from behind the net one thing that national hockey league players have a lot of problems with is he they say he doesn't skate as quick as other players but he has that reach he keeps everybody at bay in the neutral zone pullen shoots it back in and he's off, goes in after it, along with Kevin Deneen. The two of them continue that battle, the loose puck. With Howard Chuck trying to dig it out, he does come up with it, takes a backhand shot high over top of the Soviet goal. Picked up now by Kasatonov. As the Soviets come out, led by Larionov, he drops it at the line. And it is knocked out by Pulin. Pulin and Kasatonov battling along the boards. Finally, it comes back into Team NHL territory, and Rick Green plays it off the boards into the Soviet zone as Team NHL makes a complete change. Up on the right side for Tisov. He shoots it into 
Team NHL territory. Raymond Bork is back there after it for Team NHL. For Yari Curry. Curry drives it in. Picked up by Lavrov, who clears the zone. 108 is the time left in the second period. 2-1 the Soviets lead. Sazarinov around the boards to Lavrov. And it slides all the way out to the neutral zone. The Soviets in game one, as soon as the NHL had control of puck, they just went after them. Three, four players. In this game, when Team NHL have the puck, only one man's going to him, and the rest of the Soviets are staying spread out. And it's a complete reversal from their style in the opening game of the series. Team NHL appears to be changing its strategy, shooting it in more than it did in game one. Yeah, they are, and that's what's, that's what's happened because the Soviets are spread out so much. In game one, if you remember, when the Soviets all went and overloaded one side of the ice, the NHL players would fire the puck across, and there'd be a man open. Now that man isn't open because he's being closely guarded, and that's the biggest strategy difference that I've seen. If there's any single player on the ice that has picked up his play from game one, it's Fatisov, the captain, the defenseman. He's been much, much better. He was battered around in that opening game. 48 seconds left in the period. 2-1, the Soviets lead it. It was 1-0 after 20 minutes. From the faceoff, Vikov directs the shot towards the goal. Played around on the boards, but not out, and now... Glenn Anderson takes a swipe at a puck. It bounces high. Anderson played it, and it's whistled down as it was hit with a high stick, apparently. Glenn Anderson and the other members of the Edmonton Oilers wanted to say hello to us. Got some friends of theirs that are watching tonight. One, Willie DeWitt, who's in Regina. He's got a big, big boxing match tomorrow against Burt Cooper. And a couple of other friends in the entertainment business, David Foster and Alan Thicke, who are in Los Angeles, watching on their private satellite system. And CBC. Both Foster and Thick were here as part of the big gala the other night that uh, drew raves from everyone who attended. The city, the hospitality has been wonderful here in Quebec City. It's been a very, very enjoyable week. That gala, by the way, will be featured on an upcoming CBC television special. An icing call as the face-off will go back to Team NHL territory with 27 seconds left. see Mark Messier taking all these defensive face-offs. He takes them on both sides of the ice, Don. It's interesting, his theory, his theory is discipline over emotion. And Mark Messier walked around to each player before game one in the dressing room and said to them individually, play well tonight, play with discipline over emotion. And that's one thing that I think has changed with Mark Messier's style over the years. He plays with a lot more discipline. He emerged as one of the team leaders in that Team NHL dressing room. Kamensky scores! He was allowed to walk out from the corner, and he picked the far side on Grant Fuhr with just 19 seconds left in the period. Big goal for the Soviets. They got to the loose puck, and uh, Kamensky, we mentioned a rising star for this hockey club, said hello, and then he said goodbye to Rick Green. He moved in, and we'll watch... Right there as he went around the defenseman Green. Now he's allowed to walk in, and he finds that hole through the legs of Grant Fuhrer. Wasn't quite sure what was going to happen on the play. Watch as they get to the loose puck. Messier got to the puck to the boards, but it was Kamensky that got away from Rick Green, and in he came. He made the play because the other defenseman was sliding across. He had no choice but to shoot it, but Fuhrer had his legs open. So the Soviets lead Team NHL by two goals. The Soviets came back from a two-goal deficit in game one. That's the task now facing Team NHL. All three goals in the second period by the Soviets, two of them by Kamensky, the other by Frutov. And so the score at the end of the second period is the Soviet Union three, Team NHL one. Michael Tucker is my boy. I'm coming again. The talk is over. Get him! Get him! Now the action begins. Get him! Get him! Stallone over the top. Now playing at a theater near you. The world at six, as it happens, and on Mondays, inside track. CBC Radio. For the enlightened mind. Which bank, trust, or insurance company do more Canadians choose for their RSP? Canada Trust. Number one in RSPs because we've earned it.
with great rates and interest from day of deposit. Instant RSP loans and instant tax receipts. Wide investment choice, including our new T-bill certificates. And convenience. We're open Saturdays and 8 to 8, Monday to Friday. Canada Trust, number one in RSPs, because we've earned it. What a great day! Don't you love it? It's perfect! And it'll be this way for months! Whoopee! If this isn't your idea of a good time... More snow! <laughs> USA can take you away from it all to the sunny skies of Florida or Arizona. You can even take advantage of our low vacation fares. So call US Air or your travel consultant today. And don't be left out in the cold. It's back at the brick. No down payment. No interest until 1989 on all home furnishings. And until 1988 on a wide selection of televisions and video recorders. Like this 20-inch fully automatic color television. Make no down payment. Just 11 payments of only $27. Total price, just $2.97. And you pay absolutely no interest at all. Ever. Hurry, final weekend. CBC News with Milton Nash. Good evening. Here are some of the stories we're following tonight for The National. Minister of State Rock LaSalle says he had no idea business people paid $5,000 just to meet with him. He calls himself the victim of uncontrollable events. Prime Minister Mulroney says when he heard about the expensive meetings, he promptly ordered an inquiry. In Parliament, the government honors an election pledge on the death penalty. Deputy Prime Minister Don Mazankowski announces a free vote on hanging. Hundreds of jobs are saved at Cisco Steel. Premier John Buchanan is jubilant over a big deal with CN Rail. Two UN trucks are shot up as they try to get food to people who are starving in a besieged Palestinian refugee camp. And Soviet security agents again beat up human rights demonstrators. Two women are among those injured and detained. We'll have more news later tonight on The National and on The Journal. Now, back to Rendezvous 87. All right, thank you, Nolton Nash. Uh, Kaminsky had two of the goals, Krutov the other for the Soviet Union in that second period. 3-1 for the Soviets after two periods of play. Dave Poulin, the fine center, he also plays some left wing. E.J. McGuire tells me with the uh, Philadelphia Flyers, graduate of the University of Notre Dame, where they're better known for football. Much better known for football. I was born up in, uh, in Timmins in the Great White North in Ontario, but I grew up in Toronto and I managed to get down to Notre Dame on a scholarship. At the top of the show, briefly, you explained you're known for your defensive ability with the Flyers, yet you and line mate Kevin Deneen accounted for 50% of the scoring on Wednesday night. Well, we matched up against the big KLM line on, uh, on Wednesday night, and what happens is there's such an offensive structured line that if you do create turnovers, you're usually going to get some pretty good offensive chances. And we got a couple, and actually we could have had a couple more goals. They are called, at this KLM, uh, Krutov, Larionov, and Makarov, the best line in the world. Are they the best line in the world? They're pretty darn good, I'll tell you what. They throw the puck around very well, and you're never going to stop them completely. But you've just got to try and slow them down, because I think most of the team reflects off of what they do. And if they see their big line, as it's known, you know, one of the top lines in the world shut down, they think, oh no, if that line can get shut down, then we're in real trouble. And so you try and get them off their game. I remember talking with Wayne Gretzky at the end of the first period on Wednesday. He was surprised the Soviets weren't more physical. Are they more physical tonight? I think they're waiting to see what we're going to do. They're a little more physical, but I think uh, really they're waiting to see, especially on Wednesday night, the type of game we were going to play, and then they tried to react off of that. What did they do differently in the second period? I don't really think anything too much. They got a couple of scoring chances, and they capitalized on them. And because of the way they play, they're going to create scoring opportunities. But... Uh, Grant Fierce come up big and he's made some big saves and we've had some equally good scoring chances and haven't capitalized. Tell our viewers what it's like to come here as one of the younger players. You only get a couple of days practice. Uh, how nervous were you? When did you settle down? Have you been able to sleep? Yeah, I have been able to sleep because uh, we've been working pretty hard at it. It was very serious from the day I walked in on Monday and you could tell. And the credit there goes to the older guys. Guys like Messi and Gretzky and uh, Dougie Wilson, Rod Langway, guys that have been here before. And they set the pace for the younger guys and they more or less eased us into it both on and off the ice really made it easy and a very enjoyable week. Tell us about the coaching staff. Peron, uh, Johnson, and Bergeron, to me, have done a first-rate job with such a short period of time. They have, and they've kept it very simple. They've done a great job, but they could have got very technical. On this day of video, we could have sat and watched videos for two straight days, and they could have got so technical because of the way they play, but really, they kept it simple, and they let us play hockey. Would you like to do this again? I know viewers tonight are saying, we don't want to see Wales and Campbells next year. We want to see this again. It's probably not practical next year. John Ziegler is coming up. But as a player, would you like to do it again? It's been a great experience. It's been terrific. I haven't heard one negative thing from a player, and I think everybody's 100% positive. I realize the work that went into it, 
from the people in Quebec and the people in Canada, but as players, we've enjoyed it tremendously. You know what impressed me about uh, you players before the uh, first game Wednesday was you were saying there will be no excuses. If we got blown away 7 nothing in that first game Wednesday, for once we're not going to make any excuses. There was a different attitude here. Well, it really was. It was a strong attitude. And once again, it goes to the guys that have been here before. And there's some pretty good leadership over in that locker room from 22 different guys. They've all got different styles, but everybody's been a leader. Where do you go from here? I'm off to St. Louis about 10 minutes after the game tonight. We're flying out in, uh, in our owner's plane right straight to St. Louis. So we've got a busy schedule. We play tomorrow night in St. Louis. But some of the Hartford guys have to go to L.A. So I know Kevin Deneen is, I think, flying on a charter to Toronto with Wayne Gretzky tonight. Good luck uh, in the third period. What do you have to do differently in this third period? Just go right after them. We control about eight-minute stretch, seven-minute stretch of that second period. Before they came back and got that last goal, we're going to pick up right where we left off. All right, Dave, stay healthy for the rest of the season. Thank you. Good luck in the third period. Dave Pullen of the Philadelphia Flyers, the USSR, out in front by a score of 3-1. to one. Our second intermission continues in just a minute. Stay with us, folks. There's just one thing that makes someone a winner. It's an attitude. You've got to want to win. That's why you choose an investment professional like Wood Gundy. A winning attitude. Get ready, get going. It won't stay long. Get that bold new taste before it's gone. Head for that beef, a quarter pound on a toasted dry bun, nothing like it around. McDonald's cheddar melts. With cheddar sauce, grilled onions too. A big bowl taste from McDonald's to you. For a limited time, just one fifty-nine. It's a good time for the great taste. Cheddar melts. The uh, McDonald's, just till March 1st. Jack Burns is a United States Marine. For honor. He'll obey the rules. We will do this one by the book, Sergeant. For his country, he'll break them. This isn't your war. It is now. Paul Winfield, Joanna Pakula, Brian Keith, and starring Fred Dreyer. Death Before Dishonor. Opening soon at a Cineplex Odeon Theater near you. Make way for the new generation of pickups. All-new Dodge Dakota, North America's first mid-size pickup. Dakota handles like a small pickup. Room for three inside and full-size payload capacity. Plus, the pulling power and performance of a V6 engine. Mid-size Dakota, the only four-wheel drive with Dodge's Ram top warranty protection. Make way for Dodge Dakota! Make way! Dodge, the official trucks of the NHL. Welcome back to the Colisee in Quebec City. National Hockey League President John Ziegler joins me. Before talking about this game and possible future series, what about the Pat Quinn situation? The appeal, I believe, was heard or ruled on today here in Quebec City. Uh, the Board of Governors uh, on the appeal affirmed the President's decision with respect to the order and the uh, penalties imposed. All right, John, and again, as you saw, a definite conflict of interest there. Well, it's something that really shouldn't be commenting on because there's still other appeals that are going on, right. Brian. Okay, let's get to let's the game tonight. The game. Yeah. Your impressions of not only the first two periods tonight, but uh, the first game on Wednesday, too. Well, I think the uh, competition at uh, the game level is probably the highest that I've seen. And uh, take your pick of either team. Uh, who makes the mistake is probably going to cost themselves a goal. And the game's being played at probably the highest level of intensity that uh, it can be played. All right. You said it's the best competition you've ever seen. I know you people at home are saying, ask them, ask them. <laughs> are we going to see another one of these in the near future? Well, you see the Canada Cup, at which um, it really is played uh, at a high level. It's not condensed quite as much. And in some respects, it gives uh, the players and the coaches uh, time to strategize a little more and even show mm -hmm. a little bit more of their skills. As to another rendezvous or an all-star type of thing, we did a challenge cup. It was great, yep. uh, except we lost. Uh, we're doing this. It's been a great week. Compliment to Marcelo Boo. Mm -hmm. But it is an extremely difficult thing. It took here, it took the federal government, the provincial government, the city of Quebec, and an organization of 150 people to put this on. Uh, we're not equipped to do that every year, and it's very difficult. 
but periodically, uh, hopefully, we can do it. All right. Periodically means when? Three years from now? No, no. I, I think that uh, you, you have to look four, five, six uh -huh. years out. It, it takes that much effort and time. All right, John, what about the all-star format? It, it is going to be different or difficult for Wales and Campbells uh, after uh, the show put on here this year in Quebec City. There's been a lot of talk about changing the all-star mm -hmm. format in the National Hockey League. Ryan, it's mainly that talk comes from the media folks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not so sure. I'm not no, so sure. No, and go to any all-star city that's had the all-star game, and it's a pride to their city. They get involved with it, and it's really just a showcase of our top players. And it's kind of an, it's not our regular kind of competition event. Right. The players get to play at a little different speed. They get to do a little more of their fancy things, and it's a special event in itself. But every city that has, has such great pride, We've sold out every All-Star game since the memory of man here. So I don't think you'll see too much change. What about the format, John, though? Would you maybe go back to the defending Stanley Cup champion, say, against the rest of the league? Now, one of the reasons being that they don't want to take the risk of the injury to the players and right. putting them into a competition that really is just a, a, a showpiece, an exhibition at that time. Because whether you're the Stanley Cup champion or the runner-up or whatever it may be, uh, you still have another 40 or 35 games to play, which is very important to you. So um, there isn't a great deal of enthusiasm to put it into that kind of intense competition. We must congratulate Marcel Abou, also yourself in the National Hockey League. I'm talking with writers from Washington, New York, Los Angeles, uh, Canadian writers that have been to Super Bowls. They say, boy, this, this week is right up there with the Super Bowl. It has been first class on and off the ice. Well, Marcel Abou deserves credit, as does the city of Quebec and the province, and in, in fact, this country. Uh, this has been a celebration, not just of hockey, but of cultures and the arts. And there's such great friendships, and it's really of the three cultures. We we're just proud to be part of it, and I guess we're the core of it with our two great hockey games. You are indeed. John Ziegler, thank you, the president of the National Hockey League. We must congratulate the players. We talk about selfish pro athletes in the 1980s. These fellows have come here for something like $1,000 apiece. They're flying all night to play again tomorrow night. We salute the NHL players. Stay with us. Rendezvous 87 Live on CBC will continue from Quebec City. The essence of bobsledding. The new sled feels like gliding on silk. The essence of shaving. This is new Acro Plus, an incredible advance in Gillette shaving smoothness. The Plus is the unique lubricating strip that glides the razor effortlessly. You never felt anything smoother. New Acro Plus by Gillette. The essence of shaving. And now, Replay, brought to you by Apple and authorized Apple dealers throughout Canada. Team NHL had a power play opportunity in the first period, and it didn't take them long to capitalize. Wayne Gretzky goes back of the net. Yari Curry out to Mark Messier. He didn't get good wood on it, but it deflected off the stick of Krutoff and between the legs of Evgeny Beloshakin for a 1-0 lead. The Soviets came back in period two. 
Kamensky picks the far corner as Team NHL had difficulty in clearing the zone. It was tied at 3.13. And then just two minutes and four seconds later, watch number two, Fatisov, get involved in the play. The Krutov, and he puts it past Grant Fuhr the first time in the series that the Soviets have held the lead. And then a demoralizing goal with just 19 seconds left in the period. Kamensky comes out from the corner and slides it between the legs of Grant Fuhr for a 3-1 Soviet lead over Team NHL. Replay brought to you by Apple and authorized Apple dealers throughout Canada. This man represents one of the most famous computer companies in the world. Universally respected by its customers for security and reliability. It's the only computer company in Canada that offers a full one-year warranty and the security of extended warranty protection on every product that bears its symbol. The company, if you haven't already guessed, is... You guessed it. And the warranty is called Apple Care. You're about to see the difference between an ordinary electric kettle and Black & Decker's boil and off kettle. The one that won't forget to shut itself off, even if you do. Five seconds to boil and off. Enough time to tell you that Black & Decker kettles have a two-year warranty. The boil and off difference. It boils, then it's off within 30 seconds. The other will steam on until it's dry. Worry-free, convenient boil and off with push-button restart. Another powerhouse innovation from Black & Decker. On Venture This Week, meet the people of the business world. Taking the risks, doing the work, making and losing the money. Sunday night, following Sunday Report. Saturday on Hockey Night in Canada, fresh from Rendezvous 87, Dale Howarchuk rejoins the Winnipeg Jets as they play at the Montreal Forum against the Canadians. And some of you will watch Terry O'Reilly's Boston Bruins in Toronto against the Maple Leafs. Saturday on Hockey Night in Canada. Welcome back to Quebec City. Kamensky at 313, then the KLM line. Krutov from Larianov and Fedosov. Kamensky with his second goal. The NHL now with an edge in shots on goal. They trail by one after the first period. You heard Dave Poulin of the Philadelphia Flyers say he is flying all night to St. Louis on a private charter. Wayne Gretzky, many of the players going to Toronto tonight, then flying out to Edmonton in the morning. Kevin Deneen and Ulf Samuelson are leaving here on a charter right after this game, flying into Toronto, sleeping for a couple of hours at the airport, then flying to Los Angeles. So they've really made a sacrifice. Once again, Don Whitman and John Davidson. Well, John Davidson is also flying out right after the game, but John, will that Canadian team be able to come out flying to start the third period? It'll be interesting to see what head coach John Perron is going to do. Will he shorten his bench? They did not play Ramsey very much in that second period. They went with seven defensemen. But will they shorten their bench and try to take chances offensively and then rely on the play of Grand Fuhr? The Soviets are playing a quick game here. They're playing a game where in the second period they had possession of the puck quite a bit. Belloshakin was very good. And, uh, hey, they've got to go for it early. Team NHL trailing by two as Mark Messier gets the draw back into his own zone to Rod Langway. Green lost it, but Anderson trailing the play. Spins around to Messier, who returns the pass. And Anderson dumps it in and races in after it, along with Michelle Goulet. A line change here on the part of Team NHL. Kasatonov now picking it up in his own zone ahead to Larionov. He leaves it for Makarov. Makarov shot saved by Grant Fuhr. Big rebound. And Krutov just failed to get a stick on it as he was checked by Glenn Anderson. Anderson unable to get it out. Fatisov went rink wide intended for Makarov. It was too far for him. And Langway clears the zone. Team NHL making a change as Svetlov gets it ahead to Krutov. A return pass to Svetlov, but he was tied up by Doug Wilson and Raymond Bork. Looking for Gretzky in the neutral zone. Saw it bounce off Gretzky's stick. Now Team NHL gets it back. Gretzky in across the line. Gretzky getting set a shot, and that was just deflected wide. Taken on. Let's it go back to the line to Doug Wilson. His shot sails wide. Bork at the other point. He dumps it into the corner. 
Verbuchen plays it around the boards for Lavrov, and it's deflected down the ice as Esatikinen retreats after it for Team NHL. He leaves it there for Raymond Bork of the Boston Bruins. Bork lead pass for Tikkanen. In across the line, Tikkanen tries to dump it for Curry. Curry couldn't do anything but flip it into the corner. Tikkanen trying to force the play. Starokov comes up with it, and the Soviets move it out. For Kamensky, who scored two goals in that second period, a rising star for this Soviet team. Kamensky gets it again and fed it over on the wing. And the shot by Hamayutov, and Grant Fuhr made the save. Team NHL to the attack, led by Gretzky, puts on the break, looking out for Norman Rochefort, and I think that went off the end of the stick of the goaltender, Belichick, and another drive just goes wide. A great chance for Team NHL to move within one goal as Gretzky set up Rochefort. That was only the fourth shot by NHL defensemen in this hockey game, and it was a very good one. That was also, for Wayne Gretzky, his longest shift of the hockey game. He benefits with lots of ice time. Mario Lemieux moving into the slot, tried to drop it for Poulin. It was intercepted by the Soviets, and they bring it back. Ilya Letdenov takes the shot. That Fuhrer flips to the corner. And Poulin has it now behind his own net. Another line change as Poulin is out there with Lemieux. Bob Lemieux of Montreal and Mario Lemieux of Pittsburgh. Ryakin lets a blast go high over the glass and out of play. From Quebec City, this is Rendezvous 87 on CBC. lateral movement in this series. Bella shaken with great lateral movement. Gretzky knows Rochefort's moving in. Oh, this is the other play before that when Gretzky tried to set up two men in front. Here's the lateral movement. And boy, oh boy, he got across. He got his shoulder or perhaps the shaft of a stick on that puck. Great goaltending early in the third period by Bella shaken Is Bella shaken challenging a little more in this game than he did in game one? The talk is the Soviet Union play a different game when they're ahead, Don. And when they're ahead 3-1, it's easier to play goal no matter what league you're in. Petisov, long lead pass. He was looking for Krutov too far. Wilson goes back into his own zone. Wilson for Deneen. With Howarchuk and Messier. As the coaches have certainly juggled people around, a collision in the corner. And Deneen went sprawling. As it's brought back out by the Soviets, the pass picked off by Bork, who plays it over to Doug Wilson. To Raymond Bork. He drives it in. Howarchuk leaves it for Messier. Messier tried to go around Krutov. It was knocked away from him. Kasatonov gets it up to Perbukin, and it's knocked into the neutral zone. It bounced away from Bork. Makarov moving in. A shot saved by Grant Fuhr. He tried to go low to the stick side. He was being cut off by Rochefort, who made a good play, so it was, he had to shoot at it from a bad angle. Messier for Team NHL centers it. Tikkanen just failed to jam it. Puck goes to the corner. Gretzky gets it. Gretzky for Messier. Messier tried to go across ice to Chelios, who was racing in from the point. It deflected off the of Soviet all the way back into Team NHL territory. Now it's Tikkanen. Rink wide for Gretzky. Gretzky couldn't get away from Tazarinov. And Pervukin in his own zone. Moves out slowly as the Soviets make some changes. He sees that change is taking place and he circles back into his own zone until his teammates get on the ice. Gretzky unable to control it at center ice. Kamensky at the line. Checked by Rod Langway. Rink wide pass for Gretzky. Gretzky dumps it back into his own zone. Deaconin has lost the stick, has to go to the bench. Here's Gretzky moving in. Tried to dump it into the slot area to Yari Curry. It was broken up by the Soviets. 
Kaminsky is checked by Ray Bork, who got back quickly. Now it's Curry circling, firing it over to Ray Bork. 14.35 left in the period. Bork gains the blue line, flips it to an open wing, and the Soviets start back. Here's a breakaway for Bikoff. Bikoff behind his back, the pass. Great save off Kaminsky by Grant Muir. Kaminsky going for the hat trick. Bikoff puts the check to set up the play for the breakaway of Kaminsky. And Grant Muir, great. Running right to 87 continues in a moment. You know the look, you know the name, you know the taste, there's nothing better. Coke the taste is smooth, the taste is irresistible. Coke is the name, yeah. Coke is the taste, taste, taste. Coke is the one, there's nothing better. Coke, 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 Coke. Catch the wave, Coke. Kaminsky tried to put the game out of reach, and Grant Muir stayed with him. Beekoff is going to take a check right there from Wilson, and Beekoff made the play. Now Grant Muir stayed with him, kept his hand up away from his goal pad. Kaminsky couldn't believe it. Look at Grant Muir keep his hands out away from his body, away from his pad, and he had it in the right place. A sensational save for Team NHL. Trades off to the right of Grant Muir. Draw comes back to Gusarov. He shoots it into the corner. Picked up by Amilev. For Priyakin. Priyakin moving into the slot. A shot that's steered to the corner by Muir. Soviets with that constant movement in Team NHL territory. And Samuelson first shift on defense in this period. Here's a two on one. Mario Lemieux with his strength, unable to get the shot away, but there's going to be a penalty coming up against the Soviets, and it will be Nemchinov going to the penalty box. So a power play for Canada. In a world of cards, one stands out, our route. It's honored by airlines worldwide, major hotels, car rentals, and fine restaurants. Our route is more than a car. It's a travel management system designed specifically for people going places for business or pleasure. And our route offers savings at hotels and car rental agencies. Our route, the card for people going places. Your travel agent has all the details. Nemchinov in the penalty box. The NHL had a two on one. Mario Lemieux draws a lot of penalties by leaning into the opposition. See him lean in to the other player. He tried a one-handed shot, and the penalty was called. Now, the Soviet player who took the penalty went over to the bench. Speaking off, the coach was just yelling at him. It's a 3-1 hockey game, and his team took a penalty. Speaking off, looking on as Team NHL enjoys the manpower advantage. Makarov. To Krutov, Krutov circling in the neutral zone. They're all over the ice, weaving and circling to the attack now with Fatisov. Fatisov controlling that puck. And Team NHL can't seem to get it away from the Soviets. Krutov skating back into his own zone, being watched by Gretzky. They've done an excellent job of killing off over 30 seconds of this penalty to Team NHL. You have to admire that play. That was skill at the highest level and just good, smart, disciplined hockey. Pass intended for Gretzky, broken up at the line. Team NHL is forced to retreat into its own zone to regroup. And they had to make a change. Their tires <laughs> facing the Soviets. That's some kind of a play. One minute left now remaining in the penalty to the Soviet Union. Team NHL unable to gain control in the Soviet zone. And again, they have to retreat into their own territory to set something up. Unlike their power play in game one, they have had definite problems here in game two, although they did cash in the first time they have the manpower advantage. Goulet leaves it for Gretzky. Gretzky back to Wells and he scores!
They finally gained the blue line. They finally got inside the Soviet zone and they were able to set up. Goulet's the man that gained the zone. Goulet's the man that left the puck for Gretzky now. Again, a defenseman making a play and he found the spot. What else is new? Through the legs, the fellow shaken. It's just a quick shot by Doug Wilson. He didn't even take a real good look before he shot. He knew he was close. He knew he wanted to get a good shot and away quickly, and it goes through the legs of Belashekin. Both goals that they've scored in this game have been through the legs of the Soviet netfinder. Doug Wilson, noted for his big shot with the Chicago Blackhawks, hasn't really had many opportunities to unload in this series against the Soviets. The defensemen have not shot the puck. The defensemen, that's the fifth shot that they've had this game, and twice it's been because they've joined the play in the slot area. Offside at the line is Svetlov. The official on the goal for Team NHL, their second power play tally, Doug Wilson from Gretzky and Goulet at 7.33. They gained the blue line. They got inside the zone fine. You know, what where the guys go towards the net. Goulet's already dropped it off. Now Gretzky waits, waits to draw a man to him to open up the slot. That's where Wilson got to, and he released it quickly. And Bella shaking off balance on the play. Gretzky delayed just to draw the man to him which opened the slot. Kulin in the corner. Leaves it back of the net for Howard Chuck right out in front and Deneen couldn't get a stick on him. Aggressive forechecking on the part of Howard Chuck Deneen and Kulin almost resulted in the tying goal. We'll see the work here from behind the net. Bella Shaken seems to be shaky using that goal stick. A number of times he's had trouble stopping passes coming from behind the net. That time he covered up as quickly as possible. He was the best goaltender in the Calgary Cup. He's on his knee again, shaking his head. Can't believe what's going on. One thing that these people are not used to is the emotions that they play with in the National Hockey League. And now that team is going to have to use those emotions to try and get this third grade over for their side. Many people had speculated prior to these two games getting underway that emotion would be a big factor in favor of Team NHL. They have a one-goal hockey game. Now let's watch Messier trying to intimidate the other team center right here. Ron Finn has removed him now. Chinov, he was the man in the penalty box during that last power play goal. Bill Yeletsinov into the face-off circle against Messier. Messier wins the draw. Back to the line. A shot by Samuelson is blocked. Nemchinov gets it to the line, but not out. Bob Lemieux keeps it in, battling for it along the boards. Finally, it's knocked away from him. Team NHL back into the center ice area. They fire it in, and the Soviets dump it right back up and down the ice with Rod Langway retreating. The Soviets surprise you. That was Billy Oletnikov that took the face off. He's a defenseman. You'll never see that happen in the, in the National Hockey League. Lemieux shoots it in. Mario Lemieux racing after it. Yellow Shaken got there first. Bob Lemieux keeps it in, it goes to the corner, but the Soviets gain control and they start back with 11-18 remaining in the period. Larianov behind his back to Makarov. Makarov cross ice looking for Fatisov. It bounced away from him and Team NHL goes to the attack again. Led by Samuelson. He shoots it in and then runs into Larianov, sending him flying. Puck back of the net. Dug out a shot! A fire drive by the defenseman, or by uh, Claude Lemieux. As it goes to the corner, it's picked up by Mario Lemieux. He centered it. There's nobody there. And the Soviets bring it back. Larianov dropping it for Krutov. He tried to get it back. He scores! He was looking initially for Larianov. The pass did not get through. The puck came back to him, and he fired it in. This whole play started with Lemieux throwing the puck blind down at the Soviet end of the ice. When he threw it blind, the Soviets got control. He didn't have to do that. They got control. They came down the ice. And the Soviets get a break because they pick up a deflection off of Raymond Bork. They try to pass the puck here, move it across, and it hits Bork, but they get it back. They stay with it. And when that little fake play where Bork had to, had to go off the skate accidentally, that throws Grant Fuhr. And we'll see this. Grant Fuhr is thinking pass. He thinks this man is going to move it back to the other Soviet player wide open. And now he's caught. He's trying to get back. He can't do it quick enough. Second goal of the game for Krutov at 9-19 from Larianov, and it's a two-goal advantage again for the Soviets over Team NHL. Yari Curry with a shot. 
That almost handcuffed Bellow Shaken. It dropped between his legs, and he went down to his knees to prevent Tikkanen from wrapping his past. The rendezvous 87 returns after this. There's a road 170,000 kilometers long stretching in front of the average car. And that's why Motomaster parts are what your car needs. Because Motomaster parts are built tough for the long run. And every Motomaster part is backed as tough as it's built. So no matter where in Canada your road takes you, Canadian Tire stands behind them. Down the long road, it's nice to know you've got more than a part. You've got a company. Motomaster parts. Built tough, backed tough. We may be able to see the play where Grant Fuhrer thinks that this is going to be a pass. But we'll watch. He thinks it's going to go back across to the Soviet player who's open. There's Grant Fuhrer keying on him. Now he has to get back across. And a very, very accurate shot by Krutov, the second goal in the series. From the faceoff, Gretzky attempted to center it. It was intercepted by the Soviets, and they clear. Yari Curry. For Rochefort, he shoots it in. At the line, Curry keeps it in. It comes around on the board. Rochefort pinching in from the point. Managed to keep it in, but the Soviets now gain control. They bring it back. We've reached the midway point of period three. Vikov over to Kamlusov, and Grant Muir made a big save on that one as the Soviet player attempted to pick it out of the air on the rebound. I think that was Vikov, the small player, you can see he's got some skills. Boy, oh boy, he found that puck right about three feet off the air, and Fuhrer had to make the save. Zemak into the corner for Svetlov. Back to the line. Tatarinov takes the shot. It bounces in front of goaltender Fuhrer, then back to the point. Tatarinov winds up again, and that one just went wide. Lavrov was there looking for the deflection. Gretzky steals it. Cross eyes to Curry. Curry back to Gretzky. It bounced away from him. Chelios goes to the corner. Tried to center it. It went off a player. Gretzky has it in the corner. To Curry, quick shot. And the save by Beloshakin as the Soviets clear with 9.06 left in the game. Two-line pass as the play is whistled down against Team NHL. That last goal or Kutov score. Let's watch Mario Lemieux. He gets the puck here, and he's not really forced. He throws it blind behind his back. That's the turnover. The Soviets got control, and they came out of their zone. This is what sets up the play. You talk about puck possession, how important it is when you play the Soviets. They didn't have to turn a puck over there. The Soviets took advantage of it. Well, that's something that Team NHL talked about in preparing for this series was puck control by their side as well. Quick shot. Amilev let that blast go, and it was stopped by Raymond Bork. Now Doug Wilson gets it cross ice to Bork. Bork in on the wing for Glenn Anderson. Anderson taken out of the play by Bill Yelutinov. Kevin Deneen is bumped. Wilson centers it and Kulin was tied up by Gusarov. Bork battling along the boards with Priyakin and Nemchinov. And finally the Soviets get control and dump it down the ice for an icing call against the Soviet Union. Boy, have we seen fun, exciting hockey in this series. It's been super. This is Rendezvous 87 from Quebec City. There's a powerful new reason to drive a Chrysler Magic Wagon. Front-wheel drive V6 power. Fuel-injected power. And this is what V6 power is all about. The power to climb, to pass, to tow. To pull you through the toughest winter with front-wheel drive V6 power. And you're protected for seven years or 115,000 kilometers. Powerfully new Dodge Caravan and Plymouth Voyager. Best built right here in Canada and best backed. 8.25 is the time left to play. Mario Lemieux is out there with Goulet, and they've got Dale Howarchuk playing the wing. They're thinking offense. That's the reason. They won't shorten their bench and use their best offensive players when they trail by two goals. Take chances. The defensemen have done a good job for NHL by moving in. The Mew's trying to get the Soviet player to put the tip of his stick in that white area. See how they go up in front of that white area? They're just not used to it. The, stick, the tip of the stick is supposed to be in the white area on the dot itself. Krutov now moves in against the Mew. 
From the draw, the puck bounces in front of you. Hit the post. Back to the line to Samuelson. Off the boards intended for Howarchuk. Howarchuk trying to keep it in. It bounces off a leg. And there's some pushing and shoving in front of the net. And I think the penalty may be coming up against Kasatonov of the Soviet Union. takes a high sticking penalty he was right in front of his goaltender and the national hockey league have two power play goals in this hockey game the puck was coming out of the soviet zone and casatona uses the deck high this is a play by the a real good play off the face off and he caught the goal post double shake and went at him that was a heads up play by mario lemieux team nhl has two power play goals tonight let's see if they can get a third Dumped in by Bork. Fatisov behind his own net. Being watched by Gretzky. Forces a turnover. Messier along the boards fighting for it. Plays it back deep into the Soviet zone. Starikov off the boards. And he finally succeeds in clearing. Bork back into his own zone for Team NHL to Doug Wilson. Lead pass for Gretzky. Rink wide for Messier. Messier back to the point. For Bork to Messier, Messier to Bork. Bork dumps it in. Gretzky lets it go back to the net, but Starikov gets control and he clears it. Starikov, a good job paired with Fetisov during that penalty killing unit. Kasatonov is the partner usually of Fetisov, so they're not that used to playing together. Dumped in and Gusarov hammers it around the boards, but not out. On the other side, Haimutov unable to get it out. Bikoff is there. He can't clear. Team NHL keeping it in. Played back of the net for Gretzky. Gretzky out to Raymond Bork. He was on his backhand. Couldn't get a shot away. Now it goes to Gretzky again up front. And it was just jammed wide by Glenn Anderson. Bork pinching in. Controls the puck in the corner. Out front for Anderson. And it bounced off his stick. Gusarov plays it off the boards and down the ice with 20 seconds remaining in the penalty. Harry Olamu leads the attack. Driving it into the Soviet zone. Left there for Pervukin. Pervukin unable to clear. Played back to the net now for Gretzky. Gretzky gets the return pass for Goulet. Goulet is tied up and the Soviet's penalized player Nemchinov steps onto the ice or uh, make that uh, Kazanotov, and the Soviets are back in full strength with 6.04 left. And they will get fouled for icing here. Gretzky stayed on the ice the full two minutes on that power play. Whenever they got themselves into trouble, didn't know what to do with the puck, they fired it behind the net, and Gretzky was there. They did not get a real good scoring chance on Beloshek, and the Soviets constantly forced them, forced them, and that was a great opportunity to try and close the gap in this hockey game. Howarchuk is out there now for Team NHL with Poulin and Deneen. They've set up a play here where Deneen is on the point for a shot on his faceoff. Green, the defenseman, has switched positions. He's gone to the faceoff circle. The NHL are thinking offense. c -Mac gets the draw back into the corner. Ravukin around the boards, Langway pinching in, trying to keep it in. But the Soviets get control and they clear the zone. Lavrov starting out. Lavrov fakes the shot. Now lets the shot go that slides to Grand Fuhr and he hangs on for a faceoff. Michel Bergeron, coach of the Quebec Nordiques, one of three team NHL coaches. John Perron is the head man for this series. Bob Johnson of the Calgary Flames, the other team NHL coach. 
545 is the time left in the game. 4-2, the Soviets lead. Game one Wednesday. 1-4-3 by Team NHL. If the Soviets win this game, two teams will be declared joint champions of this two-game affair, and each side will receive a trophy. It's been spectacular hockey. There's no question. The pace, the goaltending, the scoring plays, it's been fabulous to watch. Howarchuk deflects it out to center ice. Vilya Lefinov shoots it back in. Now it's picked up by Priyakin. Priyakin was looking for Nemchinov, who was streaking for the net. The pass did not get through. Now the Soviets shoot it in again. Fjord, back of his net, trying to play it around in the boards, and it almost bounces out front. In fact, it does come out front, and that went off the skate of Raymond Bork. Ahead for Kevin Deneen, intercepted by Vilya Leptinov. He shoots it into Team NHL territory with 4.56 left in the game. Chelios is forced back into his own zone. He'll try and come out the other side now. Gets it ahead to Claude Lemieux. And across the line takes a weak shot that is knocked down in front by the Soviets and they clear the zone. Doug Wilson for Chelios. Shot blocked at the line. Chelios gets it again. Flips it in. Bellow shaken. Playing it into the corner. Claude Lemieux takes the shot from a bad angle. He almost caught Bellow shaken out of position on that one. But the shot was blocked by a Soviet defenseman. Makarov. Feeds it to the line to Larionov. He couldn't go anywhere with it. The Soviets try and regroup back in their own zone. Fatisov up into the neutral area with 404 remaining. Larionov in across the line. He's spilled. The puck goes loose and it's picked up by Chelio. 356 left in the third. 4-2. The Soviets leading Team NHL. Right out front. And Mario Lemieux couldn't get a good shot away. The NHL club dumped the puck in there, and they got control of it, created a scoring chance. The Soviets are really stacking their own blue line. There you see four men again went across the blue line. They broke up the play. The NHL have to dump it in here and be in unison. In other words, be skating when that puck is dumped in. Kamensky, who has scored two goals, tried to go around Langley. He was knocked down. Samuelson for Messier. Messier cutting in from the right side. Takes the shot. Rebound. That was taken with down as Gretzky and Curry whacked at that puck and managed to get a piece of it. Kamensky comes in again. Kamensky, good face. Right up, front, he scores. Amayutov trailing the play. Banged in Kamensky's rebound. How many times have you seen Kamensky go to the outside? Beat the defenseman to make a play. He does it again. He has been an outstanding player in this series. The youngster took the puck and went to the outside. Wilson took a chance. He tried to keep it in. It was a gallant try. Now watch Kamensky slow down, change gears. Now he goes to the outside and he tries to make the play. And they get the loose puck in front and they get themselves a three goal lead. He slows down. Now he turns it on. And remember, that's Messier back there, not a defenseman. Wilson was trapped as he tried to keep the puck in, and Kamensky went to the weak link, and it worked. Kamensky, just 25 years of age, he played in the 1985 World Junior, or 20 years of age, I should say. He played in the 1985 World Junior Championships in Helsinki. He gets an assist on that goal. Michelle Goulet centering it, knocked down by Tatarinov, and he dumps it out into the neutral zone. Whistle on the play as it was hit with a high stick. Rendezvous 87 returns in a moment. Tiny troubles, mommy time. Thank you. No trouble. Tiny troubles, tiny troubles. Taking care of them is no trouble to us. No trouble. <laughs> this is a good angle of Kamensky looking up and seeing what he's going to do with the puck. And you'll see him slow right down and just really change speed, go to the outside. Now, in front of the net, 
Wilson does not pick up his man, and they pick up the rebound, and it is in. Discussion at that Soviet bench, and if they're going to be a penalty assessed here, referee Dave Newell has skated over to the penalty box area. Amayutov from Kamensky at 16.59. Kamensky with two goals and an assist. He's been an outstanding performer, not only in this game, but in game one as well. There were some who thought that he should have been named the best player in game one. He ran into a red-hot Grand Fuhr in game one. They are now communicating with Aggie Kuklowitz, the interpreter, to discuss what the problem is. The penalty box gate is open at the Soviet side. John Perron checking things out as to what's going on over at the Soviet bench. I'm not really sure to tell you the truth. Well, the Soviets don't appear to be too sure either as to what has happened. As the two coaches, Viktor Tikhonov and Vladimir Yerzinov, discuss things, and now Fatisov, the Soviet captain, is having things explained to him by Aggie Kuklowitz. What happened was the NHL wanted to take a look at a stick for a measurement of the blade to find out if it was legal or illegal. The Soviet player skated over to the bench and tried to make a quick change, a handoff, as you can call it, and the referee, Dave Newell, caught him, and that's an automatic penalty. It was a measurement that they were looking for, and immediately, you saw Perron a couple of, a couple of minutes ago point and say, hey, look, they're trying to make a change. They went skating back over, and the penalty has been assessed now to the Soviet Union. Priyakin going to the penalty box. So misconduct against Priyakin as well, and Lavrov goes to the penalty box to serve the misconduct. It's a two-minute penalty for the illegal stick, and it's a ten-minute misconduct for not allowing the officials to take the stick to check it out. So there's two players now in the penalty box. There, Aggie Kuklowitz is explaining it to the Soviet players, trying to uh, perhaps use a calming influence on them. Of course, in the Soviet Union, you can use sticks that are illegal in measurement, but they are playing strictly under NHL rules aside from the amount of players that you can dress per game here in this series. Perhaps we'll be able to catch here. Here they're trying to get back and make a quick change quietly and privately, but the officials have caught them now. Look at Tikhanov saying, no, no, you can't have that stick. Newell says, I want it. And that's where the 10-minute misconduct also came part of the play. Little tug of war at the bench. So Team NHL with a man advantage again. Back at the line. Wilson trying to keep it in. Couldn't, and Makarov breaks out, working against Raymond Bork. Makarov slowing things down, and he'll just skate around with that puck and force Team NHL to chase him as he kills off some seconds. He comes in again, tries to split the defense, is knocked down by Wilson, loose puck in the Team NHL zone, and is picked up by Gretzky. Two minutes remaining in the game. Drop pass for Messier over to Gretzky. Gretzky attempted to center it, and the Soviets drive it down the ice. 1-13 remaining in the Soviet penalty. 5-2 to the score. The Soviets in front. Messier across the line for Chelios. He fakes the shot to Goulet. Goulet tried to go up high on Bello Shaken, and Bello Shaken made the save. That hole was there between the legs once again as Bello Shaken dropped down. Goulet decided to go high. The tempo for these Soviets has been constant in this hockey game. Stolen by Stelnov at the blue line, and he shoots it back into Team NHL territory with 1.20 left in the game. Chelios flips it in. Katharinov back after it. He plays it around on the boards. Lemieux's pass is intercepted by Svetlov. Svetlov drops it back for Perdukin to Svetlov. Takes the shot. Rasker makes the save as we move into the final minute. Gretzky crosses the line. Gretzky slides it across. Mario Lemieux took the shot. Bello Shaken was down. Goulet tried to jam it, couldn't get it by him. 
Kept in by Goulet. Gretzky. Out to Barkey scores as Mario Lemieux set it up. Bevel Jacob had made a big save off of Mario Lemieux, but the NHL hockey club persisted. They worked the puck along the back wall. And look at Bork, again a defenseman gets into the play, and he flutters the shot past the goaltender. The NHL club has controlled the backboard, the area behind Bello Shakin. He moves out, and that shot went through him, and the team NHL scored quickly. I don't believe that'll be a power play goal as the penalty had just expired. So that's the first even strength goal for Team NHL. There are other two on the power play. 27 seconds left. Larianov to Krutov. Over to Makarov. He tried to slide it in front to Krutov, and it was knocked down by Grant Fuhr. Back comes Team NHL. Kirk Muller takes a hit from Fatisov. Fatisov sends Krutov in. Krutov. Plays it around the boards for Makarov. It's intercepted by Team NHL, and Muller starts back. Muller at the line, loses it. Poulin trying to pick it up as it goes to the corner, and the fire down with the Soviets defeating Team NHL by a score of 5-3. It was 4-3 in Game 1, Team NHL winning. An excellent series, a great display of hockey by two fine hockey units. There's no question in my mind the NHL team deserved to win game one, and this team deserved to win game two. And a standing ovation here for the people, and they call a say, Donna was just super, super hockey. Well, everyone in attendance of the Colossae thoroughly enjoyed the two-game set two between Team NHL and the Soviet national team. And it was hockey at its best with Bello Shaken doing an outstanding job in backstopping the Soviets to the 5-3 win in this second game. So the players are now lined up at their respective blue lines. The final score of tonight's game, the Soviet Union 5, Team NHL 3. So we invite GM and Ford to follow Chrysler. You know, for five years I've been feeling like the guy who sent invitations to a party, and nobody came. Well, somebody finally showed up. GM and Ford decided the time has come to improve their warranties. Chrysler says, welcome to the party. It's good for North America. Over the last five years, we've backed five million Chrysler car and truck owners with 580 protection. Our quality had to improve, and dramatically. So the party's over. Chrysler announces the end of 580 and the beginning of 7115, the best powertrain protection in the business, then and now. Seven years or 115,000 kilometers on engine and powertrain, seven years or 160,000 kilometers against outer body rush through on every Chrysler, Dodge, and Plymouth we build, car, truck, and minivan. Like I said, if you're looking for who builds them best, take a good look at who backs them best. Trophies have been prepared and both will be presented. The Rendezvous 87 Cup, sponsored by Carling O'Keefe Breweries, created by Sylvain Daou and Gaetan Boulay. And one trophy will be presented to each team. And it's interesting that Team NHL won with Nikolai Morosov of the Soviet Union officiating and the Soviets won with Dave Newell of the NHL in charge. It was just a fine display of hockey. I was very, very thrilled in watching both games. Fabulous plays offensively, fabulous plays defensively, and I think we saw a Soviet Union that revved it up for 60 minutes in game two. Fellow Shakin was much better in game two than he was in game one as far as goaltending went. 
I think the, the key players played well in the second game for the Soviet Union. Petisov, the goaltender that Makarov lined. And Kamensky played extremely well with two goals and an assist. And we are now ready for the presentation ceremony. Official company of the Foundation of Hockey Writer Association has selected the two best players of tonight's game. Each player will receive a calligraphy of the famous Québécois painter Jean-Paul Lemieux from the album Canada, Canada. To present the calligraphy to the winners, let's acclaim two of the greatest hockey players ever. Il s'agit du joueur de centre, membre du centre de la Hanalee, Sam Mikita, et du premier capitaine de l'histoire des Arctiques de Québec, Jean-Claude Pondé. Le meilleur joueur du match pour l'Union Soviétique, the best players for the Soviet Union. Le numéro 13, number 13, Valéry Kamensky. Le meilleur joueur du match pour l'équipe de la Ligue Nationale, the best in Excel players. Le numéro 99, number 99, Wayne Gretzky. Les Pétroles Esso, l'un des commanditaires majeurs de Rendez-vous 87, a choisi d'honorer le meilleur gardien de la série à la suite d'un vote des journalistes. Esso Petroleum, one of the major sponsors of Rendez-vous 87, will now honor the best goalkeeper of two game series as selected by the committee of the PHWA. Pour remettre aux gagnants une sculpture en bronze de l'artiste québécois Marc Martel, accueillons le président des pétroles ESSO, M. Gord Thompson. To make the presentation of a bronze starting from Quebec artist Marc Martel to the best goalie, let's rate the president of the ESSO Petroleum, M. Gordon Thompson. Le meilleur gardien du, the best goalkeeper. Le numéro 20, number 20, Eugene Belanchikin. Grant Fuhr and Bello Shaken played brilliantly in the two games. Grant Fuhr may have lost a coin flip. That's how close that must have been. Bello Shaken was very good in the third period here in this game. Un comité spécial formé des journalistes représentant chacune des divisions de la Ligue nationale a été chargé de déterminer par scrutin les meilleurs joueurs de la série au sein de l'équipe soviétique et de l'équipe de la Ligue nationale. A special committee of the Professional Hockey Writer Association representing the fourth division of the NHL has been appointed to select the best players of the series for both teams. Le meilleur joueur soviétique recevra des mains du président de la compagnie Panasonic un magnifique système de son de grande qualité. Pour en faire la présentation, accueillons M. Gino Raimondo. The president of Panasonic will now present the best Soviet player with a complex stereo component. Le meilleur joueur soviétique de la série, the best Soviet player, is le numéro 13, number 13, Valery Kamensky. Et maintenant, le président de Chrysler Canada est invité à faire la présentation au meilleur joueur de la série pour la Ligue nationale d'une magnifique voiture Le Baron coupé 1987. The president of Chrysler Canada will now present the keys of the new Chrysler Le Baron coupé 1987 to the best player of the National Hockey League for the two game series. Accueillons, please welcome, Mr. Mo Close.
le meilleur joueur de la Ligue nationale de PES, NHL Player, le numéro 99, 99, Wayne Gretzky. Wayne Gretzky and Kamensky of the Soviet Union being named the outstanding players of this two-game affair. And again, on the part of Team NHL, I would think that was a difficult choice. Well, he's going to have to add another garage onto his house. I think as far as cars go, it's got to be in double, double figures for him. To both teams participating in the series are excellently the Governor General of Canada, the Right Honorable Jean Sauvé. Madame Sauvé remettra maintenant la coupe rendez-vous au capitaine des deux équipes. D'abord pour le club de l'Union soviétique, le capitaine Vyacheslav Petitsov. de l'équipe de la Ligue Nationale, Mr. Chauvet will now present the rendezvous cup to the captain of the team NHL, Wayne Gretzky. here at the Coliseum in Quebec City. Montreal head coach Jean Perron, I know you're disappointed about losing this game 5-3, to three, but still here to be congratulated. A tremendous effort over these two games. Yes, uh, i got to give credit to the players uh, and the coaching staff and uh, the managers who put the, the team together and for the players showing up and, uh, you know, give a, everything they had. You know, we played uh, very well in the first game, very well tonight, but... Uh, in the second period, we allowed three uh, scoring chances. They, they scored three goals, and right. probably we played our best period of the, of the tournament. So, you know, those things happen. John, what was the biggest problem you faced here this week? You came in here like the rest of us, uh, Sunday night, Monday morning. Was it mental preparation? Was it strategy? What, what was your toughest obstacle? Yeah, we had to do a lot of things in a short period of time. Uh, the players uh, were eager to play, and... Uh, they were honored to be here, and uh, you know our, you know our tasks as coaches were not uh, too tough. I would say we got good uh, cooperation from uh, the players. Uh, they wanted to execute well. We didn't get uh, caught like uh, we uh, told them so many times. The players uh, play the basic kind of uh, hockey games, and uh, you know we, uh, I think we did uh, very well in the circumstances. I think you did very well indeed. I know a lot of NHL players looking in tonight across Canada. What would you say to them if they're ever invited to come and play in a series like this? I would, uh, you know, I would say that it's a tremendous experience, you know, playing against one.